you know it's like yay <laughs> halloween woo um, what? yeah it's a wit it's the show about the the witches they really do think about themselves that way right like with the credit sequence as well they're like we are the quintessential witch show i feel like witches deserve better Honestly, I will probably go into a couple mini tangents about how upset I am at the show for really completely squandering the whole witches, occult, um, like aspect to it that you could do so much neat stuff with, especially because this show just it doesn't really have anything to do with the MCU at all, really. Um, it's just completely doing its own thing. So you have essentially complete free license to do any witch stuff that you want and they just haven't they they have completely squandered that opportunity yes uh among squandering basic opportunities like character or having characters or plot, world team a whole lot blended um but yeah before we even begin to begin you might notice this is a a classic format of three lads having a chat. What what's going classic, on here? Classic, yeah. We'll call it. This is a classic episode. This yes. is vintage. Well, not vintage. Maybe this is a uh, old fashioned EFAP. We just the three of us. I think every time we've done the just the three of us, it's essentially been deliberate. It's been like, a, hey, it'd be neat to just do the three of us on a thing, or maybe we've got a topic or a series of videos that are so long. We're like, it'd be better if we uh, reduce the cast because we're gonna have to get through a lot. That sort of thing. Um, this is mm -hmm. the first time I'm pretty sure in the history of EFAP that we've essentially been forced to be just us three because every single person I asked if they'd be interested in covering Agatha either said no or they haven't watched it and don't intend to. Uh, so, you know. Yeah, so if you know someone who <laughs> has seen Agatha, then... Did anybody watch Agatha us, on uh, Earth? Uh, is that like... <laughs> <laughs> and I just like the idea that all of chat like no 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 no. It's, no. Really, it's, it's doing really well. <laughs> and it, and you know, when you ask even if, within our spheres, when you ask if someone wants to jump on and stuff, a lot of the time they will say, "You know what? I haven't, but I will check it out and have a chat about it." That's the repelling nature of a show like Agatha. It's it's a bit of an abyss. You don't want to get anywhere near it. Don't want to touch it. Um, there are several people who'd said they'd watched episode one and two and they d don't intend to talk about or view it ever again. So this is, um, I guess, uh, the way I would put it is that we're not looking at a show or, or a movie or whatever where it invites a lot of um, vitriol or, or frustration. This one, I think the word would be apathy um, from the yep. audience. Kind of um... echo-ish, you know? A little bit, yeah. Um, whereas there are moments in Agatha that make you upset. It's just because you're like you're stuck here and you're watching the show, and then you just see the things play out and you get really upset at the things the characters say. And I do think you're describing you are definitely describing a different experience to me. For me, a lot of it is like, well, I don't care though. Like as soon as this <laughs> is done, I'm never going to think about it again. And it's 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 not. I I just don't care about like the the impact. I suppose. Or, like, what actually happens, and it's like, yeah, okay, cool, you don't exist, though, once I'm done. <laughs> like, you're just but, sort of... Uh, oh, do yeah, you once say it's, it's done, done it's, once it's done, this will be, this will completely just evaporate from my memory, but as I am sitting here watching this, and I have to focus on it, and I'm like, this is my job, I will take notes. We will talk about Agatha, and analyze the storytelling, and the characters, and the plot, and the logic, it like it it like it has this it puts this level of investment into my brain because I'm focused on it, and that is enough to get me to be like, oh wow, this like makes me upset because it's it's shit, and I could be watching a good show, but I'm not. I'm here watching Agatha. To be clear, I think there is a meta apathy that people have before even watching or seeing what the show is, and then there's a bonus apathy when you actually watch it of just any show with any title, any IP that is attached to a show like this will invite that kind of feeling. So um, mm -hmm. that's a lot of apathy to have to overcome. It's a challenge, you might even say. Definitely one of those ones oh. where it's like you watch it on behalf of other people and tell everybody. It's like it's like you go, I'm going to go in there and I'll check it out and I'll see what's happening. I'll report back. And then you, like, when, think, the, um, when the guy comes back and he's covered in blood and he's like, don't go in there. You know, that sort of thing. The recognition of how, how long we've, it's still going for, you know, there's still like four more episodes after this. 
<laughs> and kind of the the awareness. Well, I'm not going to learn anything by watching this. Like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna extract anything from this in terms of like meaning. No um, lessons, no themes, no life values, so... no yeah, nothing to improve you or better you or make you think as a person. Which yeah, just sort of contributes to like, man, just anything can happen, basically. And oh yeah, care. so it is know. devoid of substance. Um, this show, in, in the worst ways, I would say, this show embraces magic in the worst ways. Um, well, where the characters just say, oh, this is how it works. And it's just, you just sit there as a viewer going, okay, all right. All right. Yeah, 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 all oh, right. That, uh, oh, uh, this, you okay, got to do this. Yeah. Well, okay. That's yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. that means that this is what you need to do that you've just figured out at the r exact right moment to, to keep the plot going. Yeah. All right. Okay. This okay. is why we have... Well, maybe we'll get to the magic stuff as it sort of starts to pop up more in the show because um, it's... Because if, if, if we want to get through these five episodes, we'll probably not spend, like, super long analyzing it going through it. But, you know, maybe we will. Probably not. I, I mean, I got notes. We can <laughs> talk about it as much as we want, really. Um, you guys, the apathy set again. Agatha! All along, episode one, seekest but, well, thou the road? I guess just a, a slight bit of foundation being, of course, for those who do not know, this is a spin-off of a spin-off in the MCU. Yeah, that's quite a, a thing. Of division. Yeah. That's um, some... Back when, back when projects were just getting greenlit, like, all the time. The, Why? I think the was, of course, the question of, of the of the time when this got mentioned, even. We're yeah, going back I mean... to March of 2021 to when the uh, the final WandaVision episode came out. So now we are over... We're basically like three and a half years after the end of WandaVision. Well and past we when the project was still sort of successful. Well <laughs> past know, me probably. remembering a lot of things about WandaVision. Uh, yeah, a little bit too late, I suppose, if you want to just get on the bandwagon of, oh, there was that song that people liked, even though what did Agatha actually do? Wanda did everything. She was just kind of a troll, just sort of in the background, kind of like messing around, but Wanda was the one who was ultimately responsible for everything. But yeah, let's make a show about that character, that Wanda trapped in a mind prison, because <laughs> she's evil. Watching the show is like being trapped in a mind prison. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe that's um, what's happened. Maybe that's I, maybe that's the point. Watching the I, show is you get to experience what Agatha experienced for years. <laughs> there was a short story. I think it was like an SCP story. I can't remember. But a bunch of explorers go into this old, like, haunted spooky tomb. And slowly but surely, I think they learn that the curse that is mentioned, that they, they, they don't believe in it first... Um, it is a curse of apathy, and it's very subtle, and so they don't catch it until a long time later. But a lot of bad things happen because just random slip-ups because they're being apathetic. They don't, they don't care. They lose their like, passion and drive and motivation for things. Um, and I was like, oh, that's kind of like a subversion of curses, a curse that's very subtle and soft. And I feel like this is kind of like, oh, yeah, that's, that's kind of what the show does. You sort of get into this lull of nothing's happening, nothing's interesting. It's that typical gray, gooey sludge that Marvel's been putting out for a long time now. This slots in perfectly, and it's totally squandered. It's uh, squanders its premise and its concepts. Um, it is a forest. Is a is a a tree in a forest, but it's a shitty forest. I mean, hey, I, speaking I, of I, shitty forests, we'll get to the notion we'll that um, shitty... you know, it's 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 everyone agreed. Like, what the fuck are you doing? That was absolutely the the take, but of course we try to do this with everything. If if you're ultimately forced to make this, what are you making it about? And it's like, well, you can do actually a hell of a lot with someone who is being tormented by some kind of spell to be trapped in a universe that's not real, that may even change or be affected by particular events outside. For example, like if Wanda dies in Multiverse of Madness, quote unquote. That, that is what triggers this event, as in, like, her power is weakened as a result and the spell is broken or at least falling apart. Think of the visuals, think of the writing, think of the ways you can create 
symbolic meaning for all kinds of things. And think of the chance you get to have to make everyone get to know Agatha. Because we don't know fuck all about her anyway. She was, you know, that we've got oh, over it back Mahler. in... What was this, like four or five years ago? Uh, the the end of WandaVision was like three and a half years ago. It's, it's too long. <laughs> but the, the, yeah. the, when, when it was like, aha, it was me. We were like, what? And then it was, aha, I'm going to kill you, Wanda. Oh no, you got me. We were like, what the fuck's happening? <laughs> Who is this woman? Why, what powers does she have? And, and then it's like, I've trapped you inside your own head. And that was that. We never yeah. saw her again. So I guess That's what I'm like, getting oh, at is like you practically, you practically have a blank slate. You can kind of just do whatever. You really do, yes. Especially being about magic. This is an ultra opportunity show. A character we don't really know. An entire system of magic that is virtually undescribed before this that you can do anything with that you want as well as the surrounding culture of that magic system you have basically zero connection whatsoever to the mcu that you're in and you've got a lot of money and you can essentially do whatever you want this is the ultimate opportunity show so we get to find out if they completely squander it or if they do a great job of really m making a gem in the middle of this mountain of poo they're gonna make a, a mountain together. They're gonna make a mountain out of a hill. Right, yeah. A hill, a hill. Gonna yeah. make a mountain. Uh, no, nope, wrong song. Jughead... We got songs, but not that one. Well, I hope he has like songs. Joker had like potentially the highest uh, box office drop for like a comic book movie ever. No, the, the 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 its legs were never ever 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 yeah, ever it, ever it, ever. It, <laughs> It had a uh, ninety percent drop from its domestic opening day. Who the fuck Oof. is gonna watch it again? And who the fuck is gonna watch it because friends told them to? Ninety percent. Holy so, uh, shit! Yeah, yeah. That's like the legs were just uh. cleanly, you know, popped off. Anyway, off you go, Rags. <laughs> Welcome us to the world of Agatha. Agatha. Agatha, all alone. Agatha, all along. Sorry, I can't even name the, the word, name of the show correctly. I don't give a shit. Um, episode one. Seekest thou the road? Ugh. Hmm. Hey, maybe we'll find out what that means later. The, uh, oh, all right, everyone. Yeah, the, first, uh, the first project that's labeled as uh, Marvel Television. Ah, the yes. label that was created specifically to signal to you as the audience that you don't have to watch it. <laughs> I feel like that needs to be <laughs> reiterated. They literally said that the the point. <laughs> it's like the, the Lucasfilm logo. Like, you know, yeah, you don't need to watch it. Well, this the Disney logo matter. at this point of this. Oh, <laughs> if yeah. it's attached to anything, please do not Just watch. Don't worry about it. I suppose what I find funny is it's it's a meaningless distinction. It's it's still Marvel Studios. Like it's. It's not actually like a different thing. It's it's Marvel Studios. It's just a different branding. Someone said, uh, "What happened to Jedi Brooks? He someone cast a sigil on him. Oh yeah, he cast uh, a sigil on him. <laughs> uh, the, the, let's just say there was there was a couple people who may have made it on as guests, but then uh, decidedly didn't either didn't either either didn't want to watch it or stopped at a particular point because some people were even saying like, "Why isn't Az here?" I think he's busy, but two, he has not seen episode five. Uh, I, I don't think Gary's available. I don't think Drinker is. Like, they're all doing different things. But then most people you would imagine we could have invited, like Jay Longbone, for example, uh, she gave up and said she never wants to speak about this show because it is mind-numbing. So it, you see what I mean? Like We, 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 we got needed a... to have a woman here. I'll have to be the woman, uh, but we, we really needed a woman here for this show. But, because of it, how much it celebrates femininity. Yes. Uh, sometimes I make thumbnails ahead of time and uh, make mistakes on who's going to be in. I'll, I'll fix that as, as Rags continues about his womanhood. Now, um, let us begin a journey of self-discovery um, by exploring the first ten minutes of the first episode, which uh, is the most interesting this show ever gets. So I disagree. Oh, Ooh, interesting! I don't, think All right. gets, I don't think it ever gets notably interesting at any point. Oh, I uh, even I think even that this is... a sliver above the rest for me, or or just nil. I, I don't think I want to give it that much credit. I we'll I Maybe still would say me. that this is the most interesting the show ever gets. Okay, I didn't say it was interesting. 
true. Now. That's a good point. Yeah. That's true. So, on the Agatha grading yeah, Agatha scale. Agatha grading scale. So, the forest, bleak day, Oof. a car is driving down the road, and it approaches a crime scene on the highway. Now, out steps from the car, Agnes. Or, we don't know her name, that's her name yet, but it, that's, that's Agnes. She's a detective. And when she walks up to the crime scene, we get our first exchange of dialogue. It'll be a banger, guys. You'll really like it. One of the cops there at the crime scene says, oh, hey, it's you. And Agnes says, essentially, that she, she's upset that she was put under disciplinary action. The guy says that you punched a suspect. And she said, oh, well, he's a convicted felon now. I can't be right and wrong at the same time. To which he says, yes, you can. Get it? Not a great start for Agatha's, Agnes's character. Well, which I say, what, what's the point of this? She's not, she's a witch. I know that this is fake. Oh, no, that's broadly, that's sure. Question, it's just that as with anything, first lines is like, the, I assume that one's supposed to capture like the grand point of this show, that there are going to be things she'll do that'll make us think, because she is evil. But, but is she capable of good? Is she? Is she? Yeah, but I don't, but this isn't real. This is like, I know it's not <laughs> this real. This isn't real. <laughs> this is very real. I don't real even know what we're doing right now because at this point you're like, oh, it's a shit, crime is scene. Be like, is this for the whole episode? Are we going to. Someone do this died. Movie? Someone is was this murdered. Not real? If, you could real. Show, if you could show a little bit of solemnity, yeah. someone died. Well, someone was killed. All it's right. not real and everybody knows that it's not no, real. No, this is very real. Knows what one division is. There's cars and streets and mugs full of coffee and everything. This is all very real. Please stop trying to gaslight our audience. All right? They showed up for us talking about Agatha. All right? We should appreciate every single one of them who wanted to know what happens in the show no one watched. Okay? Now, the, she says that only... The, the chief said only Agnes can solve this crime. You see, right? There's been a murder. And, oh, what's this? Do we, do we have a development? Have we, uh... Oh my goodness gracious. Are you talking about... <laughs> the... Oh, I, yes, I'm talking about the thing you said. It's, a, it's, it's so... It's just magical. Um, essentially, there's been a murder. Uh, there is a woman, a Jane Doe, an unknown female um, victim who's been killed by blunt force trauma in the woods out by this little stream. And Agnes goes to check it out with some of the other cops who are already there, gathering evidence, taking photos. It's very strange. This woman's lying face down, no, uh, no shoes. I was about to say no gloves, but that's kind of normal, you know? I, I don't know why that came to mind. But they don't know what's going on. They're, they're, they're gathering evidence. What a weird murder that this is in this very real world. Mm. Um, Agnes is... But he's, he's kind of walking around in the woods around the, around the crime scene, looking around at stuff, and, and she notices that there's like this little, it, it, it's like a little knick-knack, a little doodad that's in a puddle. Uh, and she picks it up and puts it in her pocket. Um, and then when, when a cop shows up, she's like, oh, the, the, I didn't find anything, don't worry about it. Um, when she goes back to the body to take a look at it, uh, her, her co-worker... Guy, he's like, hey, Agnes, you, uh, you don't really seem like yourself. You, you seem a little off. And she's like, of course I'm off. There's a dead woman here. There's a dead girl here. How happy am I supposed to be? And, and then Which is get... weird because they've been flipping up to that point when they knew there was a body yeah. there. It so, comes across yeah. as very, like, you, you would think that if your general job was to deal with bodies and murder and death, that there would be the air of yeah we like we all understand that there's a dead person here but we still have a job to do we're still people and when you look down it probably isn't because of the murder because we do this all the time it's because you're just not typically like this uh he showed some level of interest and concern in her uh in her mental state or her emotional um her emotional attributes and she snapped at him uh agnes so far doesn't seem like she's a very friendly <laughs> uh, approachable person and uh, um, at this point, probably worth mentioning, uh, someone who has seen the show is available. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I'm no longer the designated woman. Thank goodness. Welcome to the uh, right. extremely exclusive team of people who have seen this show. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is a VIP club. Yeah. <laughs> we, so. 
We dragged you through torture just two days ago. Wouldn't have expected mm -hmm. to see you again, at least for some time, but uh, looks like you've seen Agatha, yeah. so... <laughs> Unfortunately. I'm actually so much more anxious for this, because I didn't... <laughs> I don't have anything to say. Oh, but I you, feel will. Like you, you will. You will. <laughs> You will. I'll ask you many questions throughout, and I'll force Great. you to think. Because I'm just so good at answering them, but... <laughs> That's good, because this show is a celebration of femininity. Yay. And as yes. our token woman on the podcast now, we yes. I'll need you to give your input, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, um... Yeah. Welcome, we've, welcome. We've, yeah, percentage-wise, this is an incredible oh, increase yeah. to the panel. <laughs> yes. uh, I thought it would just be so. evil to let you guys... Do this alone when I have seen it. So, well, yeah. what an exciting adventure we have ahead of us. Mm -hmm. That's right, because you're just in time for the credit sequence. It's a cool credit sequence for a show called Agonists of Westview. Mm. The whole She's thing, like a... it, sorry, I, it's just so cynical. Like, I don't, it, like, oh, see, look, One Division, that they were doing like, homage to TV shows, and this is a spin-off of WandaVision, so we need to do homage to TV shows, except the problem is that it's obviously fake, so... And it's not gonna, like, to be clear, what are we doing? When you say obviously fake, you mean... Because when we saw this, however long it fucking came out, we were like, so how long are they gonna drag this out for? Because nobody in Pretty the audience, much. if they've paid any attention... And I don't mean that as an insult, I mean literally it's... It's, it's like baked in, it's on the tin, that this is nonsense and we're gonna end it soon. Yeah, there, there's no, there, like, there's there's no, like, earnest attempt to present this as, like, the real deal, because everybody who's watching the show knows what WandaVision is, and they know that Agatha is a witch and not, not a detective, so, like, why, it, I don't know, like, the whole time you're just sort of sitting there going, yeah, how, clear, how long are you going to drag this out? Which detective? Yeah, but, like, for, for mm -hmm. yeah, that's true, but for real, like, what is... Like, what is this? Why are we even pretending like... No, there's a mystery. Even... Someone's been murdered, Fringy. Ooh. If you could please stop bringing down the room with your appeals to reality, <laughs> that would be very appreciated. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're trying to have a good time. All right, watching Agnes Agatha. of Westview. <laughs> yes. All right. A woman's been killed, Fringy. Show a little bit of respect. She died by the stream. Okay. She's dead. <laughs> Nothing will bring you her know, back. If the show was one episode of a genre every time, I would have more respect for it. I oh, yeah. think so, especially if they did it. Even if it was superficial, even if they did all of the elements of the genre well, I'd be like, oh, hey, you are actually doing something you didn't have to do, and you kind of nailed well, that's it. That's why I feel cynical about the whole thing. It's just a gimmick for one episode, so you can be like, yeah, we're kind of like one division, right? Mm -hmm. And that's creative, isn't it? But there's not nothing, even the full episode. Like, there's nothing. It's not. So, right. yeah, that's true. It doesn't even last that long. But that would take brain power and creativity. Yeah, you have a lot of brain power and creativity to be a detective. And Agnes is the best detective in Westview. They almost. Oh, yeah. Pretended they were doing it, but not with genre, but with like era in uh, One Division. That's why it like it's some of the best things we ever got in Phase Four and Five. We were like, oh, look at that, and and there was intrigue, and there was uh, artistry. You might even say, you might even say, uh, and and yeah, if they did it with this and a different genre every time, and they had linking elements between each one, and something was achieved with each one, uh, maybe gradually getting characters who were stuck inside it to break out or something or getting i don't know getting something adding towards something maybe the broad thing was a detective thing and then each episode is a different i don't know i'm trying to cope <laughs> <laughs> like i'm trying to be a part of a world that wasn't what it was okay that's what I'm... um yeah this is a really cool fun show called agnes of westview she's the best detective ever and she's she's kind of like a jerk to everyone, but that's why we don't like her. Um, now, Agnes, she goes to a library because they have one clue on the body. They've got a clue. They notice that the feet and the hands of the person are kind of, they have like this, they're kind of dirty, you know, like they've got a little bit of like black soot kind of stuff on it. Um, and they they only found one thing of interest on the body. It's a library card. Now, to our audience, a library card. Well, first, oh, let's back up. A library is a big building 
where it's full of books, book house. all kinds of books, the real deal, actual books made of squashed up paper and trees. It's really amazing. Um, you can go in there and they have books on all kinds of different subjects. They have old magazines and newspapers and free internet for homeless people. Now, Aww. the library card is typically every book in a library, because I know a lot of these units, you know, 2024, I got to tell everyone what these things are. It's this list is lost forbidden knowledge, like knowing what this show is actually, now that I think about it. But on every library book, whenever you check it out, right, they write down the date and the person who checked it out of the library. So there's like a little history on every book written down on that card of, of who checked it out and when. Uh, this is really, this is analog stuff. Right. This is really this is really cool stuff. Now, there was a, a library card in the deceased person's pocket. So Agnes goes to a library to check out this clue. And the clerk there doesn't seem really interested in helping solve this murder, which is kind of odd. Uh, she says they don't even use library cards anymore. But when Agnes sort of mockingly asks where she was between 1 and 3 a.m. She's like, hey, hey, all, all right, I'll, I'll take a look. I'll, I'll tell you what the, what the name of the book is, uh, even though it's written down here on the li library card, all right? The book is called um, Dialogue and Rhetoric, Known History of Learning and Debate by Andrew Ugo. Ooh, wow. <laughs> now, um... She goes, uh, Agnes goes to the place in the library where that book would be. Um, maybe she even uses the Dewey Decimal System. Whoa. Ooh, do you guys remember the Dewey Decimal System? Have you guys ever used the Dewey Decimal System? Um, I'm sure I've learned about it, but like, I don't recall ever actually using it. I'm yeah, pretty sure those... I have no idea what well, that I'm is in English. completely out of uh, thing for me because I, I don't even know the last time I would have used it. Yeah, I think I used it once, maybe twice, but I do remember learning about the Dewey Decimal System in grade school. We might be on the, I think we're on the tail end of that one. Um, but yeah, she goes to where the, um, she goes to where the book would be in the library. And oh my goodness, this is weird. The, the, the whole little segment here, the, this little part of the bookshelf, it, it's singed. It's completely burned. Like someone took a flamethrower to it. Hmm. That's is. really weird. That's a strange thing to discover. And it just is there and no one mentioned it or noticed anything about it. That's weird. Um, speaking mm -hmm. of weird, there's this weird guy who shows up and he says, oh, there was a fire. Every last copy was destroyed. And he like whispers it in this weird, creepy voice. And then he walks away. So that happened. Hmm. I have. How convenient. I don't, I, I don't know, even so know if it is convenient. Time, well, it, this, like, well, nothing yeah. is convenient or inconvenient. Whoever, I don't even know who controls the events of this fucking thing. You know, like yeah, head, it's just magic. Thing, like, can magic. we? I'm just sort of sitting here. It's like, yeah, but just explain what actually is going on because, like, me speculating is pointless and worthless. So, just I'm just waiting until you actually explain what's happening. <laughs> You know, because any of this, as you're watching, it's like, well, this can't be, like, her just walking around, right? Like, actually doing this, and, like, that would be no way, right? So, like, it's got to be recontextualized to some other thing, like her imagined hallucinations or something. In which case, yeah, like, if I can't tell what's real or what's fake, if I can't tell if she's talking to a person who actually exists or doesn't, and, and like, and I know that I'm not going to be rewarded for paying attention, then I'll just wait until you... <laughs> tell me well, what matters and what's actually happened. Something I think that's actually pretty lame on that front is um, any attention anyone wants to give as taking this seriously as a you know detective genre thing is going to be dramatically disappointed because none of this means anything. Uh, you might yeah, be like, exactly. no, it does because it represents... Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. I mean, there's no investigation to be done. The, 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 this no, is a lie. You're not, in a, you're not in a position to like really meaningfully like form conclusions. I feel like an important part of a mystery, not not only for like a detective story, but just any mystery in general in a story, is your capacity to figure out what's going on before the reveal, right? Before like the story essentially confirms it, because there's all of these little clues and bits of evidence where you can go like, okay, and then you make a mental note of that, and then something else happens, yeah. and you'll, you know, the whole idea on a whodunit that you could be like, oh, it's that guy, before Poirot's like, yeah, it was you, you did it. Um, whereas, like, a lot of bad mysteries, it'll just be, they're stringing you along, 
until they just reveal information that you were in no position to speculate on or gleam or identify or be able to put the pieces together. It's basically, it's just you're being dragged along until they reveal the answers to you, which is not a particularly fun way to engage with a story. Plus, there's the reality and understanding of like, yeah, but this is the MCU, so you know it's going to be incompetent. So, yeah. you know, like, who gives a shit, really? Yeah, yeah. this spooky and detective yeah. story is, is, is a far yeah. cry from a haunting in Venice. Mm. And you already have the context of uh, that this is like 100% fake. So exactly. it is Agatha. Ooh. So you have the answer to the mystery and you can definitely guess that that's the like that's going to be the conclusion that well, Agatha comes to. Exactly. Well, it it depends on what they're trying to get to. If you already know that she's trapped in like the the, the Wanda dream and she's a detective, we still don't know necessarily what is the little, the, like, the, the brooch she found in a puddle. What, what's this book? What's the importance of this mm -hmm. book? How come these particular things are things that are being highlighted in this investigation? Does it relate to something in the real world to some degree? Like, kind of like the stuff Rengi was talking about. Like, all of these clues get recontextualized as something important later, or it ties specifically to her being a witch, or some some resonant element of Wanda's magic or something, you can do things with it, even if you know that she's going to escape this dream world. Mm -hmm. um, but they, I mean, it doesn't... Like, they to, don't do, do to an extent, it, what so you're describing is actually what we thought was happening in WandaVision before it went to shit. Because we knew, yeah, obviously watching exactly. them in the 50s, we were like, so mm -hmm. they're in something and they're going to get out of it, whatever it is. But mm -hmm. this this one just yeah. feels even less interesting because we saw the mechanics set up. So we like she is trapped by Wanda. So how much of this is even relevant yeah, know, in terms know, of clues? We know how it happened compared to in Wandavision where we didn't know, and then when we learned, it's like oh shit, uh oh. Uh, it's it's what Natsa said. You're just waiting until Agatha is Agatha for real. That's that's what you're waiting for. Well, there, no, there's nothing to learn. There's nothing to gleam. There's nothing to anticipate that will surprise you. The fact that apathy is a huge problem in the audience for this show, and it opens with half an hour plus of, like, you don't really have to take this seriously yet. The show hasn't started. Like, it yeah. doesn't surprise <laughs> me at all that, that, that that's happened. Yeah, and what's the most ironic and just sad is that this is probably the most sense the show will make somehow. Well, like the, way. The, I think the this makes more sense... You're... As a narrative, the detective yeah. following clues than what we get for the rest of the season, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So. The problem is that does any of this make sense in terms of like, well, wait, but what was Agatha actually doing? What no. was she actually doing? Well, world? yeah, we may as well get to that. Uh, well, once uh, there's a few more bits once and bobs, I suppose. Reveal, yeah. Yeah, we mm -hmm. will get to that. And we'll get to that quickly because nothing really happens that's really important, actually. Um, she goes back to the police station and the chief says, hey, the soil samples on the body shows that the dirt is from Eastern Europe. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> um, anyway, here's a federal agent to assist in the investigation. Agent Vidal. And they are not Do... clever about this. Like, wait, what were you going to say? <laughs> I, I don't remember. Who is this person? When you I... Do you mean the actress or the character? Honestly, kind of both. <laughs> So Aubrey Plaza, who's best known, I think, is it? It's one of the shows, Parks and Rec, or, or... Parks and Recreation. Yeah. yeah, that's who I recognize the actress from, just from the clips. Well, so we don't know the character yet, but um, I mean, nobody's gonna care. So uh, the Funko <laughs> Pop has accidentally leaked who she is, which is Lady Death, uh, uh -huh. and she hates Agatha, and Agatha hates her, and so Agatha being trapped in this spell. Uh, Lady Death is coming in here to try and get her out? Question mark. So that well, she can. You know, it gets, the, the point, the reason I bring this up is because all of her dialogue is supposed to reflect that in this scene. Mm -hmm. They think that yeah, they're it's... doing the clever thing of being like, but the dialogue kind of passes for the spooky, weird detective land. Yeah. And when I was watching, I was just like, no, I mean, I already know Aubrey Plaza's one of the main people, and she, she's Aubrey Plaza, so she's obviously... Yeah, one. exactly, so that kind of makes it pretty apparent that it's obviously, yeah, like, you, the meta is hurting you. But I, I'm just but not also, impressed. Also, if that's her intention, why is she dragging this for so long? The... Like, Disney dragging this show for so long? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> she just, like... 
why yeah what's she doing why doesn't instantly she just, tell like, her, on her, the spot. her instantly well, yeah there's that but there's also where the fuck was she for three years exactly yeah, yeah. and does wanda having been crushed under a mountain have anything to do with any of this i, I, I don't know <laughs> forget wanda she's irrelevant she um, costs too much money. We can't get her can't for get any kind of, substantial yeah. portions of the sh uh, show. Mm -hmm. So there's, uh, they have a little uh, chat. There's some implied history between Vidal and Agnes. Like they used to know each other, and there's some tension here. Um, and they're like, "Oh my goodness, it's like the body magically appeared because there's no drag marks and stuff like that." Blah blah blah. You've lived here your whole life, isn't that right, Agnes? <laughs> You've lived your whole life in Westview. Isn't it weird that you don't, you know, this shit we got in WandaVision, you know, I just don't care. Um, now, remember that little brooch doodad she found in the in the little puddle? She goes to a pawn shop and asks uh, hey, what's going on with this brooch. And it's a brooch with uh, three figures on it. The Maiden, Mother, and Crone. And inside, it's actually like a little locket. It, she opens it up and there's a hair, little lock of hair inside, little hair sample. Maybe it's Gladriel's hair. We don't know. I've got no clue. We'll have to wait and find out. Wouldn't that be fun? Mm. Um, Agnes is like, how much for it? And he says 200. And, she's, and then she says, oh, good, because now I'll know where to start the bidding on eBay. Agnes is really fun. Um, I mean, it's notable uh, that the person she's talking to is the man who was tormented in WandaVision, who Vision released briefly and then put him back into his torment, so to speak, because he was so in pain. Um, it's the kind yes, of thing where that's you, right. you might be like, yeah. what the fuck? Why is he here? Is he under a spell or something? And, uh, well, the reality is that he's playing along with her, which is insane. Why which the fuck would he ridiculous. even be in Westview? Why is... Like, it, uh... I mean, you would expect that Westview would be a barren town yeah. uh, after what happened. Why would the government let people live there? I'm not sure that they would. Yeah, they probably like, have to do... Sword would have you know, cordoned it all off for sword, study. That's right. Sword would be... Yeah, I'm sure we'll see Sword again. <laughs> Couldn't afford them either, even though we have bazillions of money. Oh, I, I just think they'll forget sword. they even existed. That's what will happen. I'll what do you mean Sword was in the Marvels? We love Sword. Yay, we yeah, love Sword. Yeah. Like, I'm so after great. that, after that, I feel like we're never going to see it they again. They were the ones with the big space station, right? Saber. Yes, that's right. Saber. Yeah. I see swords. Saber. Weird. Kind of Jeez. weird that we never heard about them when they had a massive space station that had like its own. I mean, that was a crazy space station. They had like That's gravity nuts. and everything. Yeah. How do mm. they do it? That's I didn't know humanity was capable of that. But well, I mean, yeah, shit. <laughs> Craziness. Neat. There's some. There's some like detective stuff. Oh, I think there's a crash over here, and it's about the time of death, and there's a blood stain in it, and da da da, <laughs> and da da da. It's um. It, it's all it's all meaningless it's all meaningless nothing matters um vidal asks at a later vidal and agnes go back to agnes's place and they eat pizza and drink beer it's wonderful uh vidal asks agnes do you remember why you hate me um and are you hiding evidence and agnes is like uh oh, no, no I, I i don't oh my goodness something happens they hear glass breaking upstairs and agnes goes to find a robber Oh my goodness. Oh no. Oh. No, it's is it a it is a robber because they're <gasps> present. He's not a burglar. He's a robber. Right? He's a robber. He is yet to and burgle. He, he, well, it's not burglary if there's people there in the house. It's burglary when no one's present. And I think it's robbery when someone is present. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um uh anyway, he 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 scurries out the window and he climbs down the house and Agatha's like, "Oh, I'm going to get you." And after a very, very stupid... Well, yeah. I, something I found really weird in the, the chase is that um, she, like, sort of falls down and then holds onto the, um, onto the gutter, and I'm just sort of like, let go. Like, you're... Yeah. Just let go and, and drop down. Like, it's not that far. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's like, it's like a four-foot drop. Like, she's holding on to, like, <laughs> real life. And then, and then it <laughs> breaks, and then she gets more hurt than if she had just let go. Maybe yeah. she felt so scared in the moment she just froze. She's paralyzed with fear. Oh, you can't okay. you can't judge her too harshly in her moment of peril. You know, it's just because mm. you're, you're, right, you're yeah. not you when you're hanging from a and house. Also, it, it is pretty funny to try and even pretend like she could catch him. Like, oh yeah, he's like he, a, a a lanky, tall, you know. skinny guy, and she's like 
her. Well, it's just, even the way she and... runs, like the way that she's running, it's like, yeah, that looks like kind of like a, a suboptimal sort of run. We got that. <laughs> the, like, the editor it's is the helping run of her. Someone sort who of doesn't thing. run. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no this way is... she's well, catching him. This is well, a terrible got... representation for all of us strong, powerful women. Or is it not? No, I, Maybe. I, a, I would uh, say it's uh, excellent uh, representation. Yeah, they're saying that no matter what, you'll catch <laughs> that guy, even if you look slow. <laughs> I mean, I guess, but like, I wouldn't even, because Catherine Hahn's like, she's like 50, right? So like, I wouldn't even, you know, it's like, if you can't run like super duper fast, that like, that's not even really surprising, but it's, it's just, yeah, there's no way you're catching him. No. Um, yeah, so they, they catch the guy, and one of the reasons that she catches the guy is because just totally randomly, <laughs> uh, a car pulls into this alleyway, this, this dark alleyway where they're on, and it turns out that the person in the car, you might recognize her from WandaVision, it's Mrs. Hart. Well, that was the name Wanda you know, gave her, right? Yeah. yeah, that was the name that Wanda gave her, there's one we, we might know her by. She was the one at the end who was like, please let us die. Let us die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, She's uh, still here. Yeah. Yes, and, and she a grim fate awaits her. Well, yeah, I was actually going to gonna say, um, because I have yet to just understand what I'm dealing with. When I saw this, instead of thinking it was a coincidence, I was like, no, nah, they're going to. It'll be that she <laughs> is. Um, I was like, she's going to be Aubrey Plaza or something, because Aubrey was there, and it would make sense. Like, I was like, that's going to be the twist that she. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> no, that's not the twist. Yeah. That's, it's, yeah, that's just It's just that's a coincidence that she ran into him. It was like okay. Alright then. Sorry. What are the odds of that? <laughs> yeah, it's far too late for her to be drinking. <laughs> I wish he died here. It would <sighs> spare us a lot of cringe. Yeah. It really would. But oh, mm. but the cringe has not yet begun. We have so <laughs> much more cringe. Oh, Ooh. we have not yet begun to cringe. We're Twenty minutes into this episode already, by the way. We are. Many yeah. really cool things are happening. Um, so um, she takes him back to the police station, and she interrogates him, and it's very cringe. Um, she was like, "What did you oh, try to?" It's really well, we... cringe. Just to yeah. highlight uh, where we can. There's some lines that just really stick out to me. Um, for example, I'm going to go talk to Edward Scissorhands in there. And, like, there's a gap before and after. Too. And it's so... Cr Wait, are you, are you joking? Or... Point is, that I, I, I find it super cringy when the writer leaves so much breathing room because they're so proud of the reference. Well, they think it's like mm -hmm. actually they need to leave room for people to get the laughter out of them. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you know? it, it feels oh, like yeah. the writer wrote it down and smiled. It was like, yeah, it's just like, oh, it's just a reference. Yeah, I know what that is. This show oh, is missing goodness. a laugh track. Mm. It's missing, yeah, yeah. It and is. I think. Sometimes with the a performance, trying to be funny. you can actually get... Like, Christopher Walken is one of the most legendary actors for taking a line that would be normal and making it really funny just because of the way he says it. Uh, Nicolas Cage yeah. can do this. A couple of others. Uh, mm -hmm. Catherine Hahn, don't know what the fuck is going on with her, especially in this episode. Yeah. I'm not sure what the direction was. No. Because yes. the direction seems to be, like, be, be over the top. Be really over the top. Yes. I think there's a disconnect between her... Writing and directing, I don't know what's going on. It's very messy. Uh, yeah, she interrogates him. She's like, what? Why'd you break into the home of a decorated detective? And he's like, actually, you got suspended without pay, blah, 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 stuff, things. What, do you, what were you after? She says, what are you after in my house? And he says he was after the road. And I assume that that was the, the book by Cormac McCarthy. Um because I don't really know what else that is a, a reference to, but we'll, we'll find out, I think. Um, oh, wait, I forgot something that's really, really important. This is super important. I forgot about it. When she was investigating, when she was investigating the murder, you remember that book I mentioned, Dialogue and Rhetoric, Known History of Learning and Debate? Whoa. Yeah, it's a dark hole. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, if you take all Either. the first, all the letters, it spells out... D e a r k h o l d, dark hold. Yeah, right. and remember, Wanda destroyed every single one in every universe. 
Because that's, you know, when you're writing for Marvel, it's a really good idea to just slam the door shut forever <laughs> on, like, an aspect of the world. They, they do both. get rid of they, it completely. They slam the door shut on all kinds of things in sweeping statements, but they also just open up the entire world to all kinds of things exactly. forever. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's the worst in both worlds. This show does that a lot with how it's just, like, magic and witchcraft, and you can just do it if you have the right ingredients at home, and you can just create portals and do all kinds of insane... And it's like, no, no. Oh, no, it's not but no. then at the same time, they're just like, yeah, that's the end of this massive aspect of the world that, like, in the comics would have yeah. been persisted for decades. But we had our one movie with the Dark Hole and we're done yeah. with it. Like, okay. And now nobody else is allowed to have it. Nobody else can use it. And then, of course, you know, the person who wrote that, when they're told ten years later, by the way, someone undid that, they'd be like, eh. Oh, also, I, I'm not sure if you'd be able to play it more, but you got you got to show the part where where Agatha's the really cringe part in the the interrogation. Do you know which part I'm talking about? I actually um, don't because there's more than yes. one of them. You want total loser that part? Yeah, yeah, that one. Ooh. That's uh, that was really bad, loser. and I feel like people need to see it to understand it. I mean, I obviously, copyright prevents something. me from doing a lot of things, yeah, here, no, but I, I should I be know. able to get away with at least some of it, and I just just played a little there. Yeah. Ed, total loser. She's like this a lot. <laughs> like this, uh, what? It's, it's, I don't even think she's really writing that down on that notepad. I think she's a liar, and uh, they told it. The, the thing about it is, right, she could have had all different kinds of directions for this, but um, the problem is... Immediately after doing this embarrassing shit, we're supposed to believe he's intimidated by her. Wait, mm -hmm. wow. I mean, it's, I mean, it's something that wasn't mentioned before, but she, uh, she just kicked him, um, before as well, which is very mean. I wish I was the one to kick him, actually. <laughs> I wish I was me. But yes, it does seem to, again, it is, it is really awkward, because it's like, that's not intimidating, that's just, like, cringe. <laughs> that's very oh, cringe. Um, now, when when the, the the kid here, uh, when he said he was after the road, she does not ask for clarification, like what that means. Are you, do you mean the, the novel by Cormac McCarthy? What, what what are you talking about? Or do you mean just like any road, just like a road somewhere, and they have oh, yeah. names, which would yeah, be like very helpful. Like metaphorically, you're like you're yes. on the road to getting something, and this is where your path took you. Or I have some. She doesn't care. I know. I would certainly be curious what. Uh, what he meant by that if it was my house and my stuff but i guess she she doesn't actually care um she notices that he has kind of blackish stuff on his fingers sort of similar to the body in the woods isn't that very interesting no he says it's um, from his uh, fingerprint ink that's all that was don't worry about that no no fair enough fair enough it checks out story checks out um she does this yeah she does that weird aggressive thing where she like pretends <laughs> to write and yells at him it's really cringe and strange um, and it works and he goes oh. He's like, oh, God, you're actually a psychopath. You might stab me at any second with that pen. I will do anything you say. I mean, you are clearly unhinged and crazy. To be fair, if someone did that in front of me, I feel... You would look to, like, I mean, the, the people in charge, like, is this... Is she allowed to... <laughs> can, can you... Can I have someone else? Yeah. Um, yeah, she's like, hey, look... Look at these pictures of this body that I took earlier on today where this person died. I'm a detective. What do you know about the body? And he, he's like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? These are just flowers on someone's lawn. And then Agatha looks down and the get photos it. are actually... What? I said, get it. No, what do you mean? It's not real. Oh my god! Yes, and you oh. look at that and you're like, yeah, of course it's not real. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> it's a weird vibe of like, oh, we, who's this for, I guess? It's like, well, for her. You're like, well, but... Is it for, is but, it for the people who didn't watch the trailers and didn't watch WandaVision? But, but, uh, but also, why would it work? This show? Why would it work that way? Why would, why would the photos not be working, quote unquote? You why know, like, they work? yeah. Why would it just be because he said that they're not, they're, they're, why wouldn't he react like they're not that? But then she looks well, and then like, of course, what are you talking about? Look, if all it the, took the were people in the illusion to start poking holes in it, how the fuck did it get this far for three years? I guess, I guess you yeah. just have to rely on literally nobody else ever being like, Agatha, can you, Stop. like, shut the fuck up? <laughs> yeah. Like, this yeah. Is not real. <laughs> anyway, it makes too much sense. All of the people who suffered at the hands of Scarlet Witch were just like, ah, fuck it, we'll just, we'll just play along for some reason instead of it getting the fuck out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright. <Yeah. laughs> 
Now the um, yeah, the, the photographs change. The glass in the interrogation room turns into a painting. This this kid starts talking in Latin. <gasps> Things are going crazy nuts. So now now she starts being like, "Holy shit, am I going crazy nuts? So am I insane in the membrane? I should go check and see if that body was actually real." And the only way, the best way to check and see if the entire police investigation that you did with, with like the murder and everything, the best way to check and see if it's real is to go to the morgue for <laughs> the body yourself. It's not to like call someone or, or, or check or anything. No, straight to the source. No questions. We're going to go see that body. So she drives to the morgue and a body appears on the examination table and then she says, oh, the hair was the color of scarlet. Ooh, I know that. What does it mean? Oh, my God. And then the library card, it's, it's, it's clipped. It, it's, it's hooked on the toe of the body. And it says, W. Maximov. I know that. Oh, oh. my God. But like, Wanda's definitely not dead, though, as well. Anyway, it's, it's you know what I mean? It's almost They've... like twofold. Like, what yeah, bothers me about that life. is the we haven't even pretended she's dead for many projects, let alone time. Like the the fact that like what has happened since Multiverse of Madness? Like, well, I guess this. He's like, well, okay. I mean, just you know, it's it's the amount of time that characters just don't tend to appear anyway. You know, like a character will appear in a movie and then you don't see him for like two or three years, typically. So, like, it's not, yeah, it's, it's not like it's actually been emphasized in terms of, like, an absence of a character's presence also, uh, we, in the uh, world, the presence or impact. We just confirm this. This is, this is a CG tier, correct? Is it? Looks to be I like it is. So. That's awkward. Um, I would assume this isn't because Catherine Hahn can't cry on, com on command. It's probably because they it's decided because... later that it, she should yeah. be crying. Wouldn't it be better if she was crying yeah. and really shed a little tear? That's kind of, like, awkward, isn't it? I'm just yeah. deciding, like, you know what? Like, we're going to change your performance. So we changed yeah. our minds. You should be... We, we want you sadder. And, and it, what's it, funny is I think it probably would be better if she wasn't crying because she's Agatha. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird because uh, I, I do think it's probably CGI or added later because... It does not have any build up to it before, and that's why it just registers as weird. Also, besides like how it looks, because it cuts to her and she's suddenly like, crying, even though she, there was nothing that alluded to that before. Yeah, I think the, this, this moment cuts. should be capturing that of just utter confusion and a bit more of like horror, maybe, but. Uh, getting yeah. a tear out of it. I don't know. That did feel a little like whoever's controlling the edit was like, eh, let's throw a tear in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, oh, you're yeah. sad about that, and it's like I'm not. But I mean, she wouldn't be. She'd she'd be like if she if if the real Agatha was registering that, she'd be like happy. I presume she'd be like, yeah, mm -hmm. she's gone. The person who put me in this like illusion torture for for years. Mm -hmm. Well, like ninety nine percent of the time, she's like, "This nothing is." She takes nothing seriously, jokes around, doesn't matter if they're about to die, whatever. And then there's like this zero point one percent of the time that she's overly emotional this way, and it just does not make sense oh, at all. No, it, to be yes, clear, she's not. She's not back to normal. She's confused. She doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. But like that's why I'm saying that the tear feels a little. Uh, we should wait on the tear yet. If we're doing it at all. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there will be plenty of time for tears later. Believe me. Um, <laughs> anyway, Vidal shows up. She's here now. She says, the witch is dead, and all the copies of the Dark Hold with her. Agnes asks <laughs> if, if it's really hot in here, and she takes off her jacket and puts down her hair, which bugs me, because if you're, as a long hair haver, um, if it's hot... You keep your hair up because it keeps it off your shoulders and your neck. But that's her so iconic look weird... with her hair down. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. Well, that explains that because I thought that was just a stupid thing to do. But I guess now I know the, the answer. So we can let me just scratch that. Let me scratch that off my list of problems with the show. All right. That one's good. Um, uh, uh, her outfit keeps changing. She even turns yeah, black and white like one of the episodes. It's all the iconic one division appearances. Yeah. Wow. Wow, this is nostalgic. It, yeah, it's nostalgic <laughs> for a couple of years ago. 
<laughs> if so many crazy. people care for the sh for that show, oh, they're gonna I lose their minds. That people did when it came out, like it was successful. It was quite it was successful. Honestly, we're far oh, enough yeah. away from it now that we can say, yeah, that was a different time. That was when people would watch anything yeah. Marvel. They had their shot. Exactly. We are now distinctly yeah, at a time where people not only do not keep up with Marvel, but avoid it actively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Agatha, uh, Agnes remembers her name. Agatha Harkness. Ooh. Ah. Anyway, she appears back in her house, and she is totally naked. And that's why she put her hair down, actually. That's the answer. Is it's, I guess it wouldn't matter, actually. I don't know if it, it would or wouldn't matter. I don't know. Oh, well, I mean... To be honest with you, there isn't necessarily an answer because she keeps flipping between hairstyles anyway throughout this whole sequence. So, you know, like instantly, not like it's actually being changed by huh, some women. So it's it's it, um, you know it being up or down didn't fucking matter anyway. Yeah. So she is uh in the nude. She's ah natural, which is fine if you're in your own house. Totally fine. Um, freeing. You know, I understand it. I don't wear clothes myself. But uh, <laughs> then she goes outside. And she goes to where this guy is trimming the trimming the hedge, and she's like, "Oh, how long have I been living here?" And he says, three years." But the last few days, you sure have been weird. Uh, and like she's confused. She's trying to figure out what's going on. She's she's getting out of the spell. She's broken out of the spell or something. Um, and uh, the, the guy says, "You know, apart from you being um unclothed, you seem actually uh pretty lucid. You seem aggressive." You seem powerful. And Agnes is like, what did you say? Powerful. Oh. She goes back into her house. Yeah, she's very powerful. Or is she? Because she goes back into her house and she tries to cast a magic spell, but she can't do it. Then she finds a rabbit. Wanda took her powers. Yeah. There's a thumping noise. Up there. I, I, <laughs> yeah. This is accurate. Uh, He's describing the episode as it happens. <laughs> Yeah, man, there's a thumping noise upstairs. <laughs> or at least I thought it was upstairs. Um, it's actually coming from the closet because that perpetrator from earlier who stole stuff from the house, the, the, little, the kid, he is tied up in the closet with duct tape over his mouth. Mm. She's like, oh, I might have kidnapped you, I guess. But before we can explore this, the front door of her house explodes. Holy fuck. Yeah. Oh. It's it, it, time for the obligatory action scene. Oh, yes. No. Vidal we got a particularly is here. funny one. Vidal uh, yeah. is here. She casts magic and she tries to stab Agatha. And she could have stabbed her, but she just doesn't, I guess. Uh, and they have what can only be described as a really shitty fight. Um, now we get some confusing, like the beginning of what I can only describe as extremely confusing, messy witch world building, I think. What um, you mean, just the characters declaring how the witch stuff works when they both know it? Well, if I may, kind of? um, I feel you as may. though they had no clue what they were doing. They just were like, we need to get you fighting, so let's fight. And then it's like, I'm going to kill you, because that's what you say when you want to attack someone. And then she throws the I knife say, yeah. and hits her with a knife in such ways that it's like, clearly she's trying to kill her, yes, yes. And then the first thing we do with the conversation of significance and substance is, there's rules, we can't kill each other. And you as a viewer are like, huh? What? <laughs> what? You clearly tried to kill her. You have the knife at her throat and everything. You even it's, threw blood. And all of it is as you know. Like, we know these rules, don't we? Yes, we do. All right, then, no more killing. And you're like, we were just killing. It's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch someone kill you. You're like, what? So why uh, did you barge in, then? What's going on? Like, why? I don't think we should call that barging in. She made the door explode. <laughs> yeah, that's that more, is, it's uh, more aggressive than a barge. It's an it's exploding in. It's a bit more in. aggressive. Mm. It, is, it, is a, it is aggressive and powerful, like, uh, like Agatha <laughs> is. But essentially, like, it, it, Vidal says, like, hey, we can't, like, we can't kill each other. It's not allowed. And Agatha's like, oh, don't you want me at my power? Isn't that more, like, good if I have my power? If you kill me like this when I don't have my power, that's just, like, not fun at all, I guess. And Vidal says that uh, there's a lot of others who want you dead, Agatha. Um, and uh, Vidal says that, oh, I do have a heart. It's black and it beats for you. 
but you better be careful because the Salem Seven will be there that oh, evening so terrible. to kill her. It's Holy barely expedition. more. It's barely more than script notes. It's the uh, I'm gonna kill you. Can't kill me. Okay, I'm gonna hurt you. No, we don't wanna do that because you want me to wait until I'm powerful. Okay, yeah, fair. Well, okay, I'm gonna watch people kill you. What? What? Why would you? What? And there's like the Salem Seven are coming. What? And you like, said there if, wouldn't be another group of Avengers. Uh, if um, if that was the goal from the... Like, she shouldn't even be here if that was the goal. You know what I mean? But she had to be reminded of things she knows in order to then redo the goal that she already had. It's it's like she literally barges in... Oh no, I said it too. Just to, just to tell us what's going on. It has nothing to do with her or Agatha. It is very confusing. From the beginning, I'm instantly getting that the, this idea that they didn't think about anything. The world building of the witch stuff and the magical secret society that deals with this stuff is all... It's all shit. It's it all was, terrible. Um, they don't give a damn. Nothing it was, matters. There was a tweet about this fight that I think pissed Riot off quite a bit. Uh, it was uh, funny. So it was like I think it might even have been viral. It was like this fight scene gets even better when you consider that Agatha is naked under her uh, gown. Right. And it's like, did you know that Agatha's naked <laughs> under her clothes? Yeah, that's the thing. It's like everyone is <laughs> naked under their clothes. You moron! <laughs> like, what? I'm naked under these sunglasses. Well, I'm naked guys. in this pumpkin. <laughs> I think we found the target audience for this. Yeah, show. we did it. <laughs> um, well, yeah, as you can tell by the fact that there are so many people here on this EFAP who've watched this and want to talk about it, mm -hmm. uh, the target audience is, um, uh, well, we'll learn what the target audience is. That's the first episode. We did it. The credits roll. One we down, That's four to go. <laughs> That's right. So far, it's pretty good. Seven out of ten. Well, oh, so something that actually well, bugs me is the montage of famous witch iconography in the credits. It's like, what does this have to do with you, show? What does any of this no, have that's, to do with you? That's you. That's, it's a witch show. It's about witches. Yeah, look. It, it definitely yeah, is. They, have, like, they would be like, cards. well, we're the witch show. It's like, oh, fuck off. Lisa Simpson's here in a witch outfit. Yeah. Be oh, I didn't know that. Because, uh, yeah, Disney owns The Simpsons now. They're allowed so, to do that. Yeah. You even right have the, the the evil queen from Snow White. Yeah. She's there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Random pictures of witches. Random this pictures of skulls. T tarot cards, pointy hats. Because uh, that's relevant to Agatha. Witch of the Ooh. West pentagrams. Mm. All right. <laughs> so um, anyway, episode, episode two. <laughs> yeah, episode two. This one is called. Yay. Through many miles of tricks and trials. Nice. It rhymes. <laughs> nah, they, they, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Honestly, Freggy, I don't um, think it's nice. Oh my goodness, you fooled us. Like, Wanda fooled Ag Agatha. Wait, why did you her... say that it's cold? I think you got it mixed up, uh, Rags. Wanda fooled Agnes? No, the titles. The titles. That that is not the name of episode two. <gasps> oh, I oh I scrolled down too far. Yeah, the, the oh, number notes. episode two is is Jeez. circle sewn with fate. Unlock thy hidden gate. Yes, circle way better. Fate. Unlock thy. Oh, hidden I, gate. and I mean, I oh de no, I guess we can save it for later. But the episode four is, is really bad. Like <laughs> like really bad <laughs> in terms of a name. True. Um. We'll I talk mean, about that when we get there. Yes, um, we will. Well, all right, then. <laughs> all right, yeah. Uh, so after the first episode, we have this one. It continues, right? It, it doesn't just end and we can go home. Nope. Um, no. So this, this tied-up guy in the closet who's just kind of been watching all of this fighting happen, um, well, well, Vidal leaves. Uh, and... Can we talk about who he is? Because we can talk about it as it goes through, then. Because I feel like there's problems throughout once we know who he is. Um, I mean, it's probably worth let's talk about it. That. Especially, especially well, since so, like, it was yeah, it was leaked anyway. before the show came out anyway. So, 
you know. <laughs> I don't so think most of people I don't care. Know. I don't think people well, care. That's also true. But well, this hey, this complaints I have, me. and I'd rather not like stack them all once it's revealed. I'd rather just go through. I think that's fair. Yeah, that's fire. It's fair. Go for it because so, we're only talking about the first five episodes anyway. So whatever. Fuck it. Um, this is combined from things I've read and also from things I've heard. Uh, Gary's mentioned some of this. So for those who don't know, this kid is one of the two twin sons of Wanda's. And you might be thinking to yourself, more that makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. they're not real. Well, let me help mm -hmm. you out. We're going to get okay. lore that isn't in the show yet. I'm not sure if it's going to be in the show or in the future for justifying this shit, because I know that we're getting more Wanda-related crap and Westview. I like, I like how you can just say so confidently, you know, it, it's, it's, we just don't know if they'll ever explain it. Yeah, no, I, 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 and that's I, true. I, that's like an actual question. We're like, the thing is, oh, yeah, we don't know if they'll ever bother to explain it. Let's just say, put it this way: out of all the leaks that have come out related to this kid, half of them have been one hundred percent accurate. The other half, we haven't seen them explain yet. So I'm assuming it's true. So I'll give you the full package, which is when Wanda mm. was doing all the shit in Multiverse of Madness. The the spirits slash the whatever they are of those two boys. We're, I don't even know if I've spoken to Friggy about this, <laughs> but the, <laughs> there were boys in real life who died, and their spirits left their bodies, and the spirits of Wanda's sons were put into those bodies to become real boys. So she can create, with illusions, actual, real, verifiable, genuine human spirits. That, like see, the, this, this oh, is what like I mean about... Oh, it's like the witches from Acolyte! This is what I mean about uh, whether or not horse. this will actually become the truth. But from what I gather, it's the same source for the same leaks that I've been reading, uh, that that is what the story is going to be to justify her sons being real. Because we're going to get the other one, I think, in a different show or something. But this is this is one of them. Um, but then, I don't know if how much know. insanely offensive <laughs> that is on its own, by the way. <laughs> like yeah. that, just, um, we put that to one side. What in the fuck? Like, who did that? Why did they do that? How is it okay? What is he doing here? Like, what? what is... What's going on? He came to Westview and wanted to go on the road? Because he's desperate. We, we already got that. He wants to go on the road. It's, um... It's the kind of thing, I think, that when... The, the reveals is kind of most of what they have... Uh, in general, and so once you have them, you can't rewatch the show because there's so much time wasted not making use of those elements. Like mm -hmm. the character he well, plays it's, it's for like the first five episodes is kind yeah. of irrelevant. Basically, yeah, it's like you placed on pause until they decide that they can do the reveal so that people can talk about it on Twitter. But then it's like, oh, but all the stuff that came before was kind of just like just a empty waste now. of time. Then it was just sort of. It was just like your standard meandering, advancing the plot stuff, but not building character that will be relevant or consistent going forward. <laughs> so that also Can now he's imagine? older, they just fuck with all of that. Looks different, is whatever age, whatever powers, they just whatever you, whatever they want. Because one of them is going to mm -hmm. be super fast, and the other one can cast spells, right? That's the two twins. Can you imagine having that crazy ass like uh, story origin story, and then? be wasted as a character <laughs> well, following uh, around Agatha and yeah. like fanboying the whole time. And having some of the cringiest lines in these first few episodes. Holy shit. He's yeah. our um he's our Starbucks Twitter man. Just He's our he's our our Zoomer trash character. He'll say things hey. like vibes and um iconic. He'll say these things in casual conversation and they'll make you want to scratch your ears out. Yeah. And well, he... we'll, he won't know what, well, we'll get there. Um, I actually would be curious, would you rather be able to be, move at, like, super speed or cast spells? Which one would you rather be Probably able to cast do? spells, because I'm assuming if I get anywhere near to Scarlet Witch's power, that's insanity in terms of uh, things you can do. Well, it depends on what kind of spells. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just, like, you know, witchy spells. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, let's just put it this way. If it's Scarlet Witch, yes. If it's fucking... Who's like a lame witch? Uh, Agatha? Well, I mean, she's pretty powerful at top tier. I guess. Lame witch? Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, 
<laughs> Someone said Doctor Strange. No, Glinda the, Glinda's a good witch. Don't say that. Um, I don't know. I, would, I think I would choose spells myself. I feel like spells are very, very, like, going to be useful in your daily life. You could do all sorts of cool stuff with them. Yeah. The other one is speed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like which, super which speed. Which super useful. Mm -hmm. It's just... That's a good one. That is a good one. If I could be anything like Quicksilver, I'd probably, I don't know, maybe that. Can we get, like, a fat silver where he can run really fast, but he's, he's overweight, like, he let himself go, and he doesn't get... You 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 don't get the thing of being super athletic from running. He's actually like it doesn't work that way. <laughs> I feel like that'll be fun. Yeah. That's probably been done though. It just, it just generates calories like a factory. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, enough fun. We have to talk about Agatha. All right, so, um, the the, the this tied up guy, this little kid, this this kid, who could he be? I don't know. Um, th this weird Zoomer kid, um, he tells her that he wants Agatha to take her to the Witch's Road. Oh my goodness. Apparently, it will give you the thing that you want the most if you can reach the end of it. I think it was um, because me and Franny saw this one uh, together for sure. It was, we, were, we were like, let me guess, it, it, you get it along the way. <laughs> Yeah, you. I mean, of course. Oh, yeah, it was course. it was the journey. Was, you know what? At the end of the road, you realize, we, and then we realized, like, oh fuck, it's gonna be a shit. Puss in boots, the last wish. God damn it! Oh yeah, yeah exactly. That's exactly how I felt. Yeah, this will be yeah. shit. Puss in boots. Um. So this, uh, this, he's a kid. He's sixteen years old. This sixteen-year-old kid is apparently obsessed with Agatha. Um, and he's read so much about her. He says he knows everything about her. Uh, even back to her Salem days, which is going back like 330 years, something like that. A long time. Uh, and, and I guess all of this is like documented. And you could just read about Agatha like she has <laughs> biographies and stuff. But yeah, he, he knows all about her. She he is he is her biggest fan. <laughs> He's he like won. Lee from Joker, too, but without all the lying. <laughs> Also, I just, I just, I have to share this with you guys. I just happened to read it. It's so funny. Someone's okay. posted this. It's, uh, it's a post on Star Wars Outlaws. It's not log. I was absolutely <laughs> okay. loving this game. Forty-five hours in, and then I get this damn bug Ooh. where I can't take off. I'm also stuck in some random space station in Akiva's orbit, and I have no way of getting out. I guess I just have to wait for an update. <laughs> 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 That. You, it, it's basically the game has essentially imprisoned you in yeah, space. Yeah, imprisoned you in done. the tiny space station, <laughs> which is a copy of all the other space stations. Just waiting for an update on the space station, <laughs> like please. I want to go to Akiva. <laughs> I want to see Boba Fett. Oh, oh fella, that was. <laughs> Update the game, save me. <laughs> Ubisoft. Um, anyway, <laughs> Ubisoft is, they're too busy panicking in, in a fiery office room right now to patch this game. They have to figure out how they're going to survive the next year. Um, <laughs> so uh, this, uh, this kid, he says that he wants magical powers from the road. He wants power. He wants to be able to cast like magical spells. That's what he ooh, wants. Ooh, ooh. And he says, take me with you. Well, yeah, take me to on the road. Because Agatha wants to go on the road to get her powers back. Because she doesn't have any magic powers. She's just a, she's, she's just a woman. Just a regular old, Boo. everyday, completely secular, natural woman. <laughs> we don't, we, and those are... Well, we don't like them. Them. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, now... On the ground, Agatha notices the locket from before with the hair in it and the, the maiden the, and the other two. And she's, oh, look at that. That's weird. And she takes it. Um, now, she asks, hey, kid, who are you? And when he tries to tell her his name, um, there's like a spell, a magic spell on his mouth. And he can't say what his name is. Um, and all, and all she says is interesting and then agrees to take him on the road. This annoys me. Um, you know why? This annoys me immensely. Oh, 
<laughs> I have no idea, Mahler. Why does it annoy you? The first time through annoyance, because it gets worse the more information you have, uh, is, wow, did you know when you say your name, it's obscured like some kind of someone's put a spell on you? Did you know that? And then he can say whatever he says. And let's assume, according to the information we have later, he would say no. He would say, what? No, that doesn't make sense to me. Why is that happening? And then you'd be like, write your name down. And then he does it. And let's say it comes out in complete squiggles, because that's how the spell works. You'd be like, interesting. All right. Mm -hmm. I need you to jump when I hit the right letter. A, B, C, yeah. D. <laughs> and th then you get him to get it, and you get the answer, and then the twist of episode five is already done. So, that's annoying. Secondly, I don't know if you guys knew this, but it's a spell he cast on himself. That's what we discover. <gasps> if it's a spell he's casting on himself, <laughs> like, then... Yeah. Why? So you'd think, oh, because he doesn't want people to know his name. It's like, oh, 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 me, me, me. I have. So humans do this a what, lot. What? They, 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 yeah. they, there's times where humans will want you to to not know their name, and so they they give you a different name. Oh but really? That, what? Yeah. That would be a lie. Whoa. <laughs> what? Well, okay, we better what? do a sigil there. <laughs> we, we, a Zoomer uh... kid would never lie I... about his identity. I was like, what the fuck? Why, why would you put that? You cast a spell to obscure your own name being sounded as opposed to just saying, yeah, Bob. I'm Jeremy, yeah. <laughs> I am, yeah. What? Like, uh, uh, because when Agatha notices that he is like bewitched and can't say his identity, at that point she should say, get the fuck away from me. You're not coming. You're bewitched. You know, she's just like, mm hmm. hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she she says interesting, and then she's like, "Come on." You know what? I just realized if Wanda could see her son like this, right? The entire multiverse of madness just wouldn't happen. Yes, she would just give up. I mean, we don't need to get into it, but they annihilated Wanda. <laughs> annihilated. Yeah, she's gone. She's gone. The horrible she monster. She went from being like the worthwhile character to, yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, at well, least we get, at least we'll get a new cast of fun characters for us to get invested in and care about. Now, this mm -hmm. part is weird, and I don't know exactly what it's trying to say, but maybe, like, if you could pull up the visuals on the, um, on the stream here. Um, we see Agatha, like, sitting down at a at a table, but it's got like this mocked up car. Yeah, stuff. it's supposed to like mean there's... this is what she was doing in her fantasy when she was in a car. That's all That's... that means. That causes more problems. No, no, yeah. So, to be clear, it's meant as a joke, but uh, as Fringy mentioned way back, nothing makes any fucking sense about the way her fantasies worked. So there's almost no point in going over it. It wouldn't have worked. You need so many, you need everyone to cooperate, yeah. which they wouldn't. You need everyone to cooperate where. They wouldn't even feel inclined to. They should kind of hate her, if not be very scared or worried about her. Sword should have taken this whole place down anyway. And then, of course, the nature of like laying out a world in your mind that maps the fake world so that you feel like you're actually moving through it in like an imaginary or brain fucked way. No, none of it works. Uh, they did that for the meme. That's all. All right, because it actually yeah. confused me because it doesn't make sense. So I thought they were going with the route of like she doesn't know what a car is because she she's like she picks up the scissors she picks up she picks up a scissors and is like oh these are like the keys to the to like a car oh no they're not i guess you're driving cuz i don't i cuz it just can uh yeah. it just it's implied that she never went out of her house because the guy was in her closet locked um the the car is whatever yeah. that is and but but it's also implied that people she still interacted with other people so what they were were they coming over her what is this is a classic anyway. case of hey look <laughs> this would represent that and her thing and this would represent that and the thing and then you go oh you've just presented me this and it doesn't make sense and then they would immediately recoil and be like it's for fun why what do you it was just fun. It was just supposed to be a fun thing. Why are you taking it so seriously? Yeah, why do you hate fun? It's like, you're the one that it's told random. me this was the you case. you enjoy anything? You told me this mm -hmm. was the case. That was funny, by the way. Uh, Elm Street 4 went out. We were not a fan of it. And there was a comment that said something like, uh, 
fucking hell, do they like any movies? And someone was like, they just praised Elm Street 3. Like, that just <laughs> yeah, happened. Yeah, Three Warriors was good. <laughs> we did a whole thing on Elm Street 3 being like awesome. Like a loser? Though <sighs> uh, so we don't like Agatha, you got us. Hands no, up. we do, yep. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Cast a sigil on us to something. We'll learn about those later. Hey, she asks the kid what he knows about covens. You know, because like witches' covens and stuff like that. Now he says that they are drawn, the people in a coven, the, 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 the women in the coven, they are drawn together by mysterious forces of fate. It is the truest form of sisterhood. Um, and she says that they're going to need a coven uh. to access the witch's road. Oh, and uh, in the middle I of all this, of like, oh. he randomly yeah. just announces to the audience that he's gay, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, the, the, this, oh, uh, that's in the gay explosion, right? Oh, th this is in the the, the the phone. Oh, I was I I was moving forward to the the just the the whole sequence being that we need to get the coven. Oh yeah, they're they're driving down the road and the kid is gay. <laughs> the kid is I they're they're uh, that's it that a it's just the, and it's not even done well. Okay, so, so okay, so the kid is gay. That's why in all of my notes he's just gay kid. That's it's who so... he is. He's gay kid. It, this might be one of my favorites for that sort of nonsense idiot trope that they've been doing in modern stuff, where it's, it's, it, he literally, his phone goes off, and he's like, it's, it's my boyfriend, and it's that's B -O -Y -F. it. It's B-O-Y-F. B-O-Y-F is the person that is calling him, <laughs> like, boy. What, now, what did they think, what does that do for anything, to be like, he's gay? Like, alright, anyway, that, moving that's, on. That's the whole purpose. <laughs> he calls, gay kid hangs up, he doesn't answer the phone, he says, he worries sometimes. Carry on with the show. Yep, on to go. Literally it. <laughs> the story... It's just a phone call to let yeah. you know that kid is gay. That's it. And also, <clears throat> he's an asshole because he doesn't even have the guy's name. It's B O Y F on the name on the phone. <laughs> well, and hey, just so you know that this is his boyfriend, not just a friend. You know how you know how in your phone, like in your contacts, if you have like a boyfriend or a girlfriend that's that's what you designate them as in the phone sure. like wife boyfriend <laughs> girlfriend dog you know so and that's just the title of things they don't have names that's their title in your life Rags, you wouldn't understand he's a he's a wonderful you're right young I buck don't understand. in the world of twitter and online and social he's social media man Boy. that's what they do like they could have added some kind of like little conflict there between him and his boyfriend, like to add the, it would characterize him, it would add something to him, and also explain his gayness, I guess. <laughs> but it's just a scene, like anyway. It's it's just weird that we're at that point of just like he's gay, You're like okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> well, now because when will because we uh, show... snap back and one day we'll have a character just go he's straight and then we're all like <gasps> oh my goodness um the he will be here here to referred to as gay kid because that's what the show wants me to think uh so i will gladly accept the uh sure, gay the, kid, the convention right. of the yep gay kid so the covenstead rule which is like a magic rule it's a magic. I don't know if it, I don't know if it's a rule in the sense that it's like a descriptive. It's like the laws of logic. It's like a descriptive element of what seems to be the real world, right? Well, they have what's called the Covenstead rule in witchery and magic, and that is within a three mile radius, there will be appropriately witchy enough people in order to form a coven, which means that there will be at least, as we will discover. Five, four, there will be at least four people that uh, are going to be able to draw you together by a mysterious force of fate, and this will be the truest form of sisterhood. Within a three mile radius, mm -hmm. there's it's, just those people exist. It's almost as bad as if they were like, We're gonna fight a zombie apocalypse, we need guns. It's like there's always a gun store around the corner, and then they turn around the corner and the gun store is there. In fact, that would be in like a fun, action packed, crazy movie, but. They're doing it to try and get past the fact that we get the coven immediately. 
because we got to get well, through and, this and quick. You realize, yeah, at this point, it's like, oh, so it's going to be the episode's going to be that there's like five minute, every you know, every five minutes they'll go and counter the new witch, and then they'll get them as they group, and then and then there'll be like some action scenes to round it out, and that'll be that. Yeah, like the... you know, like nothing surprising would ever happen in terms of the story structure. It's like we got to be as expeditious as no, expeditious is a positive word. We just got to be fast. We got to go super duper fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's funny a lot of people are like well that is in the u.s like you know what yeah there's probably two per gun store actually there's there's a gun store per gun store <laughs> in the per corner but uh point i was trying to make of course was that normally speaking this would take some time this whole sequence but we're gonna get is it it is three isn't it yeah uh which is yeah, and the day. scenes are all exactly the same it is we're not yeah. gonna go with you because you're agatha harkness right step one hey, of here's uh, your let, here's your character motive. Okay, maybe I'll come. Well, so yeah, like, like if you did a list of reasons why they would not come with her, it's like, you're Agatha Harkness. You have a reputation for being a horrible monster. Number two, you actually have a desire, a motivation to kill witches and steal their powers. We know this. That's something we don't want to be with you for, as well as the fact we don't like you. Three, probably got a history with her where she did something horrible to them. That, that seems to be the case for all of them. Uh, yeah. Or they don't believe the road is real, several of them, and of the ones that do believe it's real think it's like a, um, a place that kills you. So there's no fucking point mm -hmm. in going. Uh, and then, of course, that they don't trust it. And then, of course, you, you pile on, the, 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 this is how the scenes go. It'll be a selection of one of those is said, and then Agatha will be like, yes, but, and then describes their situation as though they don't know their situation. Motivations. And yeah. then that mm -hmm. like, is... Oh, hey, your character... This is your problem that I that will be resolved by going on the witch's road. And that will be twisted yeah. into somehow being a thing that makes them go, you know what? Maybe I will come. And it's like, no, 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 no. All, you already knew all of that, and then you made all those positions clear that have nothing to do with... You know, like, if I said, like, I don't want to go because it'll kill me, and then you say, yeah, but you're poor. Like, that doesn't address the big problem here. And, um, yeah, uh, uh, similar problems for all of them in terms of, like, don't you want to be more powerful? Don't you want to be having your witchcraft back? Don't you want to be blah, blah, blah? All of them making very clear, very good reasons to never go with her, and it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And it's like clockwork, each scene, and they're very lame, and they're filled with uh, the, the what, what is it, gay kid, I think Rags was saying? I, I don't even know what his actual name is. What is his actual uh, they name? They just keep calling him. They Wait, call him Teen. What? They just call him Teen. That's what they yeah. start calling him. All yeah, right. I don't think his name is said. He's supposed to be Wiccan as like an actual, uh, you know, comic book character, but I don't. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That's the so. Oh. Anyway, he just makes random comments here and there that are all very hard to watch and uh, listen to. Even like I said, we named a few of them, but he'll just come out with. Um, like he's making tweets in real time. How I feel about him. And it yeah. hurts. Uh, it's it's like a completely out of touch older person is trying to write a a young yes. hip plugged in zoomer kid. It's like oh, you but... look so wonderful. Like, and, and you're, like, you're so <laughs> iconic. Oh my god, this place is so wonderful. Gay. Yeah, it is. Like, okay, okay. I love your Insta page. It's like please stop. I beg you. At no point so far has he ever gone, yes, queen. <laughs> but if, I oh, think it's like manifested. Oh, he's on the verge. <clears throat> That's um, going to be my... But correct me if I'm wrong, do all three of them essentially come to the conclusion of they're probably not, or they may be, and then they all do? That's kind of how it goes. Yeah, basically, yeah. every single one ends with... Oh no! I, I, you know what? Nah, I don't like the idea of doing that. But then they will show up anyway because, of course, they do. Yeah. I, I mean, wish they. It would, it would be. It would be a little bit interesting if even one of them just didn't show up. You know. Yeah. I just I don't. Wish... Didn't come. I don't want to hear about how much they hate her, how much it's a bad idea, and how much that they don't want to do it, and then to just do it is so boring. I wish at least one of them was like, okay, sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> That'd be for interesting too. Diversity, I guess, or whatever. Well, yeah, it's 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 um for as much as the the whole point of these scenes is to be like, see, this is this character, and these are her traits, and you know, uh, sort of idiosyncrasies, and and sort of you know, look at look at him go. 
but like all of them are basically sort of blend together in terms of uh in terms of like motivations and and like mm -hmm. it's it's just they all do the same thing like they yeah. all they they all essentially just like all of the scenes are structured in more or less the same way and achieve the exact same thing for each of them so you know mm -hmm. doesn't it help make them feel like distinct people yeah, there's yeah a... they're the same character. Nick Diorio said, I see what you have to try to do. I've started the Renew Agatha petition and it has six current members. <laughs> Is that real? <laughs> I hope that's real. <laughs> none, of, none of the actresses <laughs> agreed to sign the petition. <laughs> I can just totally believe it ends up at like 15 after a year. <laughs> yes! Yes, let's go! <laughs> Oh. Um, there's a few little interesting tidbits as they go and um, gather their coven. Um, again, don't know what the covenstead rule means for like, is fate actually real? What if one person, what if you're in the Antarctic or whatever, or in a desert, or the, don't even begin to think about that. Maybe it's more of a rule of thumb. Um, but we get, we start to get a lot of very strange inconsistencies with Gay Kid in terms of what his knowledge is. Um, he seems amazed that the first one they go to, Lilia, doesn't look a day over 450, and he's like, oh, you're so old, but he knows that Agatha's from, like, Salem, and she's at least, at least, like, 330 years old, so very strange that he thinks it's crazy witches can live a long time, a lot of inconsistent stuff there, um... I don't even know if, I don't think... if he's lying this whole time or not, I don't know what they want us to think exactly. Well... Even if uh, if it's all a ploy, it would be weird because of how inconsistent he is at his knowledge. He knows what very specific things are, like what like like uh, uh, like specific spells and terminology. But he will not know what would be very broadly known things, like witches can live a long time, or mm -hmm. what a sigil is, or uh, like what a blood witch is, or something along those lines. He knows. He is very, very inconsistent level of knowledge. He seems to not know some of the most basic elements, but also know some of very obscure, specific things. Um, mm -hmm. So if he's trying to come across as somebody, not a great job is being done here. Oh, and um, um, when I was uh, going through the law, I forgot to mention that one of these witches just writes a list of the witches needed to collect for the... That's such a, like, walk. Yeah. Well, that's Lilia. She's the divination witch. She divines things, knowledge. She reads time like, or something. They couldn't <laughs> be cheating more to get through this fucking story, could they? They'd be like, we need a team. Yeah. Well, luckily for us, it'll be within a three-mile radius. Okay, but that's still not great. Like, where are they? It's like, don't worry. The first one we visit writes the list of ones we got to collect. It's like, cool. All yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, not Magic. It's not shorter of the show than any other show really that's coming out, but it's it feels so much more rushed. It just rushes through every mm -hmm. key point that ever happens. It just every time you think something is important enough to focus on, it just rushes right rushes right past past it. So it's yeah. <laughs> now remember. You need a coven to access the witch's road. It's the truest form of sisterhood. So, you would think that it would be like a very, very tight bond between them for some reason, but very, very confrontational. They seem to all really hate Agatha, but still go along with maybe it. Maybe they'll like Mala each other by the end. Oh. Maybe. Aww. Maybe. Maybe I'll like Agatha by the end, but it's still up in the air. Um... Uh, let me see. It, it's not really too much to sh say. Ooh, She's edible candles. You know, when that scene started, I was legitimately wondering, like, was, was there anybody thinking maybe this shouldn't be in the MCU? Edible candles? Yeah, just just women testing and tasting edible. candles. It just, uh, I start having what flashes What grounds us of... to the characters, to the normal person, to the experiences of the people who live in this world? Uh, Haven't you ever eaten a candle? It's more about... It's actually a woman thing. We all do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. They know. do. I've we seen do, it. Yeah. And then they mm -hmm. notice and they stop, but I, I knew they pretend like they didn't do it, but I saw them. <laughs> it's our secret ritual. Yep. I miss... It's, uh, it's out now. Remember when the MCU had, like, um, stuff in it that was cool and interesting and everything, you know? 
Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, the I'm few... trying to think that was Wanda's spell. I think there are a couple of moments like that in the in the Quantum Mania and the Multiverse of Madness videos that just drift into a montage of clips of fun, cool things from Phase One, Two, Three, and then it and then it's like anyway, because <laughs> your brain sometimes mm -hmm. wanders off. Like uh... anyway, back yeah, back to gay kid and the lesbians eating candles. Um, <laughs> eating candles. Yeah, so that's Jen. She's the potions guy that they need. Because you need, like, one of every kind of witch to walk down the witch's road. You need a divination witch, a potions witch. Um, protection witch? You need a mean. protection witch, and you need an earth witch, a green witch. That, who does earth magic? What's um, Agatha, then? An asshole. The asshole witch. I actually witch. don't know. <laughs> She's the leader. Ah, uh, leader witch. Um, so... She's pretty confrontational to the three people that she gets, particularly to um, Alice Wu Gulliver. Uh, she's working security at a mall store. She's the protection witch they need. Uh, Agatha gets her fired uh, when they show up. And then they say, hey, you're fired now. You can come and do the witch road stuff for us. That barely gets acknowledged, like in terms of between the characters, that she got her fired. She doesn't seem to give a shit at all. She doesn't care, yeah. It's because she, it's, it's, she it, treats it. Out of the store. She treats it like it's the introductory scene for her character, as opposed to a job she was actually working. Crazy. Probably shouldn't. Well, we can't do it like have. That. Well, if they show that she's really, really mad at Agatha, she won't show up. Hmm. Good point. But then again, Agatha should know that if you're being extremely antagonistic to these people that you need, or else, I guess you're gonna die when the Salem Seven show up. You should be a little bit nicer, even if it's just like pragmatically a lie, you know, to convince them. But Agatha's just an asshole all the time, nonstop. It never ends. She's a jerk. She's an asshole. She's a bitch to everybody constantly. That's She's a snarky jerk. Rags. It's great. So quirky. All right. I mean, fair enough. It's very, very, very quirky. Um. Anyway, she gives each one of the three witches one by one a, a card. Um. Well, gay kid gives a. A card with the address and says, show up at five o'clock and we'll go do the road thing. Which is weird because that seems like it's a huge deal because if you go down the road, you could die. Most people... That's what they say. Like, die doing it. It's very dangerous. Yeah, like, right. most people Someone die. Someone says it's not real. And then they're like, yeah, okay, I'll come up. I'll do it. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, we don't think it's real. <sighs> but she shows up. But um, Agatha basically is assembling a team to do a magical ritual journey so that she can get to the end of it, get all of her power back. And she, and like, if she fails, she dies and she doesn't have magic power. Turns out basically none of them really do. Two of them are bound, which mean that they can't use magic. Agatha can't use magic. Jen can't use magic. Um, Lilia can sort of like gets visions and is, is a divining witch. And of course, Wu is our, yeah, I'm the protector. Um, anyway, they all show up at the house. They are like, yeah, this is a cool idea. We, we should they, um, totally do this. I don't have anything better to do. Uh, whatever. They write them all with this sense of like, I don't want to be here. I don't like this. Bad idea. Don't like you. Anyway, I'll do anything you say. <laughs> it's very boring. It's like, stop... It's almost like an insecurity of just, do you want to be honest with who you're writing here? Because their actions don't match uh, the people at all. Not even close. Um, after they meet uh, the witches and say, show up at five, they're driving back home. And on the way, she asks Gay Kid where he's from. And as he starts to explain his backstory, that magical spell happens again. And as he's trying to explain what his backstory is, he, he just... It, she can't hear it. Do you think he it's was actually describing the like events name. of WandaVision? And, and it might as well be a magical spell that nobody remembers. Well, because what I guess I'm saying is like he's got that spell going on himself, so it's that so he can be like, I'm free to just say the whole thing and the truth, haha, and she'll never know. He's, you know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck is the point of all that? Just lie, lie like normal people. There's no normal people in this show. So that's off the table. Can't be done. It's just women. 
Oh. True. And Women gays. and a gay. <laughs> Women and gays. True. <laughs> now that's that should be the name of the show. Les lesbians and a gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they get back home. Agatha puts on a blue jacket, walks outside. There's a coyote in the street. Yeah. That's weird. She walks back inside. All right. Um, now, it is here that all of the witches show up. Lilia, Jen, and Wu. They all arrive here. All right. Nice. They've all showed up, even though they seem to really not like Agatha at all. And if they don't do a good job on this journey, they're all going to die. And Lilia even said earlier, oh, you're just going to try and steal all of our power. And Agatha had to say, well, I can only steal your power if you blast me with it. So don't do that. And you'll be fine. <laughs> She's like, oh, OK, I'm definitely not coming. Also, you told me your secret. I so did. that's weird that you did that. Why would you believe it? You know? Yeah, that's no reason to believe that at all. Also, why would she, if that's true, why would she tell them that? And also, why would they believe her, really? Which I guess is really awkward because it is true. That's how Yeah, it that's works. the funny thing. It is true. Yeah. And then it, she may as well have lied because apparently they'll believe her anyway. She should have just said, nope, don't have any powers and never will. Can't do a thing. Nope. Yeah. yeah. So don't worry about it. Anyway. Nope, nothing to worry about. Trust me. Now, all these witches are like, hey, where's the green witch? That's the earth magic witch. They need one of those to walk the witch's road. And then gay kid's like, hey, what about that last name on the list that you weren't telling me about earlier? And Agatha uh, is like, okay, I'll go and I'll, f I'll go get them. So Agatha walks out of the house and she goes talk to, she goes and talks to <gasps> Mrs. Hart, or as she wants to be called, Sharon. Because Mrs. Hart was her slave name. Mm -hmm. Now, she loves gardening. And uh, Agatha's like, hey, there's a party. Come on over. Um, we're going to get, it's going to be a fun party. And Sharon is just like not a witch. She's just a normal woman. She's just living a life, gardening, li just living in the suburbs. She doesn't seem to be in any way magical at living all. Living in Westview, which is just the place where she begged to die. Mm -hmm. She's reclaiming it. Uh -huh. She's reclaiming this. Uh -huh. This town is ours. Wanda's gone. This is our town. We're not going to give her that kind of power. We're going to continue to live here, but we're going to be happy now. That's not in the show. That's just me having a fun meme. Um, but yeah, she, they they need... The, the stakes are potentially death on the witch's road. Agatha walks down the street, grabs someone. Hey, you're gardening. You can be our earth witch. You're, you're our green witch. All right. So, uh, but it's just like, why would you do this? Like, she can't, she she's not going to be able to do anything. She doesn't she's know anything like, about witches. Like, it's not even like she's a witch who doesn't have magic powers. She doesn't have any clue about the or road. Any awareness of it. And, and even if you were to know, like, oh, well, she's evil. She doesn't care. It's like, you know, like, she can still hamper your, like, she can, she can still be... mess things up for you. Yeah, you can be evil and not stupid. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, <gasps> it's just, just a terrible really? idea. It's, yeah. it's totally stupid. And Because uh, another, again, when I was watching this, I was like, ah, see, Mrs. Hart, she's going to be uh, Aubrey Plaza. And that's why this will work, because <laughs> it shouldn't work, because she's not a witch. But Aubrey Plaza's pretending to be Mrs. Oh, Hart. that would be so cool. And I was like, well, well not... I, I thought that's what it would be, because nothing makes any sense otherwise. <laughs> but, uh, no. That is not the case. Yeah. It's just not the case at all. It wouldn't it you why didn't you just make it with with the walking on the witch's road like you have to bring someone who isn't a witch you have to bring an outsider that's just a rule you have to bring someone who is new to this they don't know anything about this it'll be like they're they're part of the test or something like that but no it's, it's nothing like that it's just you random woman gardening you were going to go on this crazy adventure where we might die and there's going to be like trials and magical journeys but she doesn't say that she just says there's going to be a party so they all gather at Agatha's house in the basement to conjure up the road. And they gotta sing the song, the ballad. Oh. Yes. <sighs> which, uh, which, it, the, the thing that is particularly striking about it is it clearly, the lyrics are just clearly not, like, old. It's, me it's meant to be, like, an old song. Like, well, hundreds of years old. It's in English. 
There's that, but I mean, even even that, it's like it's the lyrics just sound modern. They don't sound like it doesn't sound like a song that would have been written hundreds of years ago. Yeah, you're gonna you're not gonna open up like the the old magical tome, and this is what it says. No, uh, and certainly not how they fucking sing it. Ugh. The power uh, very of modern. It's yes. Very modern. It doesn't, very, and, and it would be a cool opportunity to do a ritualistic song. Thing, like the the summon something or whatever between yeah a coven of witches a but oh well witches ritual no it's We're just a fucking a it's a lame ass pop world. song done with some of the most obvious uh, auto tuning you could ever hear that doesn't match mm -hmm. their mouths Ugh. the um it's one of the first biggest examples of they have the opportunity to really lean hard into some of the cool imagery into the magic into the whole like witches summoning ritual kind of thing and they just don't do anything with it um they just chant and then a door shows up and th then they go through it and that's it it's just there's nothing well, interesting visually about it no i mean real though i suppose the thing that's noteworthy is while they're singing this song the house <laughs> is getting attacked by the by salem seven the that's salem fine. seven and I sure hope that that rabbit is okay. That rabbit that... Oh, that the rabbit. Okay. He'll be okay. Also, now, I, I could be wrong about this, but aren't rabbits... Rabbits kind of, like, not super thrilled about getting picked up, right? I, I don't do. know. It's a, I don't know. Like, or that it, that it varies, but, like, you shouldn't just assume that a rabbit would be, would be comfortable getting picked up. That's, that's what I understand. And also that rabbits have incredibly fragile spines as well. Uh -huh. It means if you pick them up the wrong way, it can actually cause them serious damage. Here's something mm. I noticed while it's holding the rabbit. It's like, geez, I don't know if the rabbit, especially since both time the rabbit gets picked up, the rabbits clearly try to get away. Like, oh. Oh. yeah, there is the a rabbit, shot where it's like, clearly trying try to not to away. Oh, no. Yeah, but um. you know, I, I just hope the rabbit's okay. Yeah, nothing. Oh, I, I think he'll so be alright. Nothing of, of value, but something notable is the little copy of like the the stylistic um, creatures moving in ways that don't seem natural at low FPS. They do that a tiny bit here, which is yeah, the most like, style around. that they've ever had mm -hmm. in, in a show like this. And you're like, Where'd you, who'd you take that from then? <laughs> like, it's, it feels, it's not yours. Well, it feels out of place. It feels weirdly mm -hmm. creepy. Well, and I, yeah. I don't think, once we get the truth on who the Salem Seven are uh, fully and what they're doing here, I don't think these actions are going to make any fucking sense. My theory no, when we were watching well, they, it at the time was they're probably the good guys. I mean, well, Agatha is is a bad person, so, yes. you know, in contra... Well, and then later you find out the history, right, is that they're like the descendants of, uh, of, of people that uh, Agatha killed, so... Well, I was gonna say like I wouldn't be surprised if it goes further than that at some point and says they're a, they're a, they're like a police force for the witch world and they're trying to prevent her from destroying something further. You know, because the uh, thing I mean, is they're just overreaching so much with them. They every time we see them, they're like, "Blah, I'm a monster." Blah, blah. They're super duper evil, and it feels like there'd be an it's, angle um, of, "Hey, they're not actually." How many times have we seen this in almost every? I think Rick and Morty does it like ten times, where a horrifying thing goes, "Blah," and then it goes, "Hello, my name is Ronald, and I'm here." To, <laughs> and you're like, "Uh huh, yeah, okay, I get it." Just too many times I've seen it. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes I just want a blog yeah. monster to be a blog monster. No, what, the orcs actually... have families and children. <laughs> they just want a place to live. Sorry, okay, I... they just want to live in a home. <laughs> I am actually, I actually wonder what did happen to the rabbit because, like, they didn't bring the rabbit. So was the rabbit just left there while all of the evil witches were attacking I guess, um, the house? He's I guess inside. The gate kid so put it the down. Safe? Yeah. Is, yeah, is he kid... safe? Is he all right? Gate came fine. in and put the rabbit down. Yeah, I think so. the Salem Seven of... wouldn't want to attack well, the rabbit. Yeah, but but while they're away, who's taking care of the rabbit? Is he is he getting fresh? He's gonna break out of the lack of door and go out there and live his the... life. Well, yeah, the neighbors that's gonna will be, be there. Yeah, but well, the... but if he's a domesticated rabbit, that's gonna be really that's gonna be really challenging. I have for hope him. for him. He's, he's gonna, gonna go on an ark. Out out he's gonna have a family. I think I I sure hope the rabbit is okay. I well, really I really do. Yeah, Fringy, he's my favorite character in this show. I wouldn't worry about it because the neighbors will probably <laughs> notice that there's some hijinks going on and then they'll send in some people to be like, what's going on at this house? 
with the with no door and the broken windows and everything. And then they'll go in and be like, "Oh, hey, it's the pet rabbit." And then they'll I'll take, take care of this it. rabbit because I'm a good person. I yeah. still hope that the rabbit is yeah. fine. That's 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 really that is where the greatest amount of investment I have in this story comes from is the <laughs> fate of the little rabbit. <laughs> I, I really uh, mean that. I hope he's okay. <laughs> I, I think he. I think he will be. A-okay. I hope he's thriving and living his best life. That little now, rabbit. Now that he's free from Agatha's oppression, probably. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the the spooky Nazgul rejects. They all try to get. No, oh, we're gonna get you. Ah, we're gonna get you, Agatha. We're gonna kill you. They don't really say that, but they might as well be saying it. Um, actually, they kind of do. They kind of whisper like Agatha Harkness. <laughs> Blarg. Ugh. Um, and they they are able to uh, summon the door to the witch's road with their little song, and they get into it just in well, time. Uh, just just a, a a bit of how the storytelling always fucking works in the show. It's it they finish the song, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, that shouldn't have worked. You didn't have a witch, and then they go uh, a full set, and then one of them is like, wait, it, it hasn't worked. There's no door. Oh my god, what? Why? How could it? Not? And I'm just sitting there like, well, well, yeah, it wasn't gonna. And then it does work, and you're like, what? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like they just like, flip okay, back and cool. forth and back and forth. And if you remember all of those motivations we had for all the characters, they're not relevant anymore. That is like the road is open. They talk for a moment here about killing each other, and then they're like, "All right, off we go." Nothing yeah, she tries right. to rile them up so that they'll cast like magic on her so we can steal their power. Mm-hmm. But then Lillian's like, "No, don't do that. She's trying to steal your power." Now, which is a concern actually, that we have, and then we're going to go on the witch's road with her when she's trying to steal our power. So, also, and they still I, trust her after that. Sorry, I know that I know that this is jumping ahead a little bit, but um, like okay. like these these the the evil witches they they show up again later, like yeah. in the road, yep. um, and they're like, oh, it's because the doors were open, but like they very <laughs> much showed that it was not, yeah, that it was Magical inaccessible. Door. Well, it's just because Agatha turns back around, it, and where the door was, it's it's rock again. That is another so great example of the process, right? Right behind you. Oh, are they going to get you? Are they going to get you? No, because you locked off the entryway. Nice. And then they turn up several episodes later, and you're like, oh, so how did they get to you? It's like, well, because they could chase us right through. It's like, but they couldn't. You showed they couldn't. Well, not yeah, anymore. Well, not <laughs> like it's, look, you we needed them to go away for two episodes, okay? And you're like, that's... That's great. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, we'll talk about that in that spell that they cast. All right, that's episode two. Woohoo! Yeah, they're there. Hooray. They go to the witch ride, presumably for the rest of the season. Episode three. This one is called "Through Many Miles of Tricks and go. Trials." Ooh. There we go. <laughs> so they're in a they're in a spooky dark forest and there's like a little pathway for him to follow this is the witch's road there's a big moon in the sky they're clearly in some otherworldly place now sharon who is like just a normal person she says this is kidnapping and she wants to call the police but there's no signal um jen says that sharon has no business being here because she has no magical qualities and that puts the rest of them in danger and like I'm thinking, like yeah, this is insane that you just got a random person. Apparently, it worked for the ritual for the door, and she's just here mm-hmm. now, and she doesn't know anything about witchiness or magic or anything like that. She's it, totally nothing about it is coherent at any level. Being the mechanics of the world allowing this to happen, uh, Agatha's decision to bring her in, all of the other characters' decisions to not question it, and then the character herself having gone this far, none of it works. But don't worry. They'll fix it by the end of this episode. And turns out it didn't. They didn't even need a witch because everything works the way it's supposed to. Yeah, it seems so. To be. Who cares? Well, no, I th- I think I guess what we're meant because it's meant to be that like each trial is for one specific witch, so they're just really lucky that the first one didn't yeah. require that one. They didn't. That's require true, actually. Green, yeah, green because it could have been the first oh, one, yeah. and then they would have Aubrey died. Plaza's... They would have all died. Challenge is probably going to be one of the latter episodes, right? Like the end. It'll be one of the last ones, and it'll be the it, maybe it'll be like the yeah, like episode seven or eight, the where they have the big reveal episode or the flashback episode. Because I a... presume there's going to be a flashback episode. There's always one, and they'll make a big deal out of the reveal of her being death, and the audience are yeah. going to be confused because they won't know why that would matter in any yeah. way. But there's an audience. Like... 
<laughs> I'm talking about us. <laughs> People are asking us questions. What? It really, it really is a fascinating like trend for these shows. Is that like the way that it works? Is the penultimate episode? It's only ever one of three things. It's either a flashback episode. It's a like spirit quest, like sort of epiphany mm -hmm. episode, or it's like a oh they just slow down for a little bit and just chill for just a little bit episode. Mm -hmm. It's it's literally it's like every single episode five or episode eight fits that formula for every single Marvel show. It's actually crazy how <laughs> how often that's the case. They don't know mm -hmm. how to do television shows. They can't do it. They just have no capacity to do it. Now, yeah. if you're if you're a little confused about what's happening, don't worry because Lilia is here and she is going to tell you what's going to be sort of like the um uh, the sort of the blueprint for the next uh for well for the show going forward as far as we're Concerned, and she's right? now, doing it in a format that is going to become very common in this uh, show, where they go, hey, this thing we clearly knew nothing about, does anyone know anything about it? And then one person goes, wait, yeah, um, yeah. yes, yes, it's, it's this very ex explicit thing, yeah. It's this, it's this. It's the, you gotta do, ah, the, oh, that's what you gotta do, it's, and they're like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, they, it's Yeah, that. they All say right, a bunch cool. of bullshit, and they're like, yeah, I, I guess I knew that the entire and time. And that's how it works. <laughs> It's like, oh, yeah, wow. And so you're just great. gonna sit there. It's like, there's literally no point for me to, like, even wonder about anything. I just gotta wait until the, the, the writers decide that this is how it works, and then they can resolve the conflict. Thank goodness. Or alternatively, protract mm -hmm. and prolong the, uh, the conflict. It's a really annoying way to watch a story unfold. So, yeah. essentially, there is going to be... Uh, they're going to be up against their worst nightmares in the form of trials. And there is a trial for each skill, which is why you have to have a, a witch of each skill to help you get through the trials. Um, obviously, we're going to encounter many questions about the construction of the witch's road and how you're supposed to get through and what happens if you need someone for the third trial and they die in the first and what happens if you just trapped there forever and you starve to death or what? Uh, we don't know. Um, don't think about it. Just don't think about it. It's just, it's just really, really shitty puss in boots. All right. Trial for each witch. They have to face their worst nightmares. <sighs> now they're like, hey, wait a second. Who is gay kid? Who's this guy? Who's this gay kid? And He's a familiar. so he tries to tell him, he tries to tell him his name, but then the he he can't because of the the spell from earlier that stops him from speaking his name or his backstory, and. They're like, oh my goodness gracious. They say, it's a sigil. Someone's placed a sigil on this kid. And the gay kid asks if a sigil is a spell, which is like very inconsistent. You'd think that with all that he knows, he'd know exactly what a sigil is. Um, but uh, a... Um, uh, sorry, it's a, a sigil is a... They call it a re, re, redaction spell. It's a redaction spell that hides something. So you cast a sigil on someone, or maybe something, and it like hides something about it from other people. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, can you not write his name, spell it out, use a code to designate letters with numbers, jumping? Uh, no one even bothers I, I to I mean, I thought at this point, I was like, ah, anything. so finally they will be forced to figure it out, because they're all going to be curious. I know I would be. And then Agatha's like, anyway, we'll deal with that later. It's like, oh. Yep. She says, mm -hmm. don't worry about it. Focus on the road. No one's curious. No one's super suspicious that we just have this gay kid with us and he can't say his name or where he's from and he's just palling around with Agatha. Interesting. Okay. Um, That's what we call I guess there's... great intrigue because instead of getting us any kind of reasonable character action, we now have to wait until it's going to be revealed at the end of episode five that he's not all that he seems. And you're yep. like, yeah, okay. And I suppose there's no worry about, like, so you have someone here who doesn't know anything about magic, and they're on the witch's road with witches, and you have gay kid who doesn't seem like he can cast magic, at least, but he knows about witch stuff. So what's going on with, like, hiding the magical world from the rest of the world? Is 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 that a thing? As if, Do we not practice as if magic this openly? this retarded is that, world is ready to deal with something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Don't even think about it. The <laughs> witch world, the witch world building is just, it doesn't exist. Remember they, Don't even think about it. They don't are soon even try. Don't to bother. introduce the concept of analog witchcraft, meaning you can do it if you don't have witch power. Meaning, mm -hmm. 
you got the right in, in like ingredients to a thing, you will cast a spell slash make a thing that's witch related. And apparently this just doesn't happen across all of Earth when people are fucking around yeah. with everything. Or do we just call because that chemistry? Witchcraft... <laughs> oh yeah, I was about to say, witchcraft is basically just another science that you could do if you have the right ingredients and you'd say the right words, even if you can't use magic because like Jen, who is bound and can't use magic, still can do all the brews and potions and stuff. No one's found it. Nope. Oh, interesting. Okay, then, I guess. I think All right. it's, it's yeah. important to note from this point on, I have no opinions or thoughts about this show, and I'll just, I'll be reduced down to just pure vocalizations that's of, good. like, disappointment and that's sadness. A, that's a form of your body protecting you. It's trying to heal. Yeah. Cause I it's like when you no touch a hot idea. stove and your hand yeah. goes away from it instinctively. Yeah. It's like a self-defense <laughs> instinct of your, your body. You should thank it later. Yeah. Have a candy bar. Say, good job, body. You did it. You protected me. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Nothing makes sense. There's no point. <laughs> now, before we set out on the witch's road, Agatha reminds us, or uh, reminds all the characters what they want at the end of the road. Jen wants to be unbound and use magic. Lillian wants to reverse her fortune. Wu wants to find out what happened to her mother. And, oh my gosh, Sharon has run off. Where is Sharon? No one even noticed that she ran off. Because now she's wandering around in the woods. And I think she's, like, so, sort of on the road, but she's elsewhere. I don't know. She stops to catch her breath, and her purse sinks into, like, this quicksand. This, this goopy mud. This goopy, terrible rings of power mud. It's awful. How the fuck would she wander and off? Ugh. Whatever. I this is just a setup these anyway. Crazy bitches either. That's true, but yeah. you know, they're they're the actual the only thing you're familiar with in this yeah. world. Uh Sharon cries out for help and they go and pull her out of the black muck. And Agatha says, Rule one is to stay on the road. Now they walk down the road a bit more, and oh, the dark forest starts to kind of clear up and turns into like this semi sunny oh, little nice. sandy beach house. Oh, this is really nice. It's a big old house. Isn't this wonderful? They walk up to the door and it has the phases of the moon on it. <gasps> As oh. Gay Kid says, this is the water phase. But he doesn't know what sigils and everything are. But he does know about this, <laughs> right? Now they walk this inside. Yep, they walk inside. And Sharon's the only one who wipes her feet, which is like, oh, that's funny. Um, when they get inside, they are suddenly redressed. They are in different clothing and the different hair and all that stuff. They're, they're, they're dressed very nicely. And instantly, you're and like, instantly, all right, yeah. I'll just do this every episode. This is going to happen every episode. Every episode, they're going to have a different costume and a different theme. Well, and I'm I'm dying to say it. Uh, it, it just like the, the, cause this episode, this came up on a couple of the streams I was part of once it was out. It's just the broad summary for anybody who's just in and out of keeping track of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe filled with superheroes clashing, blowing things up, lasers and explosions and all kinds of great characters clashing. What's next for this universe? What are you missing out on? Well, broadly speaking, this episode is about many middle-aged women trying to defeat the challenge of drinking wine. Well, they drink yeah. wine that makes them declare their uh, central character motivations as well. well. This one has the um, most... Th this one is the episode that actually really... Uh, I think this may be the worst of them. I really hated this I episode. think I could pick this one for worst out of the five, yeah. yeah. Yes. So, um... They get inside this house, and the door's knob has disappeared... And they can't get out. I guess they're sort of trapped here. This is the, they, they got to find a challenge. And there's a card on the fireplace mantle that says the witch's road cordially invites you to the first trial. And it has a riddle on the back. Yes, I love a good riddle. I love riddles. Yes, riddles are great. All right. So everyone in chat, here is the riddle. You have to solve the riddle or else you'll explode. All right. My age has no value. I'm no fun alone. I mess with your mind. My tricks are well known. Disney. I was. I actually was thinking memory. That was. That was going to be my answer. Is memory. But. Don't. We'll put it down. Ever. 
Uh, so the answer is wine. And they know the answer is wine because sitting there in the middle of the table in the room, there is a big bottle of wine and glasses for all of them who are of legal age to drink. Um, because the first trial in The Witch's Road adheres to modern day um, American uh, uh, legal drinking age uh, legalities, yeah. which is actually kind of weird to think about, in fact, um, that it gives a shit about that. So, um, if you thought that like the riddle was something important, it isn't. The wine's just there. So, isn't, isn't age super important for wine, though? Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. My age has no value, though. Or my age has some, I, I don't know, whatever. Um, That's such an effed up thing to, to say about wine. <laughs> as, I mean, it's, uh, wine is very important to me. Because I come <laughs> from a country of wine. It was so rude of them to make an episode about wine. It's disrespectful when you were right to there. me. Yeah. They might have done yeah. it on purpose, you never know. I, I don't know what they were thinking though, but for real. Like, of actually just having it be, yeah, they go in there and then they drink wine. And then it mm -hmm. gives them hallucinations of their deepest, darkest fears and, and I... all of their insecurities and all of their character arcs that they're going to go on in this in this story. Like, what were they thinking? <laughs> oh, by the way, I got the poem wrong. It's my age has value. Not my age right. has no value. Oh, okay. my, age is, my age is value. Yeah, I thought it was great. memory, like you, you cherish your old memories. and you It's still disrespectful because it's in the episode. Disrespectful. I would rather not be in this value. episode. So um, there's a... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I wish I was the one drinking it, actually. You know, right now. you're allowed. The show will drive you to drink, yes. <laughs> yeah. We're almost halfway right, through. So, Full thing. Yay! Yeah, it's actually kind of crazy. So, uh, yeah, there's just a bottle of wine and glasses, and they say, well, I guess we're gonna, um, I guess we should drink it. So when Gay Kid goes to get a corkscrew, Jin follows him and says, hey, you better... What? Isn't that already a huge fucking leap in this insane place? Let's drink no, the there's wine. there's wine here. Drink it. Okay, drink the let's wine. drink the wine. <laughs> Why not? Uh, uh, yeah, it's just, you drink the wine. Here's the poem. The poem means, or the riddle means wine. Drink the wine that's here on the table. Drink it. This, this is like such a trappy trap. Oh, it's the trappiest trap that ever well, trapped. It, well, some, some of the yeah, bothers me is um, they try to use the logic of like, well, we've got to do it because otherwise nothing will happen. Do you remember how they throw those fucking rules out in the future trials? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. It, like, to me, it felt as though the writers knew no one in their right mind would just drink the shit in a, in a crazy room on the road when you have no idea what the fuck's going on. And so they're like, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. go, 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 go. Just say they have to. And it's like, yeah, we have to. It's like, yeah, we have to. There you go. Isn't it kind of messed up? Because this is this is a woman show, right? And we're always told <laughs> don't no drink <laughs> random shit in random places because that's dangerous. What kind of message is this sending? It's sealed. Here? It's a sealed bottle. Well, you can fuck it. Have you not seen okay. Sherlock Holmes rags? <laughs> Remember? Remember? No. Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes. The the wine was I sealed because she she injected the. The, the roofie. A needle through the cork? Yeah, and then she actually, even the wax, she uh, remelted on top so that it looks like it's sealed. Oh, yeah, I, I, I almost forgot that part. Um, I, I need to watch those again. I remember those. Yeah, fun movies. Um, so, they have to drink the wine, I guess. That's certainly what they decide basically instantly to do. We need to drink this wine. So, when Gay Kid goes to get a corkscrew for the wine bottle, Jen follows him, and she's like, hey, you better watch your back with Agatha. Didn't you know they say that she traded her own child for the Book of the Damned? Ooh. Ooh. What? Why yeah. do, do they have to bring up that ar argument? As if right before going down that stairway, she just tried to, like, steal their powers already. Why are they trusting her even now? I mean, um, she sounds right enough. They're, there we go. They're just sort of around. She sounds yeah. right so They're enough. just sort of around for the ride, it feels like. Uh, but yeah, Jen says, yeah, no one knows what happened to Agatha's kid. He could be dead. He could be a demon <gasps> or an agent of Mephisto. <gasps> she said the name. Boom, 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 I've heard boom, that boom, name boom, before. Boom, 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 boom. Um, All right. Famous bit of funny is the uh, when asked. So I think... Fring, was it one division that made a reference visually to Mephisto and people thought? Uh, maybe, maybe. I can't remember if it was that or Loki. 
It was yeah, it was one of them. And uh, they were asked in an interview whether or not uh, we'd be seeing Mephisto, and um, the the person they were asking said they didn't know who that was. So uh -huh, yes, I'm clearly that. they've moved on. They've graduated from I have no idea what you're talking about to ooh, I can use that to bait you. Cool. I'll throw it in. <laughs> yep. Oh, it was Loki that had the bait in it. Yeah. Ugh. Well, a lot of people said so, Loki. Some yeah. people said One Division. It was one of them. <laughs> They go back to the table, they pour the wine into the glasses, and Sharon instantly drinks her glass. She says it's been a long day. And then once they start to drink, there is a, there's a digital timer on the wall that goes <gasps> beep, and it starts to have a 30-minute timer. It's a 30-minute countdown. Wow, that's almost exactly the length of an episode of TV. Huh? That's right, but it still gives us plenty of wiggle room to fucking mess around and lie with what the time really is, and yeah. to have bookends at the beginning and end. Because, boy, they do it, and we're going to talk about it, because I am upset. Um, <laughs> but they all say, well, okay, I guess we're all going to toast and drink now that Sharon's done it and the timer's settled down. So they drink, and they go to the sofas in the living room with the wine, and no one asks what the fuck the timer is for. No one's even worried by it, even though it's obvious and they all see it. Did none okay. of them see yeah. Saul? I guess not. <laughs> like, no, I don't think so. What you've um, just ingested will kill you in 30 minutes. There's Great. random banter a bit that happened here. One of, it's, one of it's really weird. So Agatha goes and pours her wine into a house plant uh, and leaves the empty glass on a table, but then it refills magically. Yeah. Um, because Agatha smartly doesn't fucking drink the wine that's <laughs> like <laughs> something's up with it. No, right. She's the um, evil one for doing that. They're all. It, this oh, is that's true. They She's make her bad. evil She's by evil. making everyone retarded. It's like, how is how is that <laughs> the evil choice? It's like because everyone else drank it. Like no, but that. <laughs> to be honest with you, the, the the it probably would be better to maybe do it one at a time. I don't know. Like the the idea that if anyone's willing to take it, because it might kill you. It might kill all of us. What would be the point? And then it tries to kill them all. Well, we there's a really weird line, and I don't know what it really refers to. Maybe you guys can help me. Um, as they're just sitting around drinking the wine, waiting, not caring about this countdown timer, um, Gay Kid asks Wu about this tattoo she has on her arm. Uh, and she doesn't really want to talk about it at first, but then she says she got it in Colorado, um, and it wards off evil curses, and her mom made her get it when she, uh, when she was 13. And then he says a lot happened to him at 13, too. What the fuck is this referring to? Is, is was he thirteen? Is this part of the reveal? Spirit years when at the end was he thirteen when he got transferred into the dead body? Maybe I don't know. It probably will be. That's such a weirdly clunky because, line. But, yeah, because before before the like we get the reveal at the end that happens later. It's like, what are you talking? Like, were you molested? Like, what are you talking about? Why yeah. did you say it that way? Why? Like, it was so weird. I had to write it down because like, what. It's so strange that you would just say that a lot happened to me at 13, too. I'm like, oh, my God, are you OK? Yeah. Does that does that explain why? Well, no. Um, so very weird stuff. Um, Sharon, the person who is normal, normal old Sharon, she asks about witches like, oh, what's up with witches? You guys are witches. Magic's real, I guess, um, which I, which people should probably know because of the MCU and whatever. Who knows? Um, and Lillian says that she blames Halloween for the witch imagery, like pointy hats and green skin and brooms. Um, uh, all right, you know, okay. Um, even though they lean into this in this show themselves. Uh, yes. The, you know, credits and yeah. everything, so that's kind of weird. But we'll get more stuff like that later. Um, now, they notice that Sharon's face starts to swell up considerably. You might have noticed it on the thumbnail, but her face <laughs> swells up. And everyone's like, oh, my goodness gracious. And Jen says, oh, no, the wine is poisoned. And then all of their faces start to swell. Ah, oh, no. It's the symptoms of the poison. Um, and also, they refuse to call. I'm calling her Sharon because Sharon wants to be called Sharon. Uh, they keep calling her Mrs. Hart. Uh, that's, actually, that's actually really odd. Yeah. Mrs. Hart was yeah, the name that them. most of them wouldn't even know about. Like because then they're from outside the Westview Dome, which is what everyone in there was forced to call her when that wasn't her name. I get Agatha doing it, 
but the other characters doing it is almost. is like kind of in a way it's kind of an asshole move um especially if they have, if they have any mm -hmm. context for why you wouldn't call her mrs hart um didn't your husband die as well i think uh, he died not in her not in one division but um but... between then and now i think we it's been yeah, said that he died yeah. right, recently right. deceased yes like um, so I mean, we're almost to it, but just she feels a little bit like the punching bag for no reason in this show. Really weird, considering what happened yeah. to her in one division. Like um, I don't know yeah. if you remember, but you remember what she said. She was, she was the one tormented. who said, "Oh, you know, if you let us die, just let us die." It's like, oh, yep, yeah, but let's bring her along so that nobody remembers her name, places her in imminent danger, um, mm -hmm. and just shits on her constantly. When she hasn't done any of the crazy oh, she's, evil things. Honestly, she's pretty you know? terrified, right? She would be. She, at least of all course, of them yeah. want to be here in some way, shape, or form, understand it somewhat, or have power and, and knowledge, but she's just, she said it, she's been kidnapped. Pretty much, and nobody yeah, cares. Has been nobody gives a shit. They don't even care enough to call her what she is her saying. Name. My name is yeah. Sharon. And regularly, everyone calls her Mrs. Hart. It's really weird. I have no idea. Is it supposed to be funny? Is it's this meant a to be joke? Funny. Well, yeah, um, it's meant to be funny. We'll we'll head back a little bit, like just a slight jump ahead when uh, the whatever this is starts to take effect, and she she actually makes reference to uh, re-experiencing what Wanda did to her, like the, the, uh, which which I was just like this this show like I don't even like WandaVision that much, but can you not like you're a goofball nonsense idiot show where their faces puff up and they're like glug, and then it's like also this poor woman that just keeps getting brutalized over and over again lol you just said they're like okay i guess that's what you want to do um yes. hopefully she makes it out of this episode okay hopefully she does because she's clearly like the sympathetic but all like the comedic like outsider you know fish out of water character the normal person in the magic world and she'll be around for a while to make her commentary and she has like a personality of sorts and everything it's like oh she seems like a nice lady mm -hmm. um but anyway um uh agatha's face is not swelling up because she didn't drink the wine and she kind of tries to hide it from the others instead of being like yeah I, I didn't drink the wine and my face isn't swelling up but i guess she wants to hide it like she knows it's a shameful terrible thing to not have drunk the poison uh, now, Jen, remember, she's our potions person, right? She asks Sharon some questions. Do you feel tingling in your throat? Uh, do you, uh, oh, I, she says, do you, do you have the taste of mulberries? And when Sharon asks, what do mulberries taste like? And Jen ignores the question, and instead of describing it or comparing it to some more common berry or, or, or fruit, she just moves on with another question. It's like, I don't know what mulberries taste like. I don't think I've ever actually had a mulberry. But if you said, oh, it's kind of like a this or a that, or maybe it's like a grape, or maybe it's like a raspberry or whatever, I'd be like, that's important. You're trying to identify the poison in someone's system. Uh, she then asks if she can hear ringing or the sound of fairies crying. As if she would yeah. know what a fairy crying would sound like. I would assume a fairy crying sounds like just a normal person crying, I guess. Or like I, a quiet know, version of that. Would... <laughs> yeah, maybe. But why so, would she know what a fairy crying sounds like? Fairies are canon in Marvel, or what is this? I, sure. Yeah, everything is. So why yes. not? Why not? Least <laughs> of the show's problems is confirmation Great. on the the, the, the FQ. fairy question. <laughs> so Lillian randomly says, "I love you guys." She just says like random things here and there because she's like a divination witch or whatever. Um, but anyway, the, the swelling starts to disappear. Right? And everyone's like, oh, the swelling's going away. That's wonderful. But Jen said, no, that's not good. This, the poison, it, it's the alewife's revenge. That's the name of the poison. Oh, okay. okay. There you go. Yeah, alewife's revenge. Fair enough, I guess. She says, next, the, you'll have dizziness, delirium, you'll lose motor functions, you'll hallucinate, and then you will die. How do we know this? Because she, she is the potion lady, and she has identified the poison. And she says at the end okay. of the poison symptoms, you will fucking die. How convenient Would have thought that we know this. This should have been discussed before they all downed the fucking thing. As in, like, what if this is poison, especially since these are trials or whatever Which that relate like to us? The, first, the most obvious thing. Like, it is funny, right? Like, that is number one on the list of things this could be. <laughs> it's like, oh, it turns yeah, out it was. Crazy. Man. 
like, uh, did you seriously think it was going to just be like easy? I mean, they you drink wine and wait half an them. hour, and then What's, the trial yeah, is like, finished. What's annoying about it is like, you, you, maybe someone would say that. Well, what do you expect him to do? Is like look around. See what's in everything, what things you have. Yeah. yeah. Or making any important decisions. And yeah, if... it's like the Saw movie, the second one, right? Where they just start doing random shit before exploring the house and, and checking then they on things. Kill themselves mm -hmm. over again. <laughs> instead Basically. Of, yeah, instead of looking around the room before you fucking press any buttons that say play me. I swear to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um oh. upon hearing was... that Yeah, go ahead. I wish this poison was called like Botox poison or something. That would. <laughs> I mean, Botox. <laughs> Bo the Botox bane or. Bane of Botox. <laughs> you, have, you have 90210 seconds to live or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, uh, Alewife's Revenge, fine. That sounds witchy, I guess. You know, it sounds like a thing. Ooh, Botoxin like from chat. Not bad. Botoxin, mm -hmm. yeah. Botulism toxin, <laughs> Vintner's widow, Botoxic. Um, <laughs> so there's mild panic upon hearing that they are gonna, uh, they have poisonous poison inside of their bodies and they'll fucking die. Um, Agatha says that she has to get out of here, and so she tries to crack the glass on the uh, on the window in the living room, and then Jen says, "You can't run from the poison." And then the gay kid finds Agatha's refilled wine glass, the magically refilled wine glass, and she's like, oh, you didn't drink the poison. You can't cheat, Agatha. Which is weird, and because Ag Agatha could be like, weird. wait, but no, I did. Like, she could just lie. It's like, I did drink it, because she threw it out. So she's like, so how the fuck is that refilled? Mm -hmm. And also, like, maybe you can cheat. I don't know. <laughs> like, maybe that is possible. <laughs> Well, it's weird because when she says when when gay kid says you can't cheat Agatha, um, Agatha asks who says, and then Lilia says the road. Yeah, but I mean, like, like haven't they already? They don't have a green witch. Well, so and, and what does it mean to cheat? Already, right? Is casting spells yeah. to reverse the effects of this thing cheating or not? And it's like it's not. And you're like, That's how do you know? Yeah. Like, what is the nature of what the rules are here? The, what, you know, the, the, it's a matter of how broken out. they are, really. Because we're already mm -hmm. there. Yeah. I mean, this isn't a coven. You know, this is... Uh, they, it is not the tightest bond <laughs> of sisterhood. These bitches hate each other. And quite frankly, I hate them too. Um, <laughs> I guess Sharon's all right. But, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, the, they just seem like insistent that she has to drink it. Agatha even says there's no reason for her to suffer too, especially because the, like, the side effects are dizziness, loss of motor function, delirium, hallucinations. Um... Uh, and she points out that gay kid didn't drink, and the others are like, oh, "But he's not in the coven, and he's underage." Again, as well, as, as if like mm -hmm. as if the fucking witches in the witch world in the spell casting bullshit witches road would be like, "Yeah, but in the United States, twenty one is the drinking age, and he's only sixteen, so we wouldn't want to we wouldn't want to put anything on film that could be misconstrued as underage drinking." So the witches road totally respects United States <laughs> drinking laws. Mm hmm. Um, the grand logic of, hey, maybe all of us being poisoned, now that we know what it is, is a bad idea, and that, in fact, it would have been better if just one of us was to identify what it was and then get a solution. Because now, we're yeah. all dealing with hallucinations and near-death experiences, when we could have been 100% focused on a solution. Huh. Exactly. Crazy. Yeah, but they're dumb. They're stupid. Very stupid. Um, I get the... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of out of topic, but um, between this lesbian witch coven and Acolyte's lesbian witch coven, which is the worst. We should wait until we're further in before oh, yeah. we ask that. We ask that. Ask that question in a minute. after we get to the a end of A good question this for another time. Yes, but mm -hmm. keep, that, keep that one in your back pocket for later. Um... Do, oh, you're a woman. You don't have pockets in your pants. Um, <laughs> that's now. actually true. You can pretend. Yeah. I um, believe. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's very true. Very true. Uh, so Agatha smashes the glass on the floor, and Wu tells her, you have to drink, Agatha. They're, like, insistent yeah. that she drinks this poison. You gotta be poisoned, too, Agatha. You can't just not be poisoned. Like, we aren't not poisoned. 
Now, and Agatha says, oh, there's no more wine to drink anyway. We drunk it all. And then the glass magically refills in Wu's hand. And Gay Kid says, if you don't drink the poison, I will. And in a very odd, out-of-character thing, Agatha stops him from doing no, that. And you, then she drinks the poison. You say it's out of character, but it's like, no, see, they're setting up the... They're setting up her storyline about how she doesn't care about anybody except this one random person that she only met, like, what, a day ago? Well, they don't know each other. she believes he's her son right now. Ooh. Why? I don't even, I don't know why, why, why. Does she? <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think we have to conclude that that is the case. Aubrey why? Plaza has to reveal that is not the case to her. Yeah. But, like, why would she believe this? I don't really know. Yeah, you're uh, a random other... gay kid, and you're like, "That's my son." Honestly, other than <laughs> other than maybe the, the maybe the hex uh, or the, whatever it was called. Yeah, but still, that doesn't. I don't know. Well, why but that, that makes it worse because if you thought that might mean that he's your son, you would, you would be trying to you would figure try it out a lot harder. Yeah, yeah, uh, and you'd probably be treating him a bit better in general instead of just uh, generally being a jerk, except for occasionally going like, "Oh, wait, wait, wait hold on." When you talk about, like, tonal whiplash as well, so you have that, which is like, oh, so that's character. Then she drinks the wine, and she's like, oh, it's cheap wine. And then you have um, the lady, the 70s show lady, uh, like, reliving Sharon. the horror of her being yeah. tortured. Yeah, yeah when like, she, she gets delirious, and she's like, Wanda, I'm begging you, let him yeah, breathe. You, you've got, like, oh, character moment, stupid joke, and then, like, crazy, it's horrific cruel. reliving of this horrible nightmare. It's like, what, what? What is these tones? Like, pick a lane and stick with it for one minute, please. Just be serious well, for like, one minute straight. From what we can gather, Sharon is like the nicest person here. Why are we making her suffer well, of so much? Well, she's the nicest person. She seems she pretty normal. Done, she's just a normal person, which by yeah. the standards compared to all of these people, they've all done worse things because she's just normal. The problem is, I think, she is the only one with the personality and... You know, writing characters with personalities takes like oh, Jen's a bitch. <laughs> takes, takes a lot of writing power. Labor. Yeah, and they don't have that. They run out, so they had to get rid of her. That's my, you know, theory. Yes. Um, we will. We we can see who our favorites are at the end of this episode, <laughs> along with your other question. <laughs> my favorite, is, my favorite it right now. Is, well, bear in mind, my favorite is the rabbit. Rabbit. Rabbit is clear lead. Yeah, pretty good, yeah. Clear lead. Yeah. As long as the rabbit doesn't decide to take a nap during this race to the finish line of good characters, he is going to easily win. <laughs> I might say the Salem Seven have been knocking it out of the park with their few seconds well, of they're trying to get. Well, oh, they're trying to get Agatha, so that's that's good. Muller, I... I realized, like, for, like, half of my notes as I was writing them down, I accidentally called them the Salem Six because I just did not give that <laughs> much of a fuck, and it probably didn't matter at all. I only realized that I'd been saying the Salem Six in the notes the whole time is when someone said, oh, the Salem Seven later on, and I'm like, oh, is it Seven? Or, oh, okay. Close enough. <laughs> yeah, like, it doesn't matter. But I would not notice the difference, to be honest. No. <laughs> you could have said five, and I would be like, yeah. So Sharon passes out on the couch. Her, well, we will revisit this point later on. Sharon is out. She has passed out. It is at this point that Agatha must prompt Jen, the potions witch, that they need to brew an antidote. Yeah, you'd think that would be like the thing that the potion witch would suggest, you know? Or anyone else would be like, oh shit, we've been poisoned. Holy fuck. Now, it is very important to note, 15 minutes have passed in world. Ow. The timer, ow, ow. The timer is halfway mm -hmm. gone. How they, did they allow this to happen? They, I don't know. They've been fucking around for 15 minutes. <laughs> the well, timer is It's not like anyone's going to die. It's, it's just them having some fun. Jeez. If it were really? life and death, maybe I'd have an issue with that. So, upon being prompted that the, upon being prompted that they need to come up with an antidote, June or sorry, Jen, the potions witch, she says, "All right, we need ingredients for our antidote. I need frankincense in the gut of a eusocial insect in a corpse that's been decaying for at least thirty million years, which I didn't even know was possible. I I didn't even know that. Um." Now, when she mentions this, Agatha says she doesn't know um, what uh, 
a, a, a corpse for like that's been decaying for 30 million years even is. And Jen says, why do I even have to translate? It's zooplankton. <laughs> because Jen is a fucking bitch who just thinks like that's even approaching common knowledge. So, I don't know. While they're um, on death's door, she felt the need to make the, the complicated versions of the things she wants. So she said it instead of translating to the things that would most quickly get you the results you yeah. need. Yeah, which, I don't know, man, like, part of what it means to be, you know, expertise in a, in a field is to be able to explain things in a way that, that layman can yeah, understand, right? Yes, to be a good right? communicator of your field, yeah. exactly. You know, I understand that not everybody knows the same things as you do, because we're all fucking different people. Like, Because, again, I, like, when I read this, I was like, I didn't know a corpse could last for 30 million years in a state of decay. If it was, like, petrified or fossilized, yeah, it's, it's not, like, decay, it's not decaying. Like, yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. So, but, but she says zooplankton. I I'm pretty that's certain that that's not even it. true. But the show's like, okay, zooplankton. They can decay for thirty million years, I guess. Um, she said that zooplankton can be in petroleum products. So, Jen says she needs <sighs> a really big cauldron. Not helping the stereotype to say that. Surely you wouldn't no, need a big no. cauldron. Surely you'd only need like a a pot, a soup pot, or maybe even a cup. You know. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you need a cauldron and you need a big one, the sink feels like it's a bad choice compared to other things that are typically found in Isn't houses. Kind of, but also just, uh, don't like this, the witch stereotype of cauldron, I'll instead put it in the kitchen sink for this ultimate move from like, women. You know, like, why, uh, why would... Yeah, that's a <laughs> why would you... I mean, again, if you need something that's really big, a bathtub feels like the yeah. obvious choice in a house. Mm -hmm. But if you just need an antidote... It probably don't need that much. A gulp from each person or whatever, but she says she needs a really big cauldron, so... Yeah, uh, okay. which again, it's like, okay, off to the bathroom then. <laughs> now, <laughs> that we, will, we will very shortly revisit. Um, Jen is a fucking moron in this episode, and it's actually insane, and it does have consequences. So, um, Agatha yeah. and Lillian go to look for petroleum products. They go to the bathroom where a lot of Jen's skincare products are in there. And Agatha says that, oh, she's a snake oil salesman. She, they say that they're all natural, but they probably have, like, petroleum in there. Um, so and Again, you're just kind of struck. It's like, so there's wine, there's skincare products, that, like, there's, like, candles that you can eat. What, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> now, now, remember, what? the ingredient that they need is zooplankton. So Do you remember Agatha... when Iron Man? Do you remember when he made his Iron Man suit and he flew around in it? That yeah, was that was really cool. fun. Yeah, yeah. But we, really... we have to talk about the zooplankton. Right. <laughs> you, remember uh... Thor, you remember when Thor flew up to the Empire State Building, got all the lightning, and shot it through the portal and blew up all of the Chitauri? No, we really have to talk cool. about frankincense for the potion antidote. We Let's can't just talk watch about Marvel Thor. compilation video <laughs> instead. You're when Captain America was driving on his motorcycle, throwing his, <laughs> his shield around and everything and doing leaps and stuff. That was really cool. No, we anyway. have to talk about the gut of a eusocial insect, okay? Remember when the poor guy, like, he shot camera. the arrow, Loki catches it and smirks, but Look the arrow blows up because it's a bonus arrow. Yeah. So it, it like, gives a win Hulk... to Hawkeye and Loki, even though yeah. Loki gets fucked up in that scene. Do you remember Hulk? Just do you remember Hulk in general? Just when he was in the general, Hulk, when he when he when just he was the big rage when he was he around fight, when he fought Abomination oh, yeah. when he was fighting in New York. That was really cool. Wait, what? Do you, oh, anyway. Hulk, he was in Hulk was in um, She Hulk Attorney at Law. Yeah, he was, and his son and was, was there. He was, he was Thrasher, much or whatever his name was. He was much, much smaller than Abomination, even though in The Incredible Hulk, they're the same size. Enormous. Remember but when, now he's uh, like 10 feet tall. <laughs> That's it. Remember when Squid would find the army thing of like loads of little bricks that were drilled into little drill spikes, and then yeah. Doctor Strange portaled it into like the void, and then and then Wong portaled it Wong out of the void back into him. Out. Do you remember when Doctor fun. Strange like just created like a million <laughs> Doctor Strangers to fight Thanos? That was really that was cool. Really that, cool was yeah. really, that was a really good one. Do you remember yeah. when Thanos like do you remember when Thanos grabbed the moon and turned it into like projectiles and then threw it at Tony? Remember Veronica versus Hulk. Oh shit, that was crazy. Yeah, that was 
really, really sleep, cool. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. Remember when the Guardians of the Galaxy had to escape that prison when they first met? Yeah, and, uh, that's that was right. really fun. And then Rocket, yeah, that Rocket figured it all out, and then they got away. Remember when yeah. they grabbed the Power Stone and the power of friendship was powerful <laughs> enough for them to control it so yeah. that they could win? Oh, yeah, and I was, like, crying, and it was, like, very emotional. Oh, remember when Yondu <laughs> used this little whistle needle yeah. to kill all those guys coming after him, and he was really remember cool Remember when and Yondu yeah. saved, when he saved Peter, gave him oh, the space Oh, yeah, suit, he did. Blew him yeah. up into space to save him. I might not have been your father, but I'm your daddy, and he saves him, and he sacrifices himself to save Peter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then he gets remember a big they... funeral, and Sylvester Stallone is there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> remember they comboed up Spider Man and Doctor Strange to pull in and out while trying to punch oh, and kick Thanos. Oh yeah, yeah that, was really oh, cool. that was really that was awesome. really cool. Remember you the remember... airport fight in Civil War? Yeah, you remember yeah, Spider Man yeah. doing the block <laughs> with the ATATs and then Iron Man and War Machine punching Ant Man in the face. Oh yeah, he gets all big and he comes in. You remember when oh. Ant Man had a fight on like a toy train set? <laughs> It, it was, that was super really exciting cool. and thrilling and creative. Yeah. And then they zoom out and it just the little toy train falls over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they had good comedic timing in the EMCU. That's right. They yeah. did. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, anyway. Candles, edible when... candles, and everywhere, petroleum. Everywhere I go, I see his <laughs> Remember when uh, Thanos was about to kill Iron Man and Iron Man went, it's Morbid time? Uh, oh, uh, I don't quite remember that. <laughs> Joker Two remember, wishes it could have more been time at the remember, box office. <laughs> remember when when Captain Marvel locked up with Thanos and he was terrified of her? Oh, that was yeah, mm, yeah that's right. He was actually scared. He we gotta stop. No, no, no. Did remember. He... No, no, no. Remember when Peter Parker is in the rain and he's listening to the TV of J. Jonah Jameson talking about how he's a menace to society and he has to make important decisions about oh, the real oh news. My God. Yeah. Heroic character. And... Do you remember when all three of the Spider-Men, they work together? Remember? Oh, yeah. The all three of them. Is they share together. their insecurities and where they failed. That's and right. How they're yeah. overcome their, you know, in the future. Oh, that was really, really good. That was a really good remember one. Remember when Reed Richards got turned into spaghetti? Oh, we're remembering the before times, Mother. Please. No, we would. We were moving <laughs> long, through. Long we went ago. from End Game to No Way Home, which means next stop. Listen, No Way Home does it? It can belong in the before times. We could move it back. <laughs> it's got a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, okay. Right, anyway. So to remind everybody about what's become of us, walking Agatha back and, and forth in the fucking bathroom. insane asylum. By the way. Agatha and Lillian are in a magic bathroom and they're looking for petroleum products because it has zooplankton in it and they need that ingredient to brew a potion because they drunk the wine that's poisoning them on the witch's road. Okay? okay. Now, that's taken care of. We need more ingredients though. Now, Wu and Gay Kid, they go look for the frankincense, right? Uh, there's no Bibles anywhere. They can't find any. But Gay Kid is like, oh, wait, do you smell eucalyptus? Which is one of the gayest things you could ever say. And then they run off to get essential oils. Oh. Uh, it's, this is a story, okay? But Wu has to catch her breath. <gasps> she staggers, and she's hallucinating that the door to the sauna ahead is full of vapor and smoke. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, Jen is back in the kitchen, right? She's our potion master. Now, she's at the sink. And she remembers that she needs the eye of a newt. And she goes to a pantry because it's also like mustard seed. I guess that's another name for it. But when she comes back to the kitchen, it's dark and there's a spooky man there and old medical scrubs. <gasps> oh my gosh. But now Lillian hallucinates too. There's a girl in a fancy old pink dress and she speaks Italian. Oh my God. Wu, uh, yeah, they all have like hallucinations. It doesn't matter what they are. Wu sees her mom. Jen sees a guy who tries to drown her in the sink. Uh, Lillian follows this Italian girl, and there's like an old desiccated lady and a the person in a skull and a robe. It's all just random spooky shit. It probably doesn't mean anything. Don't worry about it. Um, so the three women all stumble out of their hallucinations because they are hallucinations and nothing actually happens to them and this annoys the hell out of me when things are obvious hallucinations and they know from the symptoms that they will hallucinate but they still like completely fall for and go along with the hallucination it's really really annoying to see that like guys you know you're gonna hallucinate get your shit together all right obviously the weird skull lady in the old 1400s italian dress 
is part of the hallucination. Uh, you are going to die. You need to get these ingredients to the sink to make the antidote because you've got poison in your blood veins. You're going to die. You're going to fucking die. Ignore the hallucination. You got shit to do. Um, so, Wu and Gay Kid, they go back to the kitchen and everyone's just really chill in these scenes. They're not like, oh shit, we have like 12, 13 minutes to live unless we don't brew this antidote. Everyone's just kind of chill, walking around. Um, it's really kind of weird how there is no sense of urgency here. Um, uh, it is also mentioned that the gut of a eusocial insect is just honey, the gay kid says, which would have been great to mention at the beginning. They treat them like they're fucking riddles, stake. even though the one who's yes. trying to make the potion said it to them. <laughs> like, Yeah, it's like, you, zooplankton, it's in petroleum products. You, frankincense, go check here. Uh, mustard seed, boom, one of you go to the pantry. We also need honey. You, go get honey from the kitchen. Yeah. It's not just like I, like some maybe semblance of you don't want to die here potentially, Jen. Um, so they are sort of assembling their ingredients slowly but surely. Their lives are at stake, um, and they notice that the crack in the window that Agatha made earlier when she tried to get out uh, turns out they are now underwater. The house is underwater, and they're worried about the the crack Agatha made like breaking and filling the house with water. And they take a long time to explore this. The gay kid even asks, like, are we underwater right now? And <laughs> Wu asks, how long is that glass going to hold? And I'm like, holy shit, bitch, you are poisoned. You're going to die. You have I like 10 it. minutes before it. you die. All of your fucking problems stop wobbling about. It's so annoying. I'm wobbling about. <laughs> they all go to investigate the window where the water is now. I'm like, no, you're poisoned. You're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> the poison will kill you. It doesn't matter where you are. Ugh. All right. We get a shot of the digital timer that shows three minutes. They have three minutes left. All right. And they even bring in Sharon to the kitchen where they are brewing the antidote. Because remember, she passed out on the couch. Okay. Oh, really? Now, I want to go over one. this in a little bit of detail because it's insanely bad. And I need people to understand. All right. So they gather around the sink that has been filled with water. Jen says that the ingredients of the antidote need to be added in a certain order and in a specific time, right? So instead of doing just a moment of organization and lining them all up, she just starts plopping in the, uh, the honey and the, uh, the, the, seed, the, the, the mustard seed. And then Wu randomly says, next is frankincense, and is about to put it in for some fucking reason, and Jen has to stop her. He's like, no, don't do that. Why the fuck did you, would you do that, you idiot? Jen asks for the zooplankton, which is in the skincare products Agatha and Lillian got. And they just, like, slide the skincare, like the lotion and the shampoo and, and like, the conditioner. They just plop it into the sink water. In its packaging, <laughs> every they just slide it in. Because now, this is a woman's show, we need to be reminded so we don't forget. But like, <laughs> you, do, you need the zooplankton. <laughs> it is that Rags, those the, the shampoo which is spells and more, the hand cream like symbolic. It's full of chemicals. Yeah, it's full of other shit. It's a symbolic spell. Like you've got the right things in there, good enough, broadly. But it'll completely throw off what the antidote is if you just throw. Oh, here's a bunch of soap. Let me just squirt all no, the shampoo no, no, in no. there. Here's some skin cream, and you just chuck it in there. It's you would think that these fine. are throwing in some plastic well, and wood as part of all those. Little... Nah, it's fine. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. But they just they just flump that in. Um. So, uh, whatever. Now, Jen says that obviously the frankincense is next. Not obvious. Jen, fucking bitch. That's special information you have access to. Mm. And she says only three drops. So, they put three drops in, and then the sink starts to glow pink. It is at this point that Jen asks if there is a way to boil the water in the sink. Jen is a earlier. fucking retard. What an what an absolute idiot. Jen is a moron. <laughs> if she knew that you had to boil this shit in order to get the potion, why didn't you just put a pot? This is a kitchen. It's a very nice kitchen. Why didn't you just put a pot on the stove? But you can boil stuff in kitchens. Getting it ready kitchens? to boil. 
Oh, what? Apparently, I'm just a stupid man. I don't know. I don't know anything about kitchens, but I think there are these devices in there that heat up really anything you put on them, including water. No, Jen... no, she's a witch though. She doesn't need that. She just needs a kitchen sink. True. I guess it is. Um. So now Agatha rightly is very angry and asks, "Why the <laughs> fuck you didn't think of this before and let us know before now? Because we have like th two minutes before we die." And Jen says, oh, well, I was in the middle of a traumatic hallucination, but the hallucination only lasted like half a minute. So God knows what she was doing for the other 14 and a half minutes. She wasn't on screen. Jen, Jen is the dumbest and I hate her the most. Jen is a bitch. She's stupid. I hate her. Fuck Jen. I would, I <sighs> would be with you if the consequences of all this were the, let's say one of them died or something. I guess that's true. If if it turned out yeah. to be like if that okay, happened, that's, that's, true. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's that would true. be crazy. Be terrible. Yeah. I can't even imagine. Now, so they have probably like two and a half minutes left before they die of this poison, right? And they have to bring this full sink of water to a boil. Now, this is the part where you're just like, oh, we're dead. <laughs> this is not possible to do. We can't. We have do not have the technology or the magical ability to boil a sink full of water in two and a half minutes and then finish the rest of the antidote process, right? Which, by the way, there are still things they have to do. Jen has not told them yet, but we'll get there, right? Now, Gay Kid asks if there is a sous vide, which is a, apparently it's a super fan, this is, the show says it's a super fancy cooking tool that heats up water to a specific temperature to cook steak evenly, or really anything else you want to heat in there, right? Now, there is no way that you're going to boil all that water in less than two minutes. But they find one. They find a sous vide, which is like this little metal object. You kind of clip to a container of water, and it heats it up. Um, it, it's a real thing. It, it, it is real, right? Uh, in fact, I have friends who use sous vide to make things, and I hopped into a call with one of them last night and asked them, is this how a sous vide works? Mm -hmm. And he said, there's no fucking way. <laughs> All right? <laughs> so they clip the thing, they, they, they clip the sous vide thing to the, to the water, right? And um, it takes six seconds. I counted them in the show. It takes six <laughs> seconds for him to clamp the sous vide in and plug it in so now the water is not simmering, not hot, but a full boil. It takes six seconds for the yeah, I mean, sink that, full of water to be boiling. The witches. Unbelievable, actually. It is, it is literally unbelievable. I don't even need my... to know what this device is to believe that that's yeah, unbelievable. It is a is magical like laser. Space <laughs> age. This is like Mass Effect space age technology. And okay? even then it'd be pushing it. <laughs> the amount even of then energy. Like, hmm. Okay, a, a sous vide is not capable of this. Um, he said that in order to speed up the process when he makes sous vide is he dumps already boiling water into the, he, t he said he typically uses about a five gallon container because if you just use the sous vide machine itself, it takes hours to heat up to the temperature that you want it to be right. Hours. Um, um and this is way more than five gallons in this sink. Well, considering, considering how quickly those 15 minutes went maybe time works differently it, <laughs> it does work which... differently it does and we're going to get to the example of what is happening because they fuck around with time multiple times all yeah. right so the yeah. subi thing is actual bullshit doesn't make any sense they're stupid for even trying it but it works so whatever now it is at this point that jen says that they all need to pull off a single strand of hair a single strand of hair which is actually a lot harder to do than it looks to get a single strand of hair, yank it off, especially if it's like in the dark and you're kind of like losing your motor functions and everyone's a bit clumsy. <laughs> Jen did not let For them sure. know, like first thing, before you go, take off a hair, leave it here by the sink or give it to me or whatever. This is the point where Jen tells them they need to do this. All right. They've all been, now, a lot of them are standing around. It's like, you could have told, uh, yeah, whatever. Now, it is at this point that Agatha is trying to get a hair off her head. And um, she gets distracted by a hallucination of her own. It's a crying baby in a crib. Oh, my goodness gracious. Now, in, yeah, it's very sad. Um, 
she goes over to the crib that he's hallucinating. She's hallucinating because she's a fucking retard. Yeah, right? no one's pulling her away and, from this, by the way, when they need yeah. her hair. She just goes along with it. Oh, look, there's a baby in a crib over there that I'm clearly hallucinating. Um, I guess I'll go over there and check it out. Um, and she pulls away the sheet on the crib, and actually it's like a book or a tablet. It's I guess it's like a book. This, Her reaction to that is so yeah. funny. Okay, I can remember what the dark hold looked like. Um, that's okay. It's because she gave up her kid saying. for the dark hold. Allegedly. Bum, bum, bum. Allegedly. So Jen snaps out of her illusion. Uh, uh, Jim snaps Agatha out of the illusion by saying her name. He's like, hey, Agatha, you need to do this thing so we don't all die. What are you doing over there on the floor being all weird? Um, and then Gay Kid calmly asks her, like, what did you see, Agatha? He's like, fucker, you're poisoned. You have like a minute <laughs> left of life <laughs> or you'll die. It's crazy. And he's they like all... calmly being like, what did you see, Agatha? The way they do this, it's, it's almost like they're a bunch of like actresses in a set. It's, it's, it's almost as though there's no actual poison at all. It's it's almost as though all of this isn't at all immersive in any way, shape, or form, and it's just awful. It's like they're doing a play pretend or something. Yes, there is no sense of proper urgency. Your mortal coil is about to be shrugged off involuntarily by this poison wine, and no one gives a fuck. Now. They put their hair into the brew. They have to clasp their hands together. And once their intentions are aligned, Jin says, it will, it will glow a bright cerulean, right? But instead, it glows green instead of blue, because cerulean's like a blue color. Damn right? it. It's like a Pokemon. Now, when Wu says they have one minute left, right? This is the, this is the movie, sorry, the show, this awful experience saying that it is one minute left. They have 60 seconds left, all right? But they have cheated. They have given themselves an extra 45 seconds-ish of time from when we saw the timer at three minutes, 15 seconds earlier. I went ahead and I, I did the math based off of the, just the timer because mm -hmm. I was legitimately curious if they actually stuck with it or if they would cheat. Mm -hmm. Turns out they cheated massively multiple times, all right? More often than not, they will. <laughs> it's yeah. rare Which you get them shame. adhering to it. Because I was thinking, you, it's only 3 minutes 15 seconds, wouldn't it be fun and cool to do a, a one take nope. of the 3 minutes 15 and the camera doesn't like, like cut or anything and it's them all doing this? It's only, it's only 3 and a quarter minutes. Like that would be a cool one take to do and it would build up the tension. But they don't. They cheat. They give themselves an extra 45 seconds, which is a really big deal when they only had 3 minutes 15 earlier. All right? Now, they're panicking because the brew is not the right color. And I'm wondering, like, well, yeah, Sharon's not been a, a part of this process. You're not yeah, grasping your hand. Um, you're not pulling out her hair. <laughs> we are watching the show. Rags, what do you mean? Who's that? That's a but, good. That's wait. a good thing because no one has fucking at all mentioned Sharon, really. Wait, how, how can that even? We we are watching, mm. and it doesn't matter because we're watching a stupid TV show. They're living it. Yeah. <laughs> like they don't remember. Like, oh wait, there's another person here. <laughs> so. Um, they, again, they have a minute left and they're starting to panic because, oh shit, we're going to die in a minute because we're all retarded morons, right? Jen doesn't know what's going on. She doesn't know why the brew's not working. Now, Agatha grabs her by the shoulders and he says, she's, she's going to give her a pep talk about, oh, I left you alone because what you're doing was important or whatever. And the, you're doing the real work. You're doing that real witch shit and you need to be a real witch again and they can take your power because you're bound, but they can't take your knowledge. Uh, you could do this, Jen. And then Jen um, suddenly remembers through the power of motivation that they need the blood of the unpoisoned. This is an odd thing to forget. It kind of stands out, you know. Hasn't a minute passed already? We'll, Please oh, die. We'll, get, we'll get there. We'll get there. It's which time. It slows down the closer you get to zero. It's which in time. <laughs> now... <laughs> When she says they need the blood of the unpoisoned, again, odd thing to forget. It's kind of like a standout thing, someone's blood, right? Also, good thing he didn't drink the poison because we, we can't have you know, underage drinking. Yeah. When you have like a cool element maybe as part of a ritualistic thing and other well-written stuff, it can often be something that makes sense but is simultaneously a bit sacrificial of like, a, oh, shit, yeah, oh, yeah, that's part of the blah, blah. This one felt to me like the writers thought, what have we got here as like a final thing that, that can work? And it's like, I mean, the, the guy is still there. He hasn't really been a part of this. 
We just make it as blood. Yeah, it, I guess so. it does feel like essentially randomly selected shit yeah. based off of what they had in their group of random stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, so Wu says 30 seconds. They have 30 seconds left, right? So she called out the one minute mark and she called out the 30 second mark and they cheat again. There are only there should only be three seconds left when she says this. They add an extra 27 seconds to a minute timer. And to be clear, they can't even do a minute. They have to add 27 seconds. Does the timer relate to when the poison will kill them or simply when the water will come through the walls? I mean, surely it's got to be the because then the breaking of the glass wouldn't have made a difference, right? Like, yeah, they didn't know the that anybody was going to break any glass, so it has to be the poison. And if it's the poison... I assume it is the poison. Does that mean that it has nothing to do with how much you drink or when you drink it? It will simply kill you after the timer is complete, in which case, why is Sharon knocked out? Yeah. And how, are, they just, just are they just out. extremely lucky they didn't drink enough to get knocked out? I guess, I guess so. I guess. May it be because she's not a witch? Because the wine not refills in the glass, so it, they could have drunk more than they needed to. Um... It, it's just one of those things where you're just going to have to accept it doesn't make any sense. You cannot think about it. Yeah. It is so shittily written. How do you fuck all no this up so it bad? It's you have a clock <laughs> and a sink <laughs> with things in it. Like, it, there's so little variables. How are you fucking this up so hard? Mm. Petroleum. Um, so, they need the blood of the unpoisoned. Uh, Agatha grabs a knife and tells him, thanks for being underage, which is a weird thing to say. Um, and then she cuts him and his blood goes into the sink. It changes color a bunch of times and settles on cerulean blue. Ooh. And then they all drink it. Ooh. Now, with only seven seconds left on the timer, they remember Sharon exists. <laughs> and then they use this really weird, awkward system of, like, handing off a little ramekin of the potion to, like, one person, and then they hand it to the next person, and then the next person, instead of someone just scooping it up and going to Sharon's mouth. Uh, <laughs> it, it's really, really weird. It is but it... <laughs> remarkable how selfish all of them are at this moment. And you could say, like, hey, you would be too if it meant... It's like, no, 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 no. I'm all in favor of saving yourself. But try to remember there is only one of you that cannot do that for themselves, and you need to do it for them. Exactly. You specifically carried her unconscious body into mm -hmm. the kitchen. Oh, remember, it's all things. your fault that she's even here in the first place. Yep, you abducted her. her. Kidnapped her. She would just be the back least you home. Could do. In the least you could do is make an effort to help her. It's just bullshit. Yep. So, um, <laughs> in the nick of time, or is it, uh, at the last second, they put some of the potion uh, antidote into Sharon's mouth as she's laying there. And then the oven pops open like it's a little tunnel. The door of the oven pops up. That's like the exit, the tunnel. Completed and then the water trial. starts pouring into the house. Oh, no. Um, Wu asks Agatha for help getting Sharon off of the table and into the oven tunnel out of here. And Agatha says no chance before being told that they might have to actually bring her along as part of the challenge. They might need her later. Mm -hmm. So, great, Agatha, you're really awesome. Uh, but me, yeah, they also... Evil doesn't mean retarded. It's just, I keep repeating that, because every time, there's no practicality to her evil. She's just the writer's version of, like, that's what an asshole would do. You're like, okay. Yeah. Um, like, you would think that if you're evil... Oh, I want to look like I'm cooperating with everyone, and I will help them, so that if I need help, they will help me. Like, pretty basic, normal super basic shit um so yeah they all slide down the oven tunnel and it's actually like a rock shoot and they slide out of the house and they're back onto the road the spooky dark forest of the road um and lily is like oh whew, we made we all made it out alive but gay kid says that sharon is dead she is laying lifeless no. on the ground with her eyes open and he uses his hands to close her eyelids. Agatha then asks who Sharon is, and the credits roll. And my god. And I what think, if I'm not wrong, the most poppy song ever plays afterwards. Yeah, because the show thought this I was really, right, really yeah. funny. And like I, I just couldn't help but be like, wow, that was that was a that asshole was move. Yeah. yeah. 
this poor woman who got who who got dragged here when she clearly shouldn't have been here. You couldn't even <laughs> learn her name, and now she's dead. And you're just like, eh. I I didn't real I didn't care about this show at all. The first two episodes were like a boring malaise of disinterest. Um, I am doing the I am watching the show. Fuck this! I'm watching the show because it's my job, and I need people to understand that this is a shitty show that exists. I don't care about Agatha. No one does. <laughs> the, look at this panel. We don't give a shit. <laughs> it's no desolate here. <laughs> We're However, in a ghost this town. episode, this episode, this episode made me angry. I was like, I cannot fucking believe that they did that. What a cruel thing to do to this character. I don't even care about. So the whole uh, episode has just been watching them treat her like shit uh, the whole time, and then she dies, and it's like, eh. what? I don't, yeah, I don't know what the you're end. aiming for. Like, I don't know what your goal is, but like, this is a really bad way of trying to get people to like your characters. <laughs> I gotta I... tell you. It's, I uh, it's hate pretty inefficient, I would say. Well, I despise yeah, all them. I hate them. The idea them. that Agatha is like well, mostly responsible. It's like I guess she is the most responsible, but I'd say they're all so close to being as responsible as her. Jen is a very close second. Group. Can we be yes. absolutely clear as well? Jen's for anybody who wants to make the claim, like guys, they're evil. It's like no, 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 no. This happened because they're incompetent. Most of them cared about yeah. her. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 just stupid. Jen is and the also, second most responsible because she is incredibly stupid. When this is her area of expertise, and and also, that's why they brought her along. Get get a bit real. You know how it works with these stories. You you're not. This is not like a villain show. That's not like what it's meant to be. The whole point of this yep. show and shows like this and the kind of thing that Marvel does whenever they do something like this with like more of an anti-hero character, they still want to follow a lot of the basic beats of like the hero storyline. The whole point of this show is that they want you on Agatha's side. That's the they point. They want you on Wanda's That's side. The well, well, most the of the of characters the do not act evil at all. They're mostly chill, happy people who are just moving along in life. Like, as in, like, if they... Remember, yeah, the candle-eating lady was stupid. very... Yeah. The main thing that yeah. you might classify them as evil is because of all the stupid candle shit they do. Yeah, the candle-eating with the people, is it was obviously meant to be like, see, she's nice to customers, look at her go. But obviously she she has, like, the lawsuit about burning people because of her cat, which I don't even want to get into in terms of what the fuck that even is. <laughs> but... The point, point being that, point, like, well, yeah, you're right. Agatha's the only one, and and the whole the show is not. This is not meant to be like a villain show. The whole point of this show is gonna be, ah, uh, you see, Agatha, yeah, you know, she does some bad things, but like, there's something there. That's what the point's gonna be. That there's something worthwhile about her. That's clearly what they're gonna well, be. And they up all towards. have that desperate yes, moment of trying to get the antidote to her at one point. Because like exactly. they're, they're all like we gotta save it, save it. Like they all care. They're just really stupid, and they're that's the main crux of this. Concept. Combine it with uh, the fact that she spent most of that unconscious, unable to help herself, and she's the one that dies because everyone was too busy helping themselves. Then you got rewind a bit earlier, and she has her mind melting such that she flashes back to being tortured by Wanda. Go back further, she's nearly dying on the road because no one explained the rules to her or kept her safe after kidnapping her. Rewind a bit further kidnapped in general for no just trying to be nice to her neighbors rewind a bit further oh she was just released from having been tortured for years however long how long was it in westview again was it half a year uh some time yeah it was some yeah. time and then to the point where she was so desperate she asked that you kill her like why did why did you make Mahler, a character just to do all of this to her it's very odd Mahler, you you've kind of highlighted something that i was uh that i, that I kind of meant to bring up but Sharon's last conscious experience was reliving Wanda's torture. She never woke up. Oh no. That's right. That, so, was, that was her was last like, conscious yeah. experience. And now then and now nobody's mm. gonna even know what happened to her in the real world. It's just nope. like, yeah, she just kind of disappeared just and that that's it. You know what yeah. a terribly so, cruel thing to do to but, her. Uh, and... Quite tragic, really, when you uh when you add it all up. It feels like a prolonged ver do you remember the Jurassic World, the lady who got grabbed by the pterodactyl? Yeah, and then got eaten by the. It's, it's like weird. that, but longer. It's just weirdly cruel and terrible mm -hmm. for your characters that yep. the show wants you to get on their side for. Well, and then this just is not cherry on top. It's a joke mm -hmm. at the end. They want you to laugh. Yep. Yeah, it's a joke. Like, Sharon. <laughs> Pop song uh -huh. yeah. credits. So yeah, that's that's terrible for all of them. They're all on the hook for this. Every single one of them, including uh, what's his name, the the guy. Yeah, you fucked up as well. They're all on the hook for this one. Yeah, Gay every kid? single one of them. Yeah, they're all they're all they're all yeah. 
They're all stupid, and it got her killed. At varying degrees, you could say, uh, in terms of, like, because he, he, like, makes attempts to pretend to care about her, but obviously, in terms of actions, you know, that didn't materialize, so, you know, pretty bad for all of them, really. It's just a disaster, like, this is, like, not how you write it so that you get people on the side of your characters, and you can tell stories about bad people where you will still find ways to essentially get people to be like, oh, well, you know, I can see this well, and you know, or something like that. Um, if, let's say, for example, they get to the end of the road and it's a, it's nothing, and then they exit the road, and then they realize that Mrs. Hart was never even there. Like, she was actually just a spell yeah. or some bullshit. I, I'll be like, that doesn't clean anything out for any of the characters. Yeah, nothing changes. No, it's, it's, exactly a good, it's good that someone didn't way... die, but well, it's still it's, their choices. It's, that's like, because my, like, it, it's, it's that kind of a sloppy writing where it's like, yeah, but they didn't, nothing bad happened. It's like, no, 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 you don't understand. They thought it was real and made these choices. If it later turns out that the consequence wasn't bad, that doesn't change that their thoughts about it were terrible. Their thoughts and their actions uh, in relation to it. You know, in terms of the idea of, like, moral culpability. It's, I, ju I just don't get it. Why would they do this? Other than to just have it be like, oh my god, look, someone died. Isn't that dramatic? Anyway, watch next episode. It's like, mm -hmm. no, thank you. you I'd, know, like to also, coverage. I'd like to also point out that, because um, I, I don't know why I didn't even mention this. It was, it was weird to me. It frustrated me. Uh, Gay Kid doesn't know what counterclockwise means. What? Yeah, that, really? That I missed that. Seems... Oh, yeah, it's one of the rules. So, um, Jen tells the gay kid to stir with his dominant hand, the, the brew. He has to stir with his dominant hand counterclockwise. And he says he doesn't know what that means. Oh, is that a like a joke at the expense of the fact that Gen Z people don't know that? Well, the Zoomers don't know what counterclockwise huh? I I would have to imagine that Zoomers you know, know what, what counterclockwise is. I don't know if we have any Zoomers <laughs> in chat. Do they still teach clockwise and anti clockwise? I fucking hope so. Well, they, they teach how to. There's. They surely teach there's how to no read way. analog clocks. There's, there's no way too. that that's not the case. I can believe reading analog clocks may not have as, anywhere near as much like need, but clockwise and anti-clockwise are still. You just pick that up. Well, that's just a... clockwise and anti-clockwise is relevant to like things beyond a clock, right? That's how you learn about the um like how rotation water goes direction. Down yeah. The brain. Yeah. That's and also, it isn't, it isn't just frustrating that apparently Gay Kid doesn't know what counterclockwise means, but, um, and also, if this is all an act, right, if this is all an act and he's actually whatever magic bullshit, he has no reason to lie here because his life is at stake, I was about right? to say, that wouldn't but make sense, yeah. But Jen, Jen tells him when he asks what's counterclockwise, Jen says to the left. But depending on if you're looking to at the, the top or the bottom, yeah, it it, it's left either exactly. way, depending on which well, one you look at. Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't <laughs> help. If you say left, then if you're stirring count, if you're, if you're going clockwise, then it's left on the bottom. It's left towards on the bottom. If you're going uh, counterclockwise, it's left on the top. So he might, he wouldn't know which one, like, which you mean, the, the, the top of the circle or the bottom of the circle is left. <laughs> like, but, so even Jen's direction for clarification is stupid because Jen is a fucking moron. <laughs> Episode three, done and done. Episode three. Um, so this show hates uh, young people. It also hates elderly people. Um, it only appreciates really like Gen X, I guess. It hates it, women. It, as asshole it sociopaths you know, who don't care for others' lives, I guess. That's we're doing great. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It's just yeah. I, I yeah. It's it just sucks. I can't believe they actually had an episode where they sat around and drank wine. So I, I, I spent more detail. One. I went I went into more detail on that because it's just like it, it turned the tide of me not caring about the show to me hating the show and all the people involved in it. Mm -hmm. I we can just kind of like. You know. All right. Well. All right. And and that that brings us to the 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 episode that's got the worst name. Um. If I can't reach you, let my song teach you. Don't rhyme the same word. It's not impressive True. if you do that. That's just not uh, interesting at all. You that just suck if you, you rhyme. A, <laughs> if you rhyme a word with itself, you suck. You can do it sometimes in a song, but like every time, it's kind of like a ah uh, damn. Oh, if, it's, oh. if it's supposed <laughs> yeah. to be like deliberate repetition. That's one thing. Well, it's, it's just this the, the like theme for the other ones, right? All of the other ones have a... They, they have, like, Fate, Gate, Miles, Trials, Our, Power is, is the next one. 
and then you, you. <laughs> Get awkward, mm. you know? Episode four. Let Here it comes. Reach you, let my song teach you. Um, we pick up right where we left off. With Agatha, them digging a shallow grave for us. Ag- man, That's... she should be lucky she gets one at all. Yeah, Fucking hell. she is lucky she got Agatha, one. Agatha's looking at Sharon's body. I didn't think you had it in you, she says, as gay kid is digging a grave. I don't know what that means. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Wu said that her mother died on tour in a hotel fire. And she's here because her mother said that the road would save her. Um, Agatha's really callous and unfeeling about Sharon being dead. And she tries to say that the ballad actually says, which is like the song about the, um, the, the song about the witch's road. Uh, the ballad of the witch's road says um with coven two all power shall be thine instead of with coven true all power shall be thine she's like no no it's fine if they die because with coven two it's fine if we have two people it's a really weird attempt at like a joke or reframing it's really weird i don't know um so they still need a green witch to get through the trials sharon wasn't even one <laughs> she's just a, she was a muggle for lack of a better term um they say yeah we need a green witch you always did but now they i guess address it then jen says uh, that they wouldn't have survived the last trial without her expertise but Wu points out that sharon didn't survive and then jen asks oh yeah Wu. well where were you when uh, rhyme when sharon needed protecting yeah they start like pettily no fighting over whose incompetence more so led to the when death all... of sharon when it's, when it's, all... it's, it's to be fair this is not done from a place of grief and frustration and guilt. It's done from a place of no, yeah. fuck you, you're worse than me. It's a it's a catty blame game. Yeah. And and Agatha's at most at fault for abducting her. Jen is very closely second for being insanely incompetent and stupid with the potion stuff. Um but yeah, Lillian points out that Sharon drank the most wine. So how many doses of the antidote did you end up getting? So I, I don't know. Jen's just fucking awful. I guess they just they just bicker about whose fault it is. It's awful. I mm-hmm. hate all of these people. Um, mm-hmm. Gay kid says it was all their fault. They should have been looking out for her as a team. Okay. Uh, now they need a green witch to do the trial. So they decided to do like a summoning ritual to summon a green witch here to the road. To help them continue. What a great yeah, reference they... you've just made, Rags, to when they'd set yeah. that up a while ago, you know, the nature of summoning witches and how that works and where you can actually implement it and why they hadn't implemented it before. It's a, it's a great little thing that we're bringing up now because it's a useful tool in our tool set that we always knew that we had. So, well, you know. it's a, it's an insane implication that this... Well, the, here, let me explain it first and we'll, we'll see, see what happens, right? So... Gay Kid has like this little pocket spell book and they use this to make this summoning ritual. They make like the outline of a person in the dirt and they each may make a kind of request about the summoned person, what they should be, what they should have, you know, traits that they're looking for. Uh, Jen requests that she is pleasant looking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Wu requests that she brings Advil. Wouldn't you want to say something like Extremely Smart, talented, clever, talented, experienced, wise, kind, generous. No, I hope she's easy on the eyes, and I hope that she has Advil. Okay, they do the ritual, and then Sharon's corpse rises up from the grave. Ooh. Oh my God! Uh, no. What? True, it's Vidal. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Well, they, they, they think it's Sharon's corpse at first, and so everyone's like, oh my god, Sharon's a zombie. But it's actually Vidal. Remember her? Yeah, but but this is... So I, I was really confused when this happened. I was like, what? But she crawled out of her grave, so like, what does that mean? The grave and is... And then it turns out it means nothing. Did her body... Did no, she? I don't. Uh, uh, she's dead. That's the thing, right? Like, yeah, yeah. She, Sharon's she's fucking dead. dead. Sharon's she absolutely she's, dead. She's, uh, she's dead. She's worm food, man. She has become the garden that she so loved. It's actually very poetic. Um, but oh, no. I, well, no, they were. It's good. Um, so, um, yeah, it's Vidal. She's here. 
she she's here because magic. Um, but she says her real name is Rio. She says she's not a green witch. She's the green witch. Okay. Um, yeah, Rio's here. This is her from the beginning when she tried to kill Agatha and sent the 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 f- fur- Fast and Furious Seven witches after Agatha to kill her. Yeah, she's here now. She's part of the team. Which was awkward because I was kind of just like, where is she? She's Audrey Plaza is supposed to be in the show. When, when's that happening? And it's so yeah, funny so because one, two, her arrival was nothing but like, she's here now. Was, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> just accept her being there and move on. There was nothing in the story um, that would have suggested that she'd be arriving now. They just, just like, we're summoning her. There you go. You're like, okay. That's a power yeah. that they can do. You can just summon someone into this place particularly the witch's road this magical realm you can summon people from the real world you know, the normal they world i don't want to they're too bad but but i thought <laughs> okay that seems like antithetical to the whole point right it's something that you willingly would want to participate in rather than like oh well sucks you were no this is Sorry, bro like you gotta now you gotta deal with all this crap so they call it a summoning ritual this is an abduction curse. Let's yes. be clear, okay? You, against your will, can be essentially pulled across the nether uh, world or the real world or wherever to another realm, and you just appear, like, digging out of a grave or something, and now you're here, and this is your life now. You've been summoned here. What an insanely powerful spell. And Think also about all the... like, man, like, super unethical. But like, yeah, what if, what if they don't want to be here? Yep, you're essentially saying... Someone, you are now in a life or death uh, trial with us so that we can get our uh, witch power. Okay, that's what they decide to do. So now they are not all only stupid. This is arguably something that pushes even like Wu and Lillian into like, you are now doing evil things. You are now abducting people against their will to... And then they'll be the like, no, but what are you talking about? Uh, Aubrey Plaza wants to be here. It's like, no, you... <sighs> Okay. <laughs> Move it on. Now, um, oddly, Gay Kid says that um, she descri- er, he describes Rio as the dangerous but charismatic lady, which is just like a show, oh, you're just trying to like compliment her for no reason and big her up from this other character. I have no idea what's charismatic about this character yet. She hasn't been that. Um, <laughs> certainly, certainly, he hasn't seen her be charismatic but that's kind of weird. Um, the other witches, Jen, Lillian, and Wu, they, they want her, they want Rio's phone number because they're all lesbians and they think she's like hot and cool. So within like moments, she's in the group and yeah. everyone's talking about how fucking amazing she is. Yeah, the, the, the whole like, do I date her or do I want her phone number line? I mean... It's Aubrey Plaza, so it's like some meta yeah. commentary within the show of being like, look, it's Aubrey Plaza, and she's hot, and she's cool. She's a, and... Yeah, she's attractive. It's still, even if she showed up in a group, I'd be like, it'd be weird if everyone within, like, instantly was like, wow, look at how hot and amazing she is. Like, yeah. That's just weird. To, to me, it was definitely a, like, we want to get into this being our crew now. Can we skip the parts where that's not the case? You know, like, um, no. <laughs> that's what we call yeah, Sharon, story Sharon is in her fucking grave yeah. so we can carry on with the story that bitch is out of the story we got Rio here isn't she dangerous and charismatic and cool she's younger and hotter so it's it's a fair trade I guess mm. <sighs> that's, that's ageism and you know what? <laughs> that's mean so they they approach the next trial which is another house on the road Wu says that she will not go into the house and starts walking the other way, but then, <laughs> oh no, immediately actually... it's like, well, obviously you have to go into it, so why are we yeah. even pretending like you can go away from it? Yeah, like, I don't even know why here. we're wasting time. You know better than this. You we're know at the that point you can't walk away from it. where if there was a giant hole with a bunch of blades, fire, and acid in it, it'd be like, well, we'd jump in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you got to. you got no choice. Whatever. Where are you going to go? This, this is what I mean about the, uh, the road road me. I think what annoys me again is that the writer would be like, well, no, she doesn't want to go in there because of, like, you know, her history. It's like, yeah, but she can't go anywhere else, and she knows that, so why would she walk She already off? knew she this was, like, in. this was the broad point of the road. This is how it works. <laughs> yeah. 
This is a deal. You should almost be at the so point where the characters go like, oh god, it's my turn. Well, let's go. Yeah, exactly. Instead of doing this, and I'd be like, no, we're building character. She wants to walk away. It's like, yeah, but this is stupid character. And, and it wastes dumb, time, dumb. time that you do, yeah. don't have. This show's so short oh. anyway. Yeah. And again, it's established a... the, the yeah. they they drank poison and then they encouraged the remaining person to drink the poison to move the trial on, literally killing yourself to move the trial on, which is much worse than I don't want to enter a building I have issues with. Mm-hmm. Get on with it, is the is the vibe. <laughs> All right. We I hope you guys like vibes because boy we got we got vibes coming up and what wonderful oh. vibes they will be. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously they have to go to the house and inside of it. Uh it is pointed out that this door has a waxing moon on it, which is the fire phase. Mm. Okay. Eh. They mentioned it. I figured I would. Yeah. So they go inside and it's like a 70s it's music 70s set. Theme yeah. Because this is the show, the show is every episode it'll be some like theme. And Which you know, they're and hoping then you're like, oh, well, no. will be enough people to talk about to, you know, pass well, it yeah, through. Well, yeah, and they'll be like, yes, yeah, this is actually an episodic show because they have a different theme each episode. Yep. And like, that's that's enough. Um, for some people, we'll, it actually is, unfortunately. Yeah, for, for for some people, it is like, oh, this is a compelling use of the television format that in each episode they go to a place where they have different costumes. Um, not only do they have different costumes, but they dedicate time to, like, oh, look at these costumes, oh, look at me. And it's like, dude, the solipsism is actually, like, driving me crazy. Like, can we... I don't know what it is, but I find it really cringe when, uh, stories write in characters commenting on their own attractiveness. It's, like, really embarrassing. It's, um... Yeah. It's, That's it's something really, you give really to specifically the vain characters, typically. Well, rather than, like, what, every Does time... Everyone? Be, cause, Does every cause woman? Because last episode gay person? as well... The uh the <laughs> potion one, like going, oh, ruin my perfect face. It's like, man, you should not write characters in this way. It's like really lame. Um, it it, it it's so lame that it feels like it's not real. It feels like the writer writing it down because they find it personally like entertaining to have their characters declare that they're attractive, like when people just don't tend to do that with regularity. But <laughs> okay. I don't know, it's just the whole thing of like, yes, let's sit here and bask in our costumes. What are we doing? Like, this definitely struck mm -hmm. me as, man, this really was just a bunch of people got paid a bunch of money, a lot of money, to just screw around on set for, like, a few months. <laughs> Instead of, like, going in with the real desire to do storytelling. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a 70s set, their clothes change. It looks like the 70s. Boy, oh boy, it is time for fun stuff. Now, there are these banners on the wall of poorly drawn women being killed, and Lillian <laughs> cries at that. I thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> Jen sees some weird masks on the wall. Wu sees some old photographs and newspaper clippings, and she sees a photo of her mom there. Okay. Um, so it is discovered or stated that Wu's mother was trying to open the road. No, okay, we, we kind of skipped over this because uh, it wasn't important until now. Um, so Alice Wu is our character here. Her mother, Lorna Wu, is like, she was like a famous like uh, concert singer person, rock star back in the day. Um, and she, th there's trauma with Wu and some blah, blah, blah. But Wu's mother was trying to open the road using her concerts and all of her fans were her coven. Wow. I don't know about the male fans, if they were allowed in the coven. I think it's implied this is a specifically chick thing. I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, Agatha and Rio are having a little private chat together in this uh, music booth, this little studio booth. Um, uh, in the next room over and uh, Rio says that the the reason she's here because of the summoning spell is because magic took the path of least resistance and it ferried in the closest most appropriate candidate with the summoning spell um, what an insane what? power this is yeah. what, and what did that look like to her? what was it that she got like dragged into the earth I don't know on, I don't know on her end what it looked like it must have been horrifying mm. It probably was very confusing and horrifying, at the very least. Um, uh, Agatha says that they should call a truce between the two, because, you know, they don't like each other. Um, 
And they should have, like, one more adventure, just like old times. But you see, it's a trick, because Agatha hits a button on, like, a microphone, and then it projects what Rio says into the next room where everybody else is. And she says, all right, she, she says she's going to murder all of them, and Agatha's going to get her powers back, and Rio's going to get her bodies. Which, I don't, this was really bizarre to me because I, I got reminded, I was like, oh yes, the fear they all had about Agatha and why they didn't want to come on this trip with her that we never really properly addressed. I guess that's still on the cards, because why wouldn't it be that she's going to kill them all? I, you know, I, just, I don't know. It's weird that the show is dangling this when I'm sort of sitting here like, yeah, that could happen at any time. But I don't know why the characters aren't taking care of themselves to prevent that from happening, but oh well. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of, it, it is crazy. This is going to be hanging kind of in the background for the show going forward that Rio has admitted that she wants to murder all of them. She will get her bodies and Agatha will get her powers. Um, now Agatha cheekily says like, oh, that's not cool that you said that. That's a really mean thing to say. Um, and the others are, yeah, kind of upset that this new person that they summoned here has just said that she's going to murder all of them. Um, however... Before they actually get to discuss the fact that one of them has just been caught saying that she wants to secretly murder all of them, uh, the gay kid has started playing a record player because it had Play Me written on the album cover. Even though he and everyone else just heard Rio say that she actually wants to murder them all. Because I guess the record player was more important. Well, uh, so it, fucking it, moron. it was stated. The, the new point of view is to not do or say or touch anything. <laughs> Which is stupid, by the way, if, considering they need to get through this as soon as possible. Whatever, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, he's like, yeah, I did that. They're like, why? It said, play me. Like, dude, weren't did you Did you listening? hear the person? Yeah, she did just said she wants listen? to murder all of us and give Agatha her powers know. back. Did you not notice that somebody died the last time that you just just stumbled forward yeah. into whatever it was you were meant to be doing instead of taking your time? Yo, it's poison. Let's drink it. Ah, <sighs> It is... Awful. It's awful. No one's real. No one's real on this show. They're not real people. No one acts like a real person would act. Everyone's just like this weird, bizarre caricature. Um, anyway, the album is really loud and obnoxious, and it's playing backwards. And Agatha smashes it, and it stops playing. Um, Lillian, who is less of a character and more of a, just someone who... Is, she's just a font of, if you need to know a magic thing, she tells you. Um, Lillian says that they have been cursed! Oh no! Oh no! Damn it! A metronome. Now I love me a good curse, as you know. I love the idea of a curse, or some would say it's persistent, transferable magic. But a curse is really cool. A lot of opportunities for curses. Why are they given? To who are they given? From whom are they given? What are the ways that you break it? Uh, what's the nature of the curse itself? How does it relate to the person that's being cursed, or the wrongdoing, or the person casting it? A lot of really cool stuff you can do with curses. Curses are neat. So let's see what they do with this curse, Ooh. all right? They have all been cursed because of the spooky sound that's been played. Um, now, a metronome starts ticking. A metronome is the little click-click thing that the musicians that use to keep in time, weird. everybody. Time. Um, so Wu then says, oh, I, I start feeling a bit lighter. And then Lillian starts screaming in pain. Oh, my God, I'm burning. Ah, <laughs> she smoking. Holy fuck. Now, Wu takes the knife from Rio because Rio has a knife because it's a Disney thing. You, so you, you always got to have a knife. That's like the most badass thing you can have is a little knife. All right. And she gets this knife and she draws like a little a circle in the floor. Uh, she cuts a little circle and then she chants in Latin and then Lillian's fine. She's OK. He's like, oh, that was that hurt. But I'm OK now. Protection uh, witch. Hell yeah. Yeah. She's a protection witch. She can protect you from the curses. And Jin says, oh, shit, you should draw a circle around me next. Which is a really, yeah, like that's... that's yeah, like do it for all of us, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, Agatha says that once vengeance is loosed, you can't reel it back in. And Lillian says there's only one way to end a curse. Which is like, oh, that's kind of shitty that we've just decided there's only one way to end a curse in this universe. Never mind everything I said about how cool and very varied curses can be. Um, she said there's only one way to end a curse. And that is to face it. 
Okay, no clue what that means. I guess we'll find out. I'm so excited. Now, Jin, who only seconds ago said, hey, Wu, you should draw a circle around me of protection so I don't, like, catch on fire. She starts to become pained with this heat. She cries out, ah, my God, it's so hot. I'm smoking. I'm on fire. Oh, God. But Wu then draws a circle around her and stops the pain with a chant as well. So. Again, probably, right. probably worth putting that around that. everybody at this point. Just... I'll just make a big fucking circle in the middle of the room. No, you and can't like, make hey, a big circle, obviously. Oh, okay, right. fair enough. So that's, that's fair. It's only you one can't do that, and you can't do them. portable circles. You can't draw it on a big whiteboard and move it around the world. And, oh, then stand on it? Yeah, like, you, you can't always do have it handy, and then you can just hop on it if you need? Yeah. Didn't this um, show, like, teach us before that if you're, like, hot, um, you should just mess with your hair and take off your clothes and stuff like that? I that might you be try a totally that. random curse. I think that's totally random and coincidental <laughs> that at the mm. beginning in the first episode, Agatha was Agnes was like, "Oh, I'm sure I'm hot. I better let down my hair and start taking off some of my clothes." That was that was like three episodes. <laughs> they don't remember anything about like what happened all they the way remember. back then. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. It's. it's uh, I think that was just coincidental. Now. Mm. Um. They notice that there's a scar on Jen's shoulder because she has like an open shoulder outfit thingy. Um, and uh, they say, oh, Lillian, you should check and see if you have a scar because you got burned. And she has a scar, too. Wow. Like it's on a scar on her shoulder. Um, and there's we get this weird POV, like a like a fucking uh, um, army of darkness POV of like this thing flying around the room. And they're like, oh, no, it's like the curse. It's here. The curse is here to get us. It's, it's personified. It's here. Um, so they ask what the song was on the record that they smashed. They gave him the curse. And it's Lorna Wu's The Ballad of the Witch's Road. Holy fuck. Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, now, Wu says that she thinks that she is cursed because she reveals an old scar on her shoulder. Like she's had it for many, many years. And she says, oh, God, this is why I can't hold a job. This is why everything I have turns to shit. Oh, we have this old, like, generational curse placed on us. Oh, no, we're a cursed family. Um, and then the gay kid gets thrown across the room through the glass wall of the recording booth. He just gets, like, up. This flung demon across the whole room. The gay. I don't know what's that about. What's the demon doing? It's a bit mean. Well, they're all gay in this room, so we had to pick someone. Oh, I mean, yeah. Goes for the gay guy. I feel persecuted. Interesting. An underage guy who does not know. <laughs> Doesn't he know True. the law? That, that, anyway. demon, that demon was like, you know, thank goodness you're underage. And he just fucking whips him across the room and into the next room through the glass wall. That's um, what makes it serious. But he's okay, I guess. Uh, yeah, he, he gets flung across the room violently through this glass wall, but he seems to be totally fine and A-OK. -okay, so that's good. So, all right. Hey, whatever um, eats up the minutes of the episode, right? Like... That's true. There's That's not true. much story for this one. We're sailing through this, baby. All right. <laughs> All right. So they have to play Lorna's ballad in order to stop the curse. I like because... that you say that as though, like, the, the workings out for this are just insane. Like, you're let's just going to have to it. accept that this is what it is. Because I think Lillian says something along the lines of, she made that song as a protection spell for you and the yeah. curse. So oh she made a big popular song because chances are at any one time in the world, someone's going to be playing that song somewhere and that keeps the curse at bay. Man, I don't know about that, Do you see though how trial, let's call it trial one, was at least, in retrospect, this isn't even the case, but at least it was a test of her potions ability to detect a poison and then render the solution. Which, by the way, like I said, if, if it were for them being so fucking stupid, that would have been done pretty fast. But um, this one is play the song. That's it. Yeah, but what happened? Yep. But as witches, that doesn't mean that you know how to play musical instruments, though. So oh, they like, all do. Don't well, worry about it. No, well, <laughs> I, I mean, forgot that uh, this uh, was about to happen. Yep. That's the thing, yeah, because it's like oh, they no. all just somehow know how to play. Oh. They all just know how to play musical instruments. Well, in fact, no, it's worse than that. They even explain that they don't really know how to play them. But then they still they just do know how to play them. It's magic. As, as if, not only that, oh, but like know how to play a song that they may well have never heard before. It's like, oh, do you know the chord progression? Do you know? Is there any sheet music available? Also, I don't know if you know, but they have the cut yeah. to Aubrey Plaza every once in a while, just fucking randomly hitting the drums. I find that kind of funny. 
because the she's I mean, just like whatever, it's, boom, it's, boom. It's, uh... <laughs> It's just a bit of a piss take, though, isn't it? Yeah. The notion that, like, you can all just play a song that you've never heard before and instruments that you may well have never touched before. Like, what What are we doing? Like, how can you even... You, you're screwed. You're, you're actually screwed. Like, you're not going to be able to do this. I wish they just sat down and they were all shit. That would have been really funny. <laughs> yeah. And also, this is, by the way, this is, like... This is this is the the scene that exemplifies that the ballad of the Witch's Road is obviously like a pop song. It's it's not like a yep. centuries old song because it's it's like when you hear it here, it's like oh okay yeah, it's like a song that you can fit into like a seventies pop song. Well, the, this is and, and explicitly like, referred oh, to as right. the version from Wu's mum, but yeah, uh, at the, the same, same time, lyrics. yeah, it's well, yeah, absolutely the same lyrics, but. I guess what I'm saying is, like, this one has more reason to sound more poppy, but the previous one sounded just poppy anyway. So, like, it, it anyway, just, there's no effort. It's just, well, it's just, you can tell when you hear it, it's like, yes, this sounds like the kind of lyrics and, you know, verses, and th this just seems like a song that was made in the last, like, 50, 60 years, not a song that was made, like, 400 years ago. You know what this reminds me of? Like the last time I was this detached from like the main characters, yeah. and there was like just uh, this random music number. Um, it's Marvels. It just reminds me of the Marvels. I don't know. Oh. This, this definitely felt a bit like uh, the cat hey, sequence. Remember how I just thought... Where what, what? Avril Larson oh, just what, what do you mean the, the the planet where they were dancing? Oh shit, yeah. that one. Sorry, I was thinking about the um. I forget the name of it. But you the know, cats, the, the sequence where the cats see everybody and they yeah. play the song, yeah. Oh, I, I don't... don't I... To me, this felt like trying to recapture the Agatha all along thing. Hey, have a song. Oh, yeah. People like a song, put sure. a song in there. Yeah. And then people will be like, wow, that's really cool, like, even though the song's really boring. Dude, there's yep. like no I mean, story yeah. in this episode, so the, I think the song was meant to compensate. It's like, they'll remember that. And, and I guess enough. this is like kind of the nature of like, what are we doing here? So so the, the, the first trial was you drink wine and it's poison. Uh, and then the wine makes you shout out your main fears and have hallucinations for, like, the things that you need to solve for your central character arc. And then the well, second the... one is, yeah, you stop a curse by singing, like, a pop song. There's also that utterly bizarre moment, because, um, I, I was confused, I had to watch it more than once. The, uh, uh, gay kid's been impaled by glass. So when he, when yeah. he was tossed through the wall... I guess he did get stabbed. Nobody saw that on him when they went to check to help him, and he didn't feel it until now. Until, yeah, oh, while he was, he was playing guitar. So he was stabbed this whole time? Yeah. I didn't notice that. Yeah. No one noticed, not even him. Not even him. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I, just, I mean... I just thought it's so laughable that they could all even play this when they even yeah. say that they don't know how to play musical instruments. The people are like, oh, yeah, you know, in sync. You 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 got you know all the key signatures and you you know the uh the the chord progression and everything and you know like the Listen, they, lyrics. They are careful <laughs> with the yeah. shots. Whenever you can see them play the guitars, it is so awkward. Like they avoid showing it as much as they can. Well, yeah, when you play a guitar, you just strum it right. <laughs> that's that's what you do. You do well, you my the, my favorite thing with guitar <laughs> extras are when they just over over. up down up down up down up down up down. They don't even move yeah, like, the other hand. Clearly not yeah. actually doing the fingers for the chords. It's like, come yeah. on. It's so funny to me. It's like, how did that become the pretend to play guitar? Have you seen it before? You, when you pretend well, to play guitar, you can do better like, than that. If, you, if you've not paid attention to what people do when they play guitar, you could just show them, like, you could just give them a book, like, the basics <laughs> of playing a guitar, and then they could just read it for an hour, and that would probably be better than just five just bullet points. doing the pretending thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I don't know. It's the kind of thing that, like, if you do it well, people will appreciate it. You know, oh, like yes. if, you, if you're actually doing stuff sure. that like where, where like the way that they're playing actually looks like they're playing the song because musicians will notice. Be like, well, wait, no, that's not no. And it's the same with piano as well, right? It's just like, yeah, just sort of hit some of the keys and then just sort of bounce around. Never mind if you're actually like playing any any uh, chords at all. And then a demon mm -hmm. arrives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. By the way, um, I. I I think the song is pretty good. I don't know. I I, think I don't really like it at all. I'm not. Damn. Trying. All right. Fair enough. I thought it was, I, I thought I thought it was, it was okay. I thought I, it was a good song. I really don't like the chorus. Down, down, down the road, down the witch's road, over and over again. I don't yeah, like that. That part's not good. But 
That's not very, yeah. Like I don't know, I don't know what you want me to say. Like this. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'm impressive. glad you like it, Rags. I, I enjoy anyone getting some respite in the middle of this show in any way. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, right. I'm glad that yeah, you got that something right. out of it because, yeah, uh, it was like I think uh, it's. Uh, I think it's funny that I uh, I just step away for a moment. I think it's funny they told the black girl she's on base, and that's just that's just. I was a joke yeah. in South Park with Token. Where it's like, <laughs> Token, you can play that Cartman telling Token he can play bass and then he can. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually like what they were doing with that, but while probably they were not. It's what Disney. Were they were probably play, like, "What?" Be oh, like, no. You, Jen, the black one. You are on bass, <laughs> and she just does it, and they're like, "Okay, all right." God, that um, episode of South Park, man, uh, <laughs> where Carmen's trying to get a platinum record, but because it's Christian rock, you can only get it's, it was gold, frankincense, and myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are you telling me I can never get a platinum with a Christian rock band? No, but you could go for double myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> sorry, cough there. Uh, but yeah, as, as as was mentioned, uh, a demon appears. A spooky flying demon appears Look on the balcony. Go. Yep. But by playing the song, it makes the demon fucking explode in oh, fire yeah. after it lands on <laughs> Wu's shoulders. I understood this. Everyone did. Everyone understood this, yep. and it was yeah. understood. Yes. So I, I guess like, this means I, the curse is broken. I, I don't know why, yeah. though. I guess so, yeah. They, they killed it with song. Everyone understood this. Well, like, I... Mean, to, I... Go ahead. To be objective, anything that happens in this episode will make more sense than what just happened. There is something to be said... Kind of earlier, I, I, I um, said that there's a lot of space here to work with, with, like, witch stuff, magic stuff, witchcraft, um, especially if you want to really lean into the... Uh, the typically feminine angle that witchcraft has, which they just never do in this, by the way. Disney doesn't at all play into that. Like, motherhood mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Fuck that. No, well, we, we, no. Lisa's no, in the it's credits, like though. Disney's... She's from The Simpsons. So. Yeah, I mean... I would have liked um, it if they had, like, a... What was the name of the cat in Sabrina the Teenage Witch? What was Salem. Name? Salem. Yeah, if they had a talking cat... That, that would be good. <laughs> ...that was sarcastic and snarky. That would be fun. Yeah, and he mm -hmm. says yeah. all the things that we're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Familiars. It should have but, been uh, the rabbit. Yeah, the oh, rabbit. Yeah, it should have been the rabbit. Yeah, rabbit. they carry yeah, him around. Like, it'd be like you know, every, it's always Aww. cats. But like, there's rabbits as well. <laughs> rabbits. <laughs> you know, rabbits get up to all kinds of stuff. Anyway, you all suck, and he just starts making fun of them the whole time. <laughs> Imagine this cute, fluffy rabbit going along with a uh, Agatha. That would be. I'm just saying the harsh things at her, just like skating in the box. <laughs> Just Have bullying you, her. Are you familiar with Suspiria? The movie? Yes. The, uh, yeah. I, both either. Um, but that's a movie that's got like spooky witches in it. And they take care to sort of have the... It takes place in like a dance school where dance is like an integral part of casting magic and spells and rituals. Moving your body the way that you move. Um... It, it's very much like this is kind of how they do magic. It's a very physical process that involves choreography and these these uh, specific motions. It, it's dancing. And then the front is it's a dance school for girls. Um, mm. So you have all of these different options, like singing. You know, Tolkien was big on songs of creation and stuff of that nature. You could have voices and you know that kind of you know method of expression being a way that magic can be conjured or certain kinds of magic is by song some of it's by dance some of it's by all kinds of stuff right magic can manifest itself in the world through all these different varieties of skills so the idea that you have to sing a song with other people and cooperate because being in a band and music is often a cooperative process right the idea mm -hmm. that this is a way for you to defeat a curse that is a cool idea. Yeah, could, oh, it's an interesting with that concept. As well, especially if there's oh, yeah. layers of like spontaneity to it as well, where it's like sometimes you have to you have to like you can't just play like the same song and expect to get the same outcome. The idea that there's a level of dynamism to it, like I don't know, like you know, like switching between like major or minor chords depending on like what you need to achieve or it, it, sort of those. Or that of, this that like really if cool. Wu, 
Wu should have been the lead singer, not Agatha. Wu yeah. confronts the curse to the point where it's almost like she's staring the demon in the eye as she is singing at it this song, maybe even making up words as a way to speak, not like inventing words, but like going, um, like improvising words as part of the lyrics as she's talking oh, and yeah, confronting this and thing. That's a level of skill, right? Because you could, it'd be like, Almost like if you read a thesaurus, that that would help you because you'd have a greater a greater understanding of the English language, greater access to yeah, and the ability to rhyme, you know, for and, instance. And maybe you just lean into the idea it's more about the passion and the earnestness of the act and not the technical yeah. music skill itself. Mm. Like maybe she's a terrible singer, but she is so impassioned with what she's saying. She, it's so earnest and from the heart, and she's so angry at this demon, what it did to her mother, what the, the curse that it would give to her, the curse it might give to her children. That would be interesting if she wants mm -hmm. to be a mother, but she doesn't want to bring a cursed child into the world, and so this is her way of being able to open up that pathway. And so she's like crying as she's singing at it, and she finally confronts it, and it like explodes in fire or some bullshit. There's a lot of stuff you could do this is like the show of opportunity that you could do anything you want. And they just don't do anything interesting. Oh, it's just it. imagination, just right? There. Imagination. Mm. It just seems like, the further... Yeah. I, I guess that's part of the reason why... I I really do, like, the, the whole, like, just having it be themed after, like, a certain decade. I don't know what it is, but, like, that annoys me maybe more than it should. And I think the reason why is because it strikes me as the most... Un it's It's like unimaginative mistaken for being imaginative like yeah what if they go to a place and it's like a 70s place oh what what if they go to like and it's like an 80s place yeah, like they the sing and the demon explodes imagination as opposed to anything because of course this is the marvel universe i presume that witches are not actually exclusive to earth so i'm gonna have to bring it up again why isn't there any place that they go to that's actually difficult to discern like, it's from a culture that they don't even recognize from, like, another planet. Or, if you wanted to have even just, like, a little bit of imagination within the scope of Earth, what if they went to places that weren't recognizable as, like, Western witch-related places? What if there was, like, a sort of universe... Like, that there's a universality to, to like, magic in the Marvel world to where they could show up in a place that's, like, from an entirely... A culture they're just totally unfamiliar with. That has but it's like a shared it. language almost like oh you guys do magic too oh sweet yeah, we but do it, magic exactly. but it's something else but like i don't know they go somewhere and it's like ancient egypt or something and there's some connection there that you could draw or like a mesoamerican or, or like yeah you could have like you know, bast like and sekhmet and all these yeah. ancient egyptian gods uh, or goddesses yeah, you, you want to lean into the femininity the angle Marvel universe like that stuff is already a precedent because of moon knight but like it's no it's like everything has to be it's like yeah, it's anything within the last 100 years, more or less, and very American. American slash Western European. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then, of course, again, like I, like I said, even if it was in the scope of Earth, I would kind of find that to be not good enough in the MCU. I would want to see, like, alien witches or something. That's what I would want to see. They go to a place but that's free. actually, like, difficult to discern because it's alien. Everything they need is within a three-mile radius. Yes, mm -hmm. that's Yeah, right. that's yeah. the Covenstead yeah. rule. They cover their bases. Um, the writing is really tight. <laughs> really tight, yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I just, because my assumption would be, because of course it's not, you know, we're, we're going to get to it. The next episode is 80s. Um, my guess for like the places that would remain is maybe it, it, nothing early. Oh, they, they'd have something that would be like New England, like Salem witch trials era. That would be my guess for one yeah. of them. Well, that could be the flashback uh, that episode that, that they do that. that could be the oh, yeah, yeah. Here's what really um, happened. Yeah. Maybe they'll have one for the 90s or something as well. I could imagine them having a 90s one. Yeah. Uh, and maybe like a 50s one. Yeah, Those they could, use, they could reuse all factors. their WandaVision stuff that they have sitting in yeah. the warehouse. That and would be my guess. Of it. But the idea of anything that would, yeah, again, be like really surprising would be like, yeah, no way. But, um... Yeah, there's uh, basically there's a there's a shit ton of stuff that they could have done that's cool and interesting and creative, especially when they have so much open ended space to work with when it comes to magic and everything like that. They get to just essentially invent this all up from the ground up. There's not really any pre established rules as far as this stuff goes, but they don't do anything uh, interesting or creative. No, with someone in chat has pointed out. I know what the argument is. The argument for it is, yeah, this is all relevant to these characters. Whatever it is is relevant. That's why it's seventies or eighties or the the wine stuff i'm just saying like you don't have to do to that to me it's like that's, you don't have to make it that way you, you also, don't have it can to be relevant to be like, in a different time especially if these are like basal human experiences 
If it's talking yeah, like, about like song and dance or like guilt well, like, and sorrow like, or your our, our daughter's relationship with saying, her mother. Like, I, I know what the I know what the logic is. The logic is that the places they're going to are relevant to them. I'm just saying that if that ends up with you just having it be like seventies, eighties, it's like, yeah, boring. Can well, we imagine they had a, um, a scroll witch and then you have part of the road witch? is sometimes they'll have trials that apply to two people and it's a clash. Like it's almost like the they interpret from their experiences what world degenerate and it is this complete mashup of the alien culture and an 80s environment for whatever character that is and you yeah. just have this whole new fucking thing where you're just like what is that and you can figure it out who it's for and what it's about via that but no we're not even going to touch it not even near it too dangerous anyway it is yeah. shockingly boring Wait. and this isn't even getting into something i don't think they will ever brought up bring up because they haven't brought it in yet but um culturally which witchiness has this very deeply like feminine kind of lean to it women are witches um but they don't there's nothing feminine about the show except everyone's like a catty bitch to each other all the time which isn't a great way to portray <laughs> women well they made but the you have an opportunity to actually in, the in the kitchen Use the oh kitchen. it's true that's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah they, there you go you think they'd be more competent in there but it's it's just really weird that you have this actual in universe opportunity to do like big girl power, feminine you know stuff, and they don't lean into it at all. Nothing. And nothing I don't know if they're afraid like, to. It's like if it's if it's is the same like oh no like don't be a mother that's lame. You have to be an adventurer who doesn't belong at home and you want to explore or whatever or be a fighter warrior. Like that's uh, I I'd, I'd probably ask him too much, but even suggesting that maybe you should have actually leaned into you know maybe more aspects of femininity. Um, and actually, like, big them up and said how great they were. Well, but, the biggest uh, respectful thing they lost. could do for women with a show like this is provide some decent characters. Uh, a cool cast of characters mm -hmm. who are women. Who well, aren't a bunch asking... of catty, dumb bitches. Well, what, so what's funny, um, I assume only me and Frank could speak to this, but there is a new character as part of the Matt Reeves, the Batverse, whatever we're going to call it, uh, who is mm. a lady, and she's very significant, and she's already climbing up everybody's, like, interest levels for just she's awesome. really great. Really, really, really good. interesting character. Writing and performance, just really top-notch. And the funny thing is, she's a bad guy. <laughs> like, she's... Oh, yeah, yeah, she's and, crazy. And uh, people like her more than they could ever, combining all of the women in this show. It's, uh... It's just not even close, and it, and it's the dif the difference you can make when Which, uh, you care about the writing, you know. And hey, D if DC were able to maintain that for their shows, <laughs> which you know mm. that'd be nice uh, if they could maintain that. That would be. I just find it funny, like how much more worthwhile the Matt Reeves Batman like world is <laughs> than anything that's existing right now, and may well end up being way more worthwhile than the rebooted DCU as well. Just sort of existing in some little corner. So, um, <laughs> moving right along. Uh, so yeah, the the demon explodes. Yay, we did it. We beat All him. right, awesome. Yeah, they got Great, him. they did it. Good job. Um, so, oh shit, let me. Um, did the demon scare you. Yeah, it actually kind of did. I was really spooked out by this crazy. Uh, I guess this, I like this, this like crazy wild. He demon. wasn't just entirely CG, so that's nice. They're, they're, they're trying to incorporate the idea of what he would have looked like had they made him in this environment. It's the same with the camera work, right? Like I'll I'll give them she, a sliver. A lady. You don't know that. Uh, it's got. Yeah. A chest. A lot of men have boobs. <laughs> Name three. Um, Galathothic. He's an ancient demon uh, who has boobies. Fuck. So uh, yeah, think about that next time you. Oh, you're so rude. All right, yeah. I shouldn't have assumed the gender um, of the spooky generation demon. I don't think he looks that great, but I guess I just appreciate that he wasn't just a CG blob. So there's that, and then the yeah. camera work trying to evoke a sense of uh, the 70s. Like yeah, sure. Like it's like a weak Something. thumbs up sort of. You know, it's like eh. <laughs> everyone in chat yeah. saying boogie. <laughs> 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 yeah, balls. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. So, the piano opens up. That's the exit to the next trial, right? Now, gay kid, he collapses because he totally got, like, super injured by that piece of glass that's in him. I guess he's got blood loss now, and he collapses. They drag him out, and they put him 
on a on on a they're, they're back on the road. They're back on the road. They're out of the 70s house. They put gay kid on this very cleanly cut massive stump, which is actually kind of weird. It, it kind of like hurt my immersion to be like, why why would there be a super cleanly like mechanically cut tree here in the witch's road? That's really actually kind of weird, and it like distracted. The road me. provides um, them just what they need when they need it. Rags to go on the journey. Hooray! Yeah. Uh, but Agatha no, asks the other Jen, lady. I guess they knew. Yeah, they they, they knew that. Hey, you know, gay kids gonna need a place to get. <laughs> can't put them down on the dirt. That would be dirty. Um, Agatha asks Jen, you know, the potion lady, what do they need to save the gay kid? And she says they need water and moonlight. <laughs> So it's a good thing he didn't oh, die during the day. <laughs> That's the first thought I had. I was like, oh, mo- oh, wow, we would have been just out of that, actually, if it was sun time, or this place had sun time in it. Or... Also, this is like mm-hmm. a magic moon. Yeah, it's so not even a real even place. Like, it's, yeah. Maybe. Uh, maybe whatever. all moonlight will do. And actually, moonlight is actually sunlight, moonlight so we won't sunlight even get into that. We're not even going to get yeah. into that. We're not even going to get into that. Don't think about <laughs> vampires at all. Okay, so Lillian says, um, three of swords, because she says weird things. Jen gets some water and like this rock or shell or whatever, I don't know. And she's like, ooh, I do I do Latin. And then she chants, and the water in the moonlight is, oh my goodness, she does it. And then she pours it over the wound, and it heals like a fucking bullet wound from Holy and- Grail. Yes, it does actually. I thought it was exactly the same sort of uh, approach to do it. But yeah, this uh, this was quite amusing to me. They all care heavily about this. Significant. Yeah. They are on the edge of their seats, wondering what will happen. <laughs> Even fucking uh, Aubrey Plaza, who is the troll who will turn out to be death itself, is like concerned. I don't understand what the fuck they think they're doing with these characters. When when Sharon died, all of them were like, "Well, there she goes." <laughs> But no, this gay guy that they've known for five seconds, they're like, oh dear, oh no, this can't happen, we must save him, oh god. Even Agatha's losing it. I was just like, god, you... writers, you need to work on your uh, characterization, they're all over the fucking place. Mm-hmm. And also they're just like, recognize yeah. how little time has passed as well. Hey, this is episode four. Sharon was married to a man, I'm just saying. <gasps> He's dead. Still, that doesn't wash away the taint of straightness. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 when it says the Sharon as she's dying was like, I'm gay, by the way. They all go, oh my god, they start like panicking. Oh, quick, 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 shut it down. And it's just like, they're all freaking out so much. They're like having anxiety attacks. Yeah, I didn't and, understand. Uh, Agatha's this, crying. This is <laughs> like so bizarre after the complete like apathy that they displayed. They literally came off as like sociopaths in that yeah. like in the third Those episode and and here it's just <laughs> what is going on? Oh no, gay kid. Ah uh, no, not him. <laughs> oh, I'm crying. I'm I... Agatha and I'm crying. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Um so I guess yeah. Jen can't do she can't do magic, but this is like the she does the thing and it doesn't matter if you have magic or not. If you say if you say the words, if you get the ingredients it does magical things. If that's how they, by the way, if that's how they want to set up the system, okay. Being like being able to use magic and being able to access magical things, like yeah, sure, those are different, I guess. But I don't know. I just have questions, and they never explain it. It would be cool to flesh out the world of witchcraft, but whatever. All right. Um, that's never going to fit so, into the MCU. I'm sorry, it won't. And and obviously nope. it doesn't as it is, but it wouldn't if they went even further. They've already said analog <laughs> magic, which is just. Shoving things together can make spells. Like, no fucking way no one's discovered that. That's bullshit. Yep. There would have to be... You'd have to have something, like, specific chance, specific things, very yeah. things that no one could ever stumble across. Instead of, like, what? You think... Just to be clear, basically all of the water in the world touches moonlight. Just to be clear, that that's just... Yeah, we need more than that. But, you know, fine. Yep. All right. Fine. You know, it's... Sure. Whatever. It's magic. It's like, narratively, what, what was the point of stabbing him? If I don't, they were gonna uh, fix it in like two seconds, it's um, just like a I guess jump to have scare. The scene of Agatha being sad because those character. Mm. There she goes being sad. I'm sure she will stay consistent with that. Well, let's find out. Um, yeah, gay kid's okay. He gets healed. Uh, and Agatha's watching over gay kid. They like build this shitty little shelter with sticks over him. It's actually fucking hilarious. 
I don't know if you can show it or not. It's it's really funny that they just made this shitty little shelter that would do nothing for the not weather that exists here. <laughs> the I don't not know, weather. This is weird. <laughs> Um, and while she's watching over Gay Kid, Agatha is, um, the witches chat around a campfire. Jen says she never thought of herself as a witch, but she's a, an 11th generational root worker and midwife. And even and Lillian's like, ooh, midwife, as if like that's something super special. By the way, midwife, it, anyone could be a midwife. It, a midwife means with the wife. So you don't have to, like, it's not a woman thing to be a midwife. A man could be a midwife. It's just... It's just a weird you know, thing that that's like so you know ooh, that thing they built. Midwife. I'm gonna take a dive. Why? Yep. It's Why? Just, it's just funny. <laughs> it's funny. They just made it. <laughs> what did they use for twine? Like it's just funny that they did yeah. that. Oh, from where? <laughs> All of it. <laughs> they dug up Sharon's corpse and yeah, used they her hair. Sharon's <laughs> We don't give a shit about you. We have to make a shitty sh shelter for gay kid. He got hurt. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, Wu asks how Jen was bound, and she said she got tricked to go to a conference, and it was a trap about some guy, and that this guy was able to bind her without magic. So that's weird that that's a thing. Um, Wu says that when her mom died, she felt angry, but now she doesn't. Uh, blah, blah, no one cares. Um, Jen makes like goop on a rock and gives it to Wu and is like, you should put this on because it smells nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't, uh, this is just a weird scene. So rebel where they just start talking about stuff. Did yeah, this is a. Don't even this worse, is our weird possibly. <laughs> we are bonding. I think it is worse. Because um, it's like it's less just... information that's actually useful. It's just usually funny information anyway. Kind of. Um, it isn't nearly as entertaining. So, sorry, I was uh, about to, felt like I was about to cough there for a second. I've been thinking about this show too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Lilia says that the worst part about being a witch is the hypocrisy. No, it's the misconceptions and the rumor mongering, <laughs> like talking to goats and having an extra nipple, um, which I would think that the worst part is like the curses and the people coming to kill you and yeah. the crazy spells and the fear of being abducted at any point and brought to the underworld. But Burn to geez, live. Yeah, yeah, things like that. Well, I guess we're, we're past that now. We're a much more progressive society. But mm -hmm. uh, I, she says that the misconceptions and rumor mongering are the worst part about being a witch. Um, uh, why is the show that bad? So was it you talk to goats? What would, what's with the, oh no. Oh no, we cut. Yeah, you know, I feel uh, like a lot of people uh, be like, wait, you can talk to goats? Yo, that's that's cool. I know there's someone who stare at goats, yeah. but what I don't think I talk to what, them. What do they talk about? The idea of being like, God, what a what a gross stereotype that's been applied to us. Like, I'm down. <laughs> it's not gonna. It's not that bad. Jeez. This this would be a cool thing. This would be a cool scene to have if they actually talked about. You know, what does witchcraft mean to them? What do they hope to do afterwards? What is like you know the connection between the magic and their femininity, their shared feminine experience. Or something that Disney, who's been pushing really you know, hard for this kind of stuff lately, could actually really lean into and it makes sense in the world, but they don't. Um, so, oh Eating well, candles. whatever. Eating candles, true. <laughs> I mean, so, eating any good candles lately? Oh yeah, I had a really good sex on the beach last Tuesday. It was cool. Oh, uh, it went straight to my thighs. Oh, um, <laughs> so... Gay Kid wakes up and he asks Agatha if, hey, Agatha, did you put the sigil on me where I can't, like, say my name or my backstory? Because everyone over there at the campfire, they're having such a good time sharing their backstory and I can't do it and I feel all alone. <laughs> he doesn't really say that. I'm just having fun. Um, Gay Kid asks, um, oh, she's, uh, she says that, um, oh, she says that the sigil doesn't just work on the person it's put on, it also works on the person who cast it. So she doesn't even know if she put the sigil on him, because she wouldn't know herself. Obviously, the workaround is, before you put the sigil, you write a note and leave it on the countertop oh, next to you that says, what an you idea. have cast a sigil on this person for this reason, and here is why. Um, you'll forget this, of course, because it's a sigil. And here is a secret thing that only you yeah, know just uh, to make sure that it's real. And then you do the sigil, and then you read the note, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, it was me. But I'm just a fucking moron, so what do I know? Couldn't you also set up a camera, hit record, do the spell, and then 
you know, be like, you, you, I guess once it's done, you go, Ugh, and you'd be like, no, no, CGI oh. is really, CGI is really good these days. You know, the moon landing and the Bigfoot, it's all, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's the really Bigfoot. Big, so. you, you're talking about well, the has, giant foot that was two. found, right? He has two. In that field in West Essex? Yeah, where they poked it and it flew away. Yeah, the giants, yeah, from the, the Bible, the giants, yeah. Mm hmm. Um, gay kid, he's like, hey, can you lift this sigil on me? I don't like it. And Agatha says that sigils aren't lifted, they're destroyed. Thanks, Agatha. Uh, good, good clarification. She says they are destroyed when they are no longer needed. Well, so, uh, um, uh, um, oh, uh, what? What stupid <laughs> spell is this and who came up with it? No! <laughs> This is the worst part about being a witch, not the talking to goat crap. Mm -hmm. And if you cast... if he... Go ahead. If he cast that on himself, he might have not remembered casting it, but, like, don't you remember the motivation you would have to do it? Yeah, hang on. Like, why would you want to if, lift if it? If ever you cast a spell on yourself that made you forget you cast the spell on yourself, would you continuously cast it? Would you just be like, blah, oh, blah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, blah, <laughs> Oh, Mahler, this is like the going back in time thing. You'll catch yourself in an infinite loop if you ever go back in time. Don't do it. It's really dangerous. Don't think about it. <laughs> you know what? If I get the chance to go back in time, I'm going to say no. Seen too many movies. Maybe yep, I will, though. Catch myself <laughs> in an infinite loop. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it's kind of weird. So I guess if you want to cast a signal uh, or a sigil on someone, I, it lasts until it's no longer needed. All from right. the perspective of the caster, I suppose? But that could be, like, always. If it's something that you don't want to be discovered, it's a permanent curse. Well, and as was mentioned, if you're going to forget the casting of it, do you forget your motive to do so as well? Otherwise, it would lead you to cast it again. And then if you forget the motive to do it, then would the casting <laughs> of it be broken because now there's no motive? There's nothing to, you know? Oh my god, yeah. these could be things that they could actually explore in a cool show. No, I think that if <laughs> yeah. we said this to the writer, they'd be like, like actually... No, shut up. It, it, no. Yeah, be like, how do you get around <laughs> the technicalities of the magic spell? Like, this stuff is really important. If you do this spell, make sure that you leave something for yourself, or make sure that someone knows, so that you don't catch yourself in an infinite loop of trying to cast it over and over because you forgot you already did it. Yeah. Uh, would show that there's actually... Um, blah, no one fucking cares. Let's get through this episode. So, um, oddly enough, Gay Kid is like, hey... What happened to your son? Did you did you really what happened to, what happened to your son? That's a weird question to ask all of a sudden like that and she yep. gets up and leaves. Mhm. Mm uh, Agatha goes and joins the campfire and she shows them a scar on her elbow where she took a needle to the elbow and destroyed the daughters of liberty. I guess that was like a group of witches or something. I don't know. Or angry seamstresses. I don't know. Um Rio says that she had to do something she didn't want to do as part of her job and it hurt someone that she loved and that's her scar like that's her backstory thing which uh, uh -huh. like i said with the context so she's death and she had to end someone's life who needed to be ended that she loved i find that so odd that she would just volunteer that information to these people <laughs> yeah yep. what that's the fuck a weird personal thing to say to these random people they're now, bonding now no now before agatha and rio leave lilia grabs um uh rio's hand and says don't think that that don't think for a second I've forgotten what you said in the sound booth about how you were gonna murder all of us. <laughs> but I, I don't get it. That was the thing they were all worried about before they went on the road anyway. To say like, yeah, I, you've said it in the sound booth now. You're like, what? <laughs> I don't know. What is it? What does it mean for you to be a person who is just traveling along this adventure with someone you believe wants to kill you, and you've had that confirmed, and you just don't do anything about it? But you let her know that you haven't forgot that she said she wants to murder all of you. Which is arguably yeah, even worse, to let them know you're thinking you about it. Think exactly. about that mean thing you said to me about how you're going to kill all of us <laughs> and Agatha's going to steal our power. I guess they're just waiting. Um, I guess so. Yeah, it's weird that nobody mentions this. Nobody brings it up. It's not even like no one says anything. Everyone's I mean, like, oh, your sad backstory. Like, bitch, you said you are going to kill us in there. What's going on? I mean, uh, all these people trust Agatha anyway, so they're just Agatha, stupid. <laughs> they're they canonically stupid. stupid. 
They have not done a good job establishing why they even bother to stick around. But um, let's wrap this episode <laughs> yeah. up. Agatha and Rio, they hug away from the others, but before they kiss, Rio says that gay kid isn't her son, and Agatha leaves. Oh. Credits roll. <laughs> All right. Episode 5, Nearly Darkest there. Hour, Wake Thy Power. We start with a very short flashback to Salem in, I think it's 1693? Um, Agatha's tied up to a post in the middle of a circle of witches, and one of oh, the no, ladies... That, this uh, is the, that this was the WandaVision. The WandaVision, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was I, yeah it's, it's, it is part of WandaVision, but they're reminding us, I think, for an important reason, and because that was like three and a half years ago, it's probably good to remind everybody. Because I think the show is... No, like, sure. It's, it's what a previously is, right? Like, a bonus... If ever there's yeah, this is, relevant this is context... Yeah, this is previously from a different show. Like if, not just this own show. So well, yeah, but if Tony Stark turned up, they might go, I am Iron Man, briefly. <laughs> In the previously. They do that with... This is a broad <laughs> continuity. I am Doctor Doom. Oh, oh yeah. You think I'm Iron Man anymore? And the way you know it's an older scene is because it looks significantly better. I it does look so. better, yeah, than this show, but yeah. whatever. Um, but yeah, the, the flashback that they show at the very beginning is back to Salem in 1693. Um, Agatha's tied up, and there's a circle of witches around her, and they're like, Oh, Agatha, you have betrayed your coven! And they tie her to a post, and they cast magic on her, but she absorbs their power, and then they all turn old and frail and desiccated, and they fall down, and I guess that they is, die. Uh, Agatha's so. meme is she takes your power when you attack her. That's what she does. I guess. Yep, so just shoot her with a fucking gun. Yeah, and be done mean, with it. yeah she'll, do. <laughs> she'll absorb the gun though, and then she'll become Gunnatha. I have become bullet goddess or, or something. I don't know. Stab with her with that knife that you have, and just randomly. Yeah, Caesar. Yeah, that's Caesar. Blood. Her like That'll they work. Caesared Sauron and Caesared Adar. Caesar her. Yeah. <laughs> also, that guy from Rebel Moon. Glug could kill Agatha. We need you, Glug. Justice for Waldrig and Glug. Just... <laughs> Isn't it so sad that the... when season three rolls around, we will not be getting Waldrig or Glug? There's no hope for that. That's so oh, sad. There's nothing. There's nothing left. <sighs> okay, so there's a bunch of animals show up. There's a fox and a raven and a snake, and they are here in the wit in in, in the, the the witch's road. And all these animals are actually the Salem Seven. Ah. They can transmogrify, mm -hmm. transform into animals. Ah. So that's pretty spooky. Um, weird that they're here on the road. I hope that they will give an explanation as to how the witches, <laughs> um, the, the Salem Seven, have arrived here at the road. And I suppose this also means that everybody's journey to the road, it's, um, it is a, like a physical place you go to. <laughs> Um, it isn't like instanced per group that's going through it. There is only one road that is yeah. being. They've used got to at make a, a new TV show called The Salem Seven, where they go on their own road journey and they have to solve trials. <laughs> All and of the them are, like, will be better. It'll be funny as fuck because they're like little demon skeleton goobers. <laughs> they head to the first room and it's like you must make a potion. They're like, oh, how do we do this? Oh fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Wandering around. Yeah. Like, did, Did you drink one? the wine? It's like, I've been poisoned. Oh, of man. course not. That'd be the dumbest fucking <laughs> thing the fuck ever. Would I like, do way that? smarter than the last group. And they, like, Wait. floomp around the house getting the ingredients, but they do it in, like, two minutes. They're like, yes, it was easy. They have to sing that song. <laughs> Salem <laughs> Seven. Down, down the road. Down the witch's road. The, the <laughs> fucking... The road starts giving up in terms of creativity. They just enter a room as a Rubik's Cube. It's like, solve it. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely jamming on the guitars and the piano and one of them's on the triangle and they're just slaying it yeah. it's amazing the hair washing back and forth <laughs> except the voices just sound like their voices but the music's <laughs> actually really great and they do like rock so a guitar rock solo they're like nailing their trials and they catch up to the you know Agatha and shit they're like oh I was actually kind of we can leave fun. this one do you guys want to jam around for a little bit and they're like yeah we got a good thing going you want to yeah. meet at the end of the trials we'll do it we'll each do the trial they're fun bring the instruments <laughs> with us <laughs> okay no more fun no more fun <laughs> <laughs> no more fun okay um uh, Lillian wakes up and she says that the summoning spell left uh, the door open. 
Yeah, okay. All it's right, that's how it works. I Sure. When Agatha killed her coven a long time ago, she spared their young children. How kind. Um, who then became a feral, hive-minded coven belt <laughs> bent on revenge. They, like, what? <laughs> okay, if you say so, show. Sure. Agatha says that the moral is finishing what you start and that mercy is overrated. Okay. Mm. What a cool, great character. Um, I know. So, Gay Kid mentions a Hexenbesson which is like a, a ritual about enchanting sticks to be like brooms you fly on. Uh, uh, and they can use them to fly away and get away from the Salem Seven. Uh, Lillian says that she hates brooms because they are a symbol of witch culture that has been co-opted by the holiday industrial complex, and they represent the domesticity of women. Shut the wow. fuck up. Yeah, it, this is like just an actually just shut the fuck up. You're not doing anything with women here. You're not doing any celebration of femininity. You're just a bunch of catty, stupid bitches whining. I hate you. You are, this show is responsible for my descent into misogyny. Yet another <laughs> level. Oh no, I should get out. No, you need to stay here or else you're doomed. <laughs> I'm gonna save you. I am okay. doomed. Because one so day, if you find you're yourself liking this, shows like this, episode, you'll know it's over. About. Um, so they start getting on. Oh, by the way, it's, it's really a kind of ironic that she mentions the holiday industrial complex when all of that imagery and symbolism and stuff they use in the show at the end and the credits, uh, kind of weird that they lean on it and they do that sort of thing. But then they're like, oh no, it's a culturing what's uh, blow, what's blah, blah, blah. It's cultural appropriation of witches. So they get a bunch of these big sticks and they dress them up a little bit with flowers and stuff sometimes. And they chant in pairs and, Agatha says they all have to fly together or nobody flies at all. So great gay kid goes, gets a big stick, and one of the Salem Seven jumps on him, and then Wu hits her with a stick. And it's need, kind of funny. Like, at this part, I, w I was just thinking to myself, so this is a, a witch who's very angry that her parents were killed by uh, Agatha. Agatha, and so she spent, presumably, centuries. Hundreds of years. Uh, getting mad, and she's become mm -hmm. a creature that goes and jumps Where on people. I turn into a fox sometimes. Like, what? And I have a feeling by the time the end of the show hits, none of the Salem Seven scenes are going to make any sense. They'll, they'll reveal something about them, and it's going to be yep. like, why the fuck were you doing that the whole time then? Mm-hmm. Ugh. It's her with a stick. <laughs> um, it is funny. Wu just smacks her with a stick in this magic show about witches. She just hits her with a stick. And yep. Beats her. Yeah. Uh, and, and that she's on pause for a while um, because they have to finish up the hex and besson ritual. She's waiting um, for the plot. It kind of. She's just on pause. She, don't, don't worry about her. While. But yeah, they cast a little spell. You talk about and... this. I'm going to play a lot of these clips slowly, piece by piece, to so everyone can appreciate how awful the CG is. All right, that's, I'm just letting. Oh uh, yes, you gotta, you gotta show everybody. It's not CG. That's just the distortion effect it's of actually, the magic. It's <laughs> actually unbelievable, and uh, uh, I mean, it feels like it is just a case of yeah, you gotta see it, and then you'll understand. <laughs> oh fuck that Look. bit in particular. That. Yeah, look. Oh, this is awkward. Oh, but hey, it's all practical. It's practical. So mm -hmm. that's that means something, right? Even though it looks, it, it, even though of course this isn't practical, but it looks terrible. Like yeah, the this sticks are real, here. like actual props. I, mean, I would imagine real, but it's green screen. And look at it. <laughs> it looks worse what? than when in ET he <laughs> gets on the bike and floats <laughs> over the moon. It's like yep. it looks. So well, so can I just be that you could tell that they actually I reckon this is darker than it was originally because they were like you gotta bring it down, bring that you darkness in. Dark. This looks look way real, too real bad. bad. <laughs> like, like if you're gonna do a shitty CGI job, just commit to it and show us. <laughs> no, just, what they said I was we that... have to make it. They said we have to make it darker so less people see. And then they were like, "But so few people are already looking at this episode anyway." <laughs> They're like, "I don't care. Make it darker." <laughs> Oh, but sir, now only today. one person yeah. is looking. We blow it the just, I can't believe that they actually considered this acceptable. It's uh, mm. hey, witches on brooms. We got to do it. We're the witch show. Yeah, but like, why does it look so awful? Well, they just don't have much money to use. 
<laughs> How much money did the shark cost? I can Google Five dollars, I guess. Because the, the, the thing that went around is it's the cheapest one, but like I almost don't believe it. Cheaper than Echo? Was it? It has the lowest Ooh. budget of any MCU Disney Plus yeah. series, costing them less than forty million dollars. Did it actually cost? Okay, really, less than that. Yeah. I, I mean, good for them. They're yeah. finally bringing the budgets down. I mean, a little. Yeah, but like, if this is what you get, then I don't know. Maybe spend a little bit more money. Like, <laughs> you know no. what I mean? Like, I, this is not acceptable. This would just be a matter of rushing it, I guess, because like forty million should be able to pay for this. You would think so. It looks like ass. <laughs> this is something it looks terrible. Um, no, but um, how could it have been rushed? Didn't they it shoot is as the bad as it is inventive. This show, this show, like had principal photography in twenty twenty three. How are they rushed? Mm. I can't. Help I have you. many names. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's no way. Look at how it's so. It looks so bad. No, it looks great. Look, they're flying over the moon or past mm -hmm. the moon. <laughs> But remember, the holiday industrial complex is co-opting witch culture with this imagery. But <laughs> Disney is... Uh, whatever. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, I don't know. The color grading as well, like, actually hurts my eyes. It's like I have to actually strain to, like, discern all of the information on screen because so much of it blends together because of yeah. the color correction. Yep. It's, it's actually, like, kind of mad. Fuck, but whatever. Yeah, but it's like it's like Mola said, they probably darkened it so that the that it didn't look as terrible and it still looks really I bad. Would guarantee it. They could have shone the moon's light as loud as they wanted to, but they didn't. Yeah, like I don't even know. Moon, what, it's what, too like loud. just commit to how bad it looks, which it does. It looks really bad. And I just <laughs> don't understand why it was like how that's even possible, <laughs> I suppose. That's all. Oh, some of these shots are so funny. I, I could honestly imagine someone going, oh, yeah, but it's like vintage, you know? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't no, really No, I don't know what... I don't... I don't know what you mean. Yeah, I don't know what <laughs> but... you mean. First off, no, I don't even know what you mean. <laughs> well, I guess all I mean by that is the idea of, like, you know, how older stuff would... It's just they had way less means of, you know, like the whole idea of, like, projecting something onto the background or, you know, like, old green screen stuff. But, like, I don't know. That, like, nah... No, this is no. shitty CGI and screen. Yeah, because like Return of the Jedi looks better with the uh with the yep. with the chase and um on uh Endor. That looks better yeah. than this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm I'm kind of stunned by how bad it looks. Um and I, I, I don't know, it's just uh but like I've not I've not generally been impressed with the way that the show looks anyway. Um mm -hmm. like a lot of it, it's just like, yeah, I mean I guess the sets are okay, sure, but like there's nothing particularly, like, interesting going on a lot of the time with, like, cinematography or anything. And, of course, in a scene like this, goddamn, like... Yeah. Sorry, I it's, it's I really is stunning. Like, I, I am yeah, a little bit bored that, uh, that, like, a Marvel... Because, again, even, even if it, what, costs, like, $40 million to make, that's still, like... That's not a cheap show, <laughs> like, even still, by the standards of television. And this is not particularly a hard... Sh like a difficult shot to nail. It's not like there's a dragon or anything. You're just flying on no, no, a broom. Yeah. Yeah. It looks so bad. Look at how it look at how it's actually difficult to discern the characters in the background because of how dark they made the entire shot. I mean they do <laughs> they do they do they do. Like, if you're actually a creative person, there's so many ways you can do this without, like, it, it's just at all using up money. You could have, like, made it animated or something, like, used a creative ways to sort of, um, sort of, uh, what's... Yeah, that's right, especially if yeah, you don't have the term. money, you know, like, you, you can, yeah. there are other options available to you. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I just, man, it's so bad. It's so dark too. Look at this shot. Yeah, Jeez, it's like so look at how dark. hard it is to tell. Like you have to actually strain your eyes to discern <laughs> all of the characters from the background. So bad. <laughs> look, look at what this. Is, what is this supposed to be? Wait, I can't see it. Oh, that's Aubrey Plaza. Look at her go. And look, she's laughing because she's crazy. She's a crazy that's one, yeah. Aubrey Plaza. She's a wacky. She's a wacky character, a ain't crazy she? Crazy asshole, yeah. 
I don't know. I guess it's just like it feels like she kind of gets typecast, right? Well, it's I, like, yeah, you're like. I would reflect person, it on both sides. Crazy. I'd say you're right that she does get uh, typecast, and the writing's usually failing. But I would say this sort of performance has been a little stereotypical, hasn't it? And um, the yeah. easy comparison we're almost lucky for it is the penguin. We have an actually at times scary volatile woman who seems like she'd be fucking crazy and we already know the things that she's done mm -hmm. essentially define oh, her as crazy i guess it's funny because i when you said we've got the penguin i'm like yeah and colin farrell is like unrecognizable <laughs> it's like oh wait no that's just one of the great performances in that show <laughs> i can't wait so that that season is finished so i can actually watch it I'm waiting. I, mean, I hope I can fully far. recommend it once it's over. Yes. Yeah. I sure hope so, but I'm, I'm feeling optimistic I after too, those yeah. first three episodes. That's good. Anyway, back to, back to Agatha. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, so, yeah, they, they they fly on their brooms, and gay kids like, gosh, why didn't we do this all along? Um, that's <laughs> a really good question. Nobody mentions any. That is a really good question you shouldn't have asked if you're a writer for the show, because now everyone's thinking about it instead of just most people. <laughs> um, but yeah, whatever. The brooms start to turn downward, and the road once that like pulls them back to the road. They can still use the brooms, they just can't go up really high. So they really so should have done this from the beginning so they don't have to walk everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, they, they should have done this from the beginning. Um, uh, I, oh, I even have it in my notes. Yeah, Rio cackles like a crazy witch. Ha ha ha. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, she's she's nutty. Look at her go. <laughs> Wacky. So uh, one of the Salem, se I, I put a, a Salem Seven is on the road. <laughs> a Salem Seven is on the road, and they're like, oh no! And it screams at them, and it summons a whole bunch of bugs. Uh, but they go, they go past her and they run into the, the next house, which is the next trial, and they get in just in time, and they're okay. And it's 80s. This one's 80s. Yep, this is like an 80s cabin Ooh. attic. They're doing an 80s thing. sleepover. 80s, yeah. 80s oh, wow. sleepover. Boy, sleep sounds good right now, but we can't do that. We have to finish episode 5, um, which is Darkest Hour, Wake Thy Power. So, oh, yeah, it's like a cabin sleepover party. Here, hey. um, the gay kid mentions that he has dropped his spell book while on the broom. So hopefully that it will not be needed later. Probably will be. But now we know that he doesn't have it anymore. Um, now, this is Agatha's trial, Rio says, because there's a blood moon outside of the window. Ooh. And that is when the veil between the living and the dead is at its thinnest. Ooh, Ooh I don't know what that means. So. A random gust of wind plops over a Ouija board copyright Hasbro instead of having it just like sitting on a table or something for them. It's just like uh, it just falls over. Uh, here it is. It's not even upside down. It just gets blown over. These are Ouija board copyright Hasbro. So, yeah, gay kid thumbs through the manual for it after the digital watch timer on their uh, arms. It has like a it's another timer 30 minutes beep beep and then it starts counting oh down God, 30 it's, minutes it's analog digital yeah uh yeah gay kid goes through the manual and he had this is this part was really weird so 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 weird to the point where i like mentioned it in my notes he picks up the manual for the ouija board copyright has bro and even though the top of the board is like written obviously in english and everything um the um he has to flip through the uh chinese and spanish translation before he gets to the very last page of the manual where it's in english that's weird because english is almost always going to be the first one and then all of the other languages are going to be after it but because these things are distributed in predominantly english speaking areas the english ones not on the road the bitch I okay. It just it was really fucking weird that they specifically had him say I have to flip through the Spanish and Chinese to get to the English one on the last page. Very strange. But he reads out the rules of the Ouija board. Copyright Hasbro. Ouija board. One. Do spirit board. Do not use the board alone. That is the first rule. Don't use it alone. Rule two. Don't speak over each other. Rule three. Uh. Uh. Bu -bu 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 
don't taunt the spirits. It's very important you don't taunt the spirits. Uh, rule four, don't <clears throat> ask about death. Oh. And rule five, always end your session with goodbye. And rule six, do not under any circumstance remove your hand from the planchette, which is like the little thing you touch with a magnifying glass on it in the middle. Mm -hmm. Don't do it, because if you remove your hand from the planchette, it will release a spirit. Damn. And that's really bad, I suppose. Uh, what, so, so, like, yeah. the, the whole say goodbye, what if you say see ya, or, like... Too flippant, um, too flippant, they don't like that. Oh, but right? what if it's a really casual ghost spirit? Uh, Those right. ones will like that. What if you're like, see you later. Uh, and also, what what if uh, what if the ghost they they got in a car crash and it gave them brain damage to where the only <laughs> way to say goodbye that they recognize is see you later. Oh, I thought you were gonna say I thought you were gonna say that the only way they recognize goodbye is bye. <laughs> no, you I was gotta really say that, say that if you true. don't want the spirit to come back. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You're summoning the ghost of Helen Keller. So. <laughs> um, listen, we can't be we can't make fun of the disabled. So. They all put their hands on the planchette and they begin their little summoning party. All right. Agatha asks who? Oh, this is the funniest part of the show. Oh my God. I'm so excited that we're here. We're so, I'm so excited that we're here. This made me laugh so hard. My face hurt. I know okay, what this I'm, is I'm now. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Oh my God. <laughs> Go right ahead. I'm scared. Uh, okay. All right. So they all put their hands on the planchette to begin the summoning spirit session, communicating with the dead. Now, Agatha asks, oh, are there spirits here? Oh, who are we communing with? And then the planchette starts to spell out M-R-S-H-A-R-T, which instantly, as, I, as it was being spelled out, I... I thought that it spelled out Mr. Shart. <laughs> when it's supposed to say Mrs. Hart, I thought it was Mr. Mr. Shart. I smiled when I was watching the episode I... because of that. <laughs> I knew, because I, I, I figured I Mrs. Hart was, but, but I, I did know it. I was like, it's kind of funny. It looks like Mr. Shart. <laughs> so I was watching this episode and I was like, is this because I forgot about Mrs. Hart because I always called her Sharon, her actual name. So <laughs> when it spelled out Mr. Shart, I thought it was like, is Agatha fucking around with them? Is this allowed in Dis would Disney have Shart? Hey man, you don't know. It could be a real spooky writing. ghost called Mr. Shot who'd shot on people. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you summon a ghost named Mr. Shart, you need to end the seance as soon as possible, because he's known for one thing, and it is not pleasant. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Mr. Shart. Oh, okay. We've, we've calmed down. Oh, we've come. That was really funny. I, I really enjoyed that. I wonder. I wonder. So it spells out Mrs. Hart. So <laughs> um, weird that uh, it obviously uh, now this is Agatha. She's she's being jokey. She's making a joke about it. Um, you can tell because it is Mrs. Hart instead of Sharon, which is what it would be if it was actually her. Um but, uh, right yeah. consistency. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Hey. Uh, so I think it's a mistake. I think it's just fuck up. Fuck up, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, Lily's hand slips off the planchette, and then Agatha becomes possessed by Sharon, who does a voice, but it's just an act for funsies. She's mocking the dead person she's responsible for killing. Um, yeah, Agatha's a real bitch. And everyone's like, that's not funny, Agatha. And she says, I thought it would be. So they try again. Uh, now, a TV in the back is playing static, and the lights <gasps> flicker. Who is with us tonight? Agatha asks. And then the board spells out D-E-A-T-H. <gasps> Death. Oh, my God. And then she asks, what do you want? And it spells P-U-N-I-S-H. Punish. 
ah, who do you want to punish? And then the spirit board types out A G A T H A over and over. Agatha, Agatha, Agatha. Ah! <laughs> it's not this exciting in the show, but um, yeah. Agatha pulls her <laughs> Agatha pulls her hand off the planchette, and there's a shrieking noise in the house. And then Jen yells, "Punish Agatha!" And the voices stop. <gasps> Oh my goodness. Jen says that this is the trial. They have to punish Agatha because Agatha's a fucking evil bitch and she deserves it. <gasps> as if none of the others deserve punishment as well. Yeah, they're all <laughs> terrible and stupid, but Agatha deserves the most punishment. She's like an actual serial killer murderer person. She's actually evil. Um, something the show, I don't know, like really recognizes. Like they, they kind of play around the idea, but she's a murderer. She has killed a lot of people. Agatha is evil. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, Jen goes to get a rope, uh, I guess, oh, no. to tie her up, I hope, right? <laughs> uh, but Agatha has disappeared. <gasps> Where is she? The lights go out. There's a breathing sound in the room. And then everyone gets out their lights and they look around in the pitch black. Where could Agatha be? Way she was here just a moment ago. <gasps> and then something drips onto Gay Kid. I don't even <laughs> want to think about what it actually is. Um, and then... <laughs> and then he puts the flashlight up to the top of the cabin. Oh, spooky Agatha! Uh, oh my goodness, she has a floopy face. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she she's on the ceiling, and then she's all pale, pale and weird, and she jumps down and she starts convulsing around like Suspiria. And Agatha, it seems like she's possessed, and she jumps on Jen and starts choking Jen. Um, and then when they turn on the power, Agatha disappears. <gasps> oh my goodness gracious, she doesn't like the light, maybe. I don't know. Um, but a strange mist appears by the little staircase in the cabin. It's a ghost. <gasps> it's Evanora Harkness of the Salemites. Oh. This is who possessed Agatha a moment ago. The ghost said Very... that her... It's weird. It's actually weird, and I don't know what we're supposed to take from this. If she's the one who possessed Agatha, why did she try and strangle Jen? Why was she being all spooky? Why I don't know. She, yeah, was she just doing it for... Oh, maybe... Maybe maybe it was like he was... Maybe it was Mr. Shart. <gasps> oh my god, Mr. Shart! He's here! They have, he's to, they, the they have to, like, excise Mr. Shart <gasps> so they could get to Evanora oh, no, Harkness. Oh no, the Shart is coming from the room! Well, you did say something ah! dripped onto Gay Kid, right? Oh no, that's the shard! Gay Kid got a shard on Mr. him. Mr. Shard and his signature, his <laughs> oh, titular his signature shard drip. Oh no, this is what he's known for. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, my as, you, as you can see, we've deteriorated. <laughs> it was and, inevitable. And what would happen if Mr. Shard possessed <laughs> <laughs> a real person? They would just. Go around, <laughs> hanging out in the ceiling and sharting on people. <laughs> what I like do, birds in the trees. <laughs> They'd be up there just waiting with their butt hanging out for a. <laughs> if ever there was like a, a ghost meeting passerby. of all ghosts and stuff, Mister Shaw would just not be popular. <laughs> He'd be like, "Yeah, my thing isn't that cool, I guess." <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, but he would be scary at least. I guess it's, it it's more me. gross oh, than no, scary. It's... Like. <laughs> So no, I would be plenty scary, scared. <laughs> what is in that? The chat said Sharknado. <laughs> Dude, oh, I've got the no. perfect emoji for when you're dealing with Mr. Shart in your house. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to show everybody. You, have keep to. Your, you gotta make sure you keep your mouth closed. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta show them. <laughs> That's all of our faces when Mr. Shart is around. Where is he? Is he oh, there, there he is again. <laughs> oh, well, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Shark, what are you doing up there? Oh, oh wait, no, I know. Never mind. Don't answer that question. <laughs> You're going to oh. take your umbrella in your house. <laughs> Can't we have a normal seance with the Ouija board where we summon someone who isn't Mr. Shark? <laughs> Not all oh. the ghosts can love Mr. Shark. You get Mr. Stabby yeah, next time, else. you're like, thank fuck it's Mr. Thank Stabby. God. All he does is with a knife, he stabs you. It's it's oh. much normaler. It's nice to have a nice, simple, classic murderer and not Mr. Shard. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you just try to have a family meal. You just use flop, 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 flop. Hey, can you stop sharding, Mr. Shark? No. Oh, you're like, damn it, Mr. Shark. You can shot in every room in the house, not this room. <laughs> like, we're, we're I trying. got shart my Caesar salad. <laughs> I got oh shart my, my casserole, and now I can't find oh, it. I no. looked away. Oh, no. Oh, well, the whole thing, so we gotta throw it all out. You've ruined it, oh. Mr. Shart. I hope you're happy. Oh, no. We worked hard on this dinner, Mr. Shart, and then you <laughs> sharted on it. You'd never be able to make a, sh like a chocolate pudding or anything. <laughs> no. You'd have to have, like, an umbrella. Yeah, a little mini umbrellas for all the food. <laughs> Parasol for the kitchen. Every once in a while, when you're like making the lasagna, you hear that little where oh. it, it hits the it's the umbrella, and you're like, "This is gross," but at least the umbrella. When you ask for like the exorcist, the exorcism to take place, you're on like you're on the list. Be pretty low down because it's like we got to deal with ones that are killing people, dude. It's like, yeah, I know, but I've been on I've been on the list for like three years. He's still here. <laughs> I feel like you please. <laughs> Can we please deal with Mr. Shard? <laughs> we have to get him out of my Deal house. with him. <laughs> I can't deal with this. It's too stressful. He, Try to write your novel and he keeps shotting on the page. He keeps shitting on the... Yeah, he shoots on the... He shots on the typewriter. <laughs> I was like, oh, jeez. And remember, it's not just a shit. It's a shart, so you hear it every time. It and then he grabs it. <laughs> It's like the Telltale Heart. I already picture it animated, star. like, he the does it. And you... It's the Telltale Shark! <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very... the beating of the hideous shark! <laughs> it's the trembling of the hideous butthole! <laughs> become so accepted because i picture animated the guy who likes his work is shot on he just like casually picks up the spray and then the tissue wipes it away puts it in the bin carries on with his life <laughs> it just happens you know, he probably constantly. has another he has another 20 22 minutes before just about... again. <laughs> get shot <laughs> oh so it's not on chat <laughs> Get shot. Get shot. I'm, just I'm just imagining the opening scene of him walking through all the doors, but he's kind of awkwardly shuffling through. So he's trying to hold in the shit. Yeah, he's <laughs> open up, yeah. open up. See, one of the doors opens. He's like, oh shit. Then he leans against the wall. He would, be, <laughs> he would be secret agent number two, Maxwell Shards. <laughs> and then you see it like <laughs> slinking out of his pants. <laughs> <and grizzling No. laughs> Are you saying we need Mike Flanagan to make a show about Mr. Shot? That's right. Yes. Uh, Shardy's like a melody. And... Okay. <laughs> All right. We need to, let's take a moment, reset ourselves. Yes. My abs hurt. <laughs> Mr. Shart is gone. He's no longer here in the house. He's returned to the spirit world. We have to return to the real world and talk about Agatha. We need to wrap this up. Then go home. Okay. So, the ghost that has possessed Agatha is Evanora Harkness of the Salemites. And the ghost said that her coven risked everything to kill Agatha and that all of you are fools to join her. The ghost says that they must finish the witch's road without Agatha. Ooh. They must leave Agatha with me, the ghost. Ooh. Agatha asks, Mom, how come you hate me? And then she replies that Agatha was born evil. I should have killed you the moment you were born. He's right. <laughs> Which seems Agatha accurate. has not made much of an effort in her life to disprove the theory. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. And, and it's like, she's crying. It's like, dude, you're like, you suck. Like, not one hour ago, you got this innocent lady killed. Like, and it's like, oh, geez, oh, she hurt your feelings? Like, get out of here, shut you're up. A, you, you're a psycho murderer, killer, or power stealer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, this seems to be pretty, accu pretty accurate. Agatha has been a cruel, mean, backstabbing, callous, she's a murdering, lying witch. Uh, she seems to have no desire whatsoever to repent or make amends or change her ways. Um, I'm with the ghost on this one. Now, when mm -hmm. the ghost possesses Agatha again, Wu casts a magic spell with her hands. 
She can do that now, and she casts her magic spell on the ghost, which is possessed Agatha, and it repels the ghost of Evanora Harkness out of Agatha's body. But then Agatha uses this as a way to start sucking out the power from Wu, who starts turning older and becomes more and more desiccated and wrinkly by the moment. It is like mm -hmm. pissing. You can't just stop casting magic, I guess. Um, the gay kid goes to the Ouija board, copyright Hasbro, because it's starting to choose letters on the ground. And he asks, oh, who are you? And then the board says, well, it speaks out or, or it types out. Nicholas Scratch. Which um, is the dead son or something? Right? Yeah, earlier on, there was like a room in her house that was like a kid's room, and it oh. belonged to someone named Nicholas Scratch. It was in like the first episode. I, 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 yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah this building for the dark hold or whatever. Yeah. That's the thing you need to be reminded again. Yeah, that's what Agatha did. So, like, I don't know, man. <laughs> like,. I don't really care if she's there crying and having a bad day and having a little <laughs> suck. Everyone's like, saying oh, Nicholas Shaw. Me. <laughs> yeah. No, right. no, no, we cannot devolve into madness again. We have to press uh, forward. We're so close. I can uh, taste none of them stopped this freedom. power suck from happening, even though they all know what it means and they all even go like, no, like, they, why not fucking. Tackle hit her, her with a stick, hit her yeah. with a bottle, yeah. punch her, yeah, kick her. Yeah, you just sort of stab stand her. There and watch. Yeah, you could give her a good yeah. stab, shot on her. Kill her. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, the timer on all of their uh, watches starts beeping. It, it goes off as Gay Kid yells, Nicholas Scratch. <laughs> and then everything, <laughs> and then Mama Stop sounds in the air. That's a voice. Mama Stop. Um, and the attic opens up. And Alice Wu is left all wrinkly and drained and gray um, on the floor. Gay Kid says that she was trying to protect you, Agatha. But Agatha, you don't deserve it. But Agatha says, oh, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to suck out her power. I don't know. It looks um... like you did, guys. It looks like you were having a good time as well. Yeah, because the ghost was clearly not in you. We saw it get, you know, knocked yeah, so out of you. And also, you're like Agatha. That. You're yeah, evil. Yeah. And this is what you want. Mm -hmm. Um... How, why, why should we care? Um, like, they've talked about her forever how she wants to kill them and stuck all their power, and then she finally does it almost by accident, and she's like, now we're mad. It's like, yeah, yeah well. Okay. <laughs> what anyway, happened? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, Wu is dead. This is the end of Wu. That's she's it. dead. Yeah, that's the end. She's lying on the floor, and she's dead. She's done. Bye. Wu is dead. Goodbye, Alice Wu. Goodbye. I remember the time we <laughs> sang that song, and you. she finally defeats the demon curse over her, and she dies right after it. So that's tragic. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so Agatha, after they leave the uh, 80s sleepover house and are back on the road, Agatha claims to, uh, to Gay Kid that she just couldn't control it, but they obviously don't believe her, because, you know, of course they don't. She's evil. This is what she wants. <clears throat> Yep. And they start they start to walk away from her. But the gay kid, he asks, "So, is that what it's like to be a witch, to hurt other people to serve your own agenda? Ooh. He's not going to be that. He's not going to be like that." And then Agatha laughs and whispers in a really creepy voice, "Are you sure? <laughs> You're so much like your mother." <laughs> I don't Okay. I don't who does she I guess I, she, I guess thinks, she so knows she... now for some reason that he's Wanda's son. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why. What happened? Yeah, I've got no clue. Um, but yeah, she tells him to come, pet. Uh, and Jen and Lilia grab Agatha because Gay Kid is casting like a little blue spell with his hands. Mm. And then the, the two witches who I guess are like enthralled by this in the most literal sense... Um, they throw her off of the road into the sinking mud that almost got Sharon at the beginning. And then she sinks down into it. And then Gay Kid flings those two into the mud. And all three of them oh. sink down into the mud. Because what? it turns out he's a spooky spellcaster himself. And then it shows his face and he has this circlet on his head. Like his mumsley. <laughs> yeah, so that's the end of the episode. This is such a terrible shot. Like, why would anyone care? <laughs> I don't understand. It looks, you look so gay. It's, 
look, he's he's got power where you didn't think he did. Doesn't that I didn't change think he existed. everything? Yeah, well, that's the th it's, it's such a just, what do you think the audience does with this? Um, okay. <laughs> like, everyone is out of character in this, in this last third of the episode. I just episode. think it's so funny that they all reestablished, yeah, we're not surprised, that's what Agatha does. It's like, why are you here? If you believe all she's mm -hmm. gonna do is kill and steal your power, like, what? We never really got the answer to that, but yes, uh, he's reached his queen status, I guess. Okay. So. Yeah. So, wow. How about that? All right. That's that is the first half of Agatha. Agatha what's the show called? All Agatha along. House of No oh, Agatha House all of along. Darkness. That's what it used to be called. Uh, uh among other names, because I think there was that. There was Agatha Coven of Chaos as well. That what were all the names? Expert, now, right? actually, now I want to know what were all of the names that they went through for this. They say Agatha. Oh, that's the worst name because this doesn't have anything to do with her being behind everything. Uh, well, and also she did. She wasn't behind everything all along. Also, so that's the a name lie is too, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> not so, only uh, does she not it, behind oh, everything, she wasn't. Oh, behind. okay. Yeah. So here's. So it was a uh, man. They, they actually went through like so many titles. <clears throat> so it was initially announced Agatha House of, House of Harkness. Uh, and okay. then it was renamed to Agatha Coven of Chaos. Then it was renamed to Agatha Darkhold Diaries. Then it was retitled Agatha the Lying Witch with Great Wardrobe. Fuck off. Uh, but maybe it was maybe Actually, that was fuck off. But maybe that might have been a joke, apparently. Even though apparently it got released on the Marvel Twitter. So <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then and then and then finally Agatha all along. Well, is that, that, was, is that supposed that, that to be a self-aware meme of it was always going to be Agatha all along, it was Agatha all along, it's just those names would throw you I, off? I, I, absolutely, they changed their mind, for sure. Well, what's funny <laughs> is that several of the ones you suggested are, the, as alternatives are better than Agatha all along. Yeah, well, Agatha Coven all Chaos along is, is probably like, the Coven of Chaos totally is pretty solid. I would say Agatha all along is the most desperate of them all, because it's yeah, the Agatha one that Cop. kind of yeah. reminds you of that show that people still bafflingly hold in high regard, WandaVision, and that song. When, again, it's like, well, Agatha all along, what do you mean? that there's the, Not only is it not that story, but the song didn't even make any sense. She didn't do anything. Like, all she did was sort of show up and troll, but Wanda was the one who did everything. Wanda created the hex. Wanda trapped all the people. Even Agatha pointed that out, that she didn't even do anything in terms of, uh, like, all she did was make them say things that messed with her. It's just a dumb name. It's stupid. What do you mean your work is done? You didn't do anything. <laughs> no matter what, no one would watch this. Oh, well, okay, so apparently Marvel essentially claimed that it was orchestrated to mess with fans. That's what they said. Sure. No, the name, mess with the fans? Like, mess the, with the humanity. Cha the changing titles were what quote, quote what I don't know what the, this, this all we can, <laughs> Mess yeah. with fan. It was, uh, they announced in an upfront presentation that the official title was Agatha all along and released a video showing that the changing titles were, quote, orchestrated by Agatha as a way of messing with Marvel fans. God, stop it. Sit down. <laughs> I, no, I definitely get the impression that the changing titles was because they were actually going back and forth on what it should be called. That's, yep. that's definitely what I would believe. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, what a terrible Oof. show. Well, what yes, I, that's, I feel like uh, five of nine, correct? Yes. So, so we're yes. over halfway, and you will be fetched a second episode on the second of November, probably. Yeah, when it's all done. I, I feel like the thing that I would want to, you know, note because it feel, it, I don't know, it feels like the narrative that's being run for this show is, oh, it's so refreshing. Oh, it feels like Marvel is finally starting to know what to do with television. This writing is like the same kind of writing that's been plaguing all of these phase four and five productions throughout the whole thing really oh, yeah, bizarre like in right in. inconsistent stupid characters dumb plot meandering plot of just like man it feels like we are just sort of dragging through this because we don't know how to fill out all of the time that's available um and terrible world building it's like the same thing mm -hmm. just that it has noticeably lower production values in terms of like the amount of money that they had it doesn't yeah. really mean much to me that you have practical sets and practical props and everything if the writing still sucks. 
It's just not worth anything to me. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, I guess they worked hard on stuff that this time didn't get painted over with CGI. But, like, for what? For this? For this. I don't know. Like, it's, yeah, I mean, I guess so. Um, and, and I suppose the thing is, whether this show succeeds or fails, whatever that even looks like, it doesn't even really, like, address or do anything for Marvel's problems. I don't see the, <clears throat> Like, if this show, if it somehow turned out that it was really, really successful... I don't see how it really addresses your problems because you can't make more of this and then expect to be successful for, like what people are actually wanting to watch in Marvel Marvel films and shows. I just don't see that the audience that this could attract would be an audience that would translate to watching Fantastic Four. You know, I just don't see that being the case. Um, I'm curious. I'll uh, I'll ask chat and then anyone here who doesn't know the answer, you're welcome to to give an answer as well. But uh, the announcement of Joe Locke's character in Agatha all along being a gay kid being unveiled as Wiccan, the son of Wanda Maximoff. As his a name post, is Wiccan? Yes. Well, I think his name is uh, Billy, right? That's the... Well, he's, like he's, his... he's Wiccan is the... Is yeah, the, yeah, the superhero the fluke yeah, yeah, name. The, superhero yeah. name. Um, <laughs> the fluke name. <laughs> that is a fluke name. Wiccan. So, that announcement in the form of a tweet... Considering this show and everything we've talked about, uh, everyone give a guess, you know, just number and amount, whatever. Uh, how many likes a post like that would get on Twitter? As long as well, you don't I know. know. So I should, I can, uh, yeah, keep it to myself then. Rags and, and this is from if, which uh, account? Uh, pop base. Yeah, what was the question? The question is, how no... many likes would a post that says, Joe Locke's character in Agatha All Along has been unveiled as Wiccan, son mm -hmm. of Wanda Maximoff? Oh, no, oh, God. I feel like nothing could be anything. Me. I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with something really high. I'm going to say, uh, 37.6 thousand likes. All right. Not so. Okay. Mm, 100K, whatever. Holy fuck. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, freak, I know it's a difficult question. Could you imagine what you would have guessed? Uh, could I imagine, so, when you say the announcement, it's from, like, a, like, a film Twitter kind of account, right, that just sort of relays news for, uh, for, I'll be completely for honest. mainly... I don't recognize the account, which to me is an important oh, element okay. for, like, okay. you know, how well I would have guessed this to churn, because if I don't recognize uh, them... I mean, if you wanted my real guess, like my real earnest guess, it would not be that high. Um, it'd be it'd be like maybe five thousand, five thousand or ten thousand. That would be my guess. To give an idea it, of where I'm at, guess. um, I would likely have guessed something like a ten k likes. And when I find out, let's say it's ten k, I would have been like, "That's still too high." I think, but whatever. Not not in the sense that I think it it doesn't reflect. Uh, people's enjoyment of the episode. I just don't think that many people are even aware that this shit is happening or what it means, you know? Like, so th that's the engagement yeah, aspect. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the truth is, it has 121k likes. Holy shit. Really? Yeah, so, like, I don't know what I'm meant to do with that, really. It's like, uh... It's just kind of like a, hmm, really? Okay. I, I mean, I just... This is one of those moments okay. where I was like, I just don't believe that. I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> It's just no way, right? Like, how I, the I think the problem is it's just that like, when you understand the idea of um the sort of general amount of interest that you will see and what it relate like you you remember when House of the Dragon was coming out and people you know for stuff like Ray Nice and, and stuff like that it's like yeah that, that was getting like a lot of engagement it wasn't getting over like a hundred thousand oh yeah not this that's like one of the most popular shows in the world well and I, I don't know I've seen barely any posts on the bot ridden Twitter the bot infested new twitter that this is like easy to do and orchestrate i would imagine well that's so that i mean that's where i'm drifting toward is like i can't i just can't believe that this could get to that height of engagement naturally quote unquote like i said i barely see any posts about um penguin well, I suppose the thing is, is and... um, when you bear in mind wow it's interesting you say penguin because you can compare right with when they announced how many views episode one got relative to other disney plus shows it was like comparable to uh, Acolyte, which was cancelled because not enough people were watching it. When you got the um, the Samba TV um, rankings, which aren't 100% reliable in terms of telling you any given thing, but they are interesting oh. to look at in terms of the standard uh, uh, top streaming programs for the average household. And um, hang on, I'll give you the image as well. 
It's I guess number the one part would be though is that they're in, they're like impo- they're going to be more impartial than Disney when trying to find ways to explain how they're. Yeah, they're not loyal to fucking well. anything. As in, like, yeah, they, they're not is... pushing Penguin to do it. Like, on, and honest, if I'm being completely honest, I wouldn't have known for sure that Penguin would get this popular. But having seen it, I'm like, oh, I can I can get why it might start to tick up. Yes. Um, yes, I agree. Because I want to see it. Because I hear it's really good. So well, I want to check it positive, out. It's got positive buzz. It's got good word of mouth. Well, and it's uh, and it is Batman related. As you'll notice, uh, it's funny to laugh at Rings of Power being sixth. You're like, ha ha. Yeah. You like, you know, <laughs> that'll be God soon enough. But the the real notable thing is, wait a minute. There's Where's no Agatha. Agatha? <laughs> <laughs> Agatha's yeah. not even here. Like nobody cares. I feel like wow. The tweet. Shit. Um... It sounds dystopian, kind of unrealistic. It sounds like that, but I'm pretty sure the bots, like coming from a country where like propaganda and Russian machine is so, it just, it's so successful here. I will not be shocked if even this 100K is achieved through bots and such fra- fraudulent, whatever, witchery there, Disney might. Oh, on theme, huh? Well, uh, it, we all know way, that bots are drowning Twitter um, in almost yeah, it's fucking you can awful. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's 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 just a matter like how much people are talking about a show on social media is an imperfect metric for gauging how popular something is. But at the same time, when a lot of people are watching something and enjoying it, they will talk about it. Um, and when they're not talking about it bro- broadly and it doesn't like make its way to you and you just don't hear that much organic um, discussion surrounding something, it just makes you wonder. That's all. That's really it. It just makes you sort of be like, hmm, hmm, I'm not so sure about that. Mm-hmm. Especially when it is a case of um, even when Disney was talking about how many views the first episode got in the first week relative to other Disney Plus shows, it wasn't like amazing. Um, what was it? What was the figure for for this show in terms of viewership? Wasn't it like uh like something like nine million in the first week? Oh right, yeah the um the tweet that was very proud to announce the success of oh well Agatha. yeah yeah and a lot of people going like ha ha yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah. bizarre they were they were like celebrating that Agatha is is breaking out people are loving it and stuff and it's like what are we talking about those yeah, numbers so are bad. The yeah. first episode of Agatha All Along attracted 9.3 million views globally within its initial seven days of streaming. That's not good. That was the... Well, yeah, I guess I guess the interesting... Uh, the, the thing is, the number on its own is meaningless. The real number is, yeah, but compared to other things, how well did it do? Because well, uh, like yeah. you said, the number is like, okay, is that really good for a streaming service that has over 100 million active subscribers worldwide? Uh, in a week, right? So not even like on the night that it premiered, but over the course of a week, it's like, well, I don't know if that's good or bad, right? The only thing that's going to help me understand if it's good or bad is how did it do relative to other uh, comparable television shows? Um, well, and to go back yeah, and like, forth uh, on the, what conversation happened, so 9.3 on in total over seven days, and then it was the response was, yeah, but rings uh, the Acolyte got 11 million in five so more in less time, and that got cancelled is the obvious and that subtext got to that. Now, of course, it costs more money but uh, to make. The Acolyte costs more money, but still. Well, so that, uh, funnily enough, was not even a, a, an argument I saw people talking about as much as, um, yeah, but, uh, you know, that's Star Wars, that's that's a lot of... St- like, Agatha is just a, you know, a side character, side character thing. This is actually impressive for that. As it's though, a Marvel um, studio production. Well, as though Acolyte was marketing with fucking Yoda or something. That's not what happened. Yeah, uh, yeah like I, I, I don't know. It's, it's it, it, I mean, the, the the cope, right? It's like I don't know, guys. It's like, well, so yeah, I, it's um. I don't know what are the because without proper statistics from Disney, which we'll never get, we have to go off of like a lot of uh, engagement and and how we talk about this stuff and what people say and where things are posted and just Agatha's practically a ghost show. It's amazing. Nobody's well, fucking talking it's, about yeah. it other than those weird 100k plus posts, which I still <laughs> yeah. don't understand at all. And then, uh, like I said, a lot of the people that we invited to this episode were just like, I ain't watching past fucking episode two, or I haven't even considered watching it. Because that's the vibe. That's what yeah. Marvel have done. Painful. Mm-hmm. We're learning who our real friends are this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. I don't know. It's, it, it's uh, I, I, I don't know. The, the whole thing just seems like 
just a bizarre idea, right? A bizarre project that that just sort of got that that got approved in an era where Marvel. This was still when Marvel thought that they could basically do anything that they want and they would make a lot of money. Uh, but that era has kind of ended a while ago at this point. You know, Ant Man mm -hmm. was a notable failure. Uh, well, it was no, Ant Man didn't make his money back, but I mean, even then there had been some before where it's like, ooh, shit, okay, like Eternals didn't do that great. Uh, obviously, TV show interest appeared to be dwindling. Um, but yeah, now now it's in a place where it's like, oh shit, Marvel projects can like outright bomb. Yeah, only Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, and way more of that would have Fox like and yeah. X Men stuff feeding into that. Like yeah. the, I suppose it's it's the it, the the point being that like Deadpool and Wolverine success. That's not something that they should expect will just translate over to any other projects that they're doing. And even if it was the case that this this show ended up proving to be successful, it ain't going to help them long term <laughs> for what they need to do for um for the MCU. You know, like Agatha is not a format or a template that you can expect is going to be particularly successful when applied to your other IPs. It's you know like. Yeah. I don't know, like if, like if this reached an audience that existed beyond the MCU, would they show up for Daredevil? Would they show up for Fantastic Four? Would they show up for Blade if that film ever happens? <laughs> it's like, I don't know, you know? Com compared to the idea that somebody who watched Fantastic Four, if it turned out to be good and enjoyed it, would be a lot more likely to show up for other Marvel stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're in a real good position, and when that last episode rolls out, people are going to be like, wow, what a successful and amazing show, and then someone will turn around and go, what show? What are you talking about? And they go, actor. And they're like, what? What show? Uh, it's a double episode on Halloween, right? Uh, yes, because yeah. the, the, I do find that funny, that they have to have the finale, sort of, because, I don't know, timing. The timing doesn't line up. If it, if it was one episode a week, it would have ended after Halloween. So it's a two-episode finale. And it, yeah. might, it might also be, because these episodes are short. Like, a lot of these episodes are, like, 25 minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> someone just connected the Mr. Shaw to the, uh, I mean, the the Poirot movies, but I was just thinking of the Kenneth Branagh ones, and the, I was just looking at that. I appreciated a, a shot on the <laughs> Orient Express, shot on the Nile, and then a shot in Venice. <laughs> yeah, the Christie. Mm -hmm. Very amusing. Oh, great summary. Well, that about wraps well, us up on this half of the season, um, yeah. which was the likely half that people would even have considered giving a chance. So we're going to be the only people on Earth who watch the second half, I guess you could call it. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Who knows what Don't worry, happen. guys. We will let you know how it ends. Yes, we won't let you oh. go uninformed. We know we could just, you'd love to know. We could just stop, though. We could we make could. it up. We, gotta, we, we could make it up. Words. We could just like as we a fun go joke. End of the road. <laughs> it's like, it's like being at the bottom of <laughs> Mount Doom and being like, we could give up. It's like, but... <laughs> no. This is no. is this for a noble cause to save the world or is this is that? Just troll the next time. Make up stuff. It's gonna be more entertaining than. That would be something doing? to do someday to just completely invent a TV show. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> See how long it takes you chat to be yeah, like. This is the glow the shit out of the show. Yeah. Huh. Um. Well. Uh. Hey. Uh. I guess as we're wrapping up. Uh. Nutsers. Is there anything you want to make people aware of that we're already made aware of two days ago? <laughs> two days ago. Well. Um. There's a acolyte video. There's a, some Disney shit post. There's a Star Wars sequel trilogy videos and stuff and stuff. And go check it out if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will compliment um, Agatha, um, and on a positive note, I would rather watch this than watch She-Hulk. I think I agree. Statement. Um, I think I do agree. Yeah, I probably agree with that. I think. I think I do. Mm. It's an interesting point, actually, because the idea of... Uh... What would you, I guess what would you be forced to watch if it's the same amount of time? What would you prefer to be forced to watch season two of of which one? Oh, of this or uh, She Hulk? Oh, this. So this, this. is the thing now. I yeah. was just thinking this to myself one. like, this one. ooh, this one. 
if we're talking about like which one would be better, it probably would be this. But but like the memes of awful from She Hulk season two could could entertain me oh, more. Maybe She Hulk is mm. rancid. Though. It is rancid. It is. <laughs> I yeah. would uh, I would enjoy memes and like jokes uh, about She Hulk more. I would probably make it into content yeah. more. But also, it just as a woman, it just deeply <laughs> insults me. Look at your to choices. The level that this is yeah. This, this is... show would never dare. Not a lot of good representation for the fairer sex going on at no. Disney, I've noticed. Uh, they really fucking hate women, it seems, because they write them so horrifically they just hate everybody and nasty. Mm -hmm. The writing isn't filled with much I'm... happiness, you know? <laughs> it's filled with murder and death and sadness. <laughs> and nothing I mean, makes she... sense. She-Hulk is like... Am, am I gonna watch another episode of her like scrolling on Tinder or? Yeah. Like, Maybe. At least we have Mr. Shorts here. <laughs> to that Why can't they make the Mr. Shorts show? Why won't they? Cowards. Mr. Shorts saved this episode. All it right. Is. This was misery until Mr. Shorts showed up, and then yep. my mood has become. I mean, it's like a. Oh man. What an uplifting end to encounter Mr. Short. I can picture the person who wrote the episode was very proud of their work, and there was like one guy, like a boom mic operator or a lighter guy, who was just sort of doing that giggly face when he saw it. He was like, Gee. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, Hey. He was like, eh, Nothing. It's just funny. Don't worry about it. You wouldn't understand. M R S H A R T, right? Okay. All right. <laughs> Mrs. Hart, right. Mrs. Hart. Um, All right. Uh, what else? What, what else can be said? Things, things are being worked on. Uh, we're, yeah. we're free rags. Do you want to say any particular things of things? Uh, should be wrapping up a video tomorrow. Tomorrow Sunday, yeah. Tomorrow or mm -hmm. Monday, and then it'll be out the following day. As long as there are no issues with, there shouldn't be no issues with like copyright or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, a couple days. I'll finally have this video out. It's just been it's been a busy October. Um, there's been a lot of stuff going on. Uh, things pop up. So, but yeah, hopefully I'll have that out. And hopefully within um, pretty soon after that, I'll have another one out. Uh, once I'm kind of now that I'm kind of back on the swing of working on that. And I've refamiliarized myself with a bunch of stuff. And I am planning an Amnesia The Bunker stream sometime <laughs> in Spooky Ween. But I don't know when in Spooktober I'll do it. Uh, I don't know exactly what my Halloween plans will be. I'll probably be spending Halloween with my friends, family, and loved ones in the real world. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll have to see uh, what's a good time for it. But you know what? It's it's a spooky month, so it could be sometime nearish Halloween. Ooh. Yay! Ooh. Oh wow! Uh, I mean, I guess I mean it was it mentioned the other day that I, I haven't figured it out yet. But at some point, I'll play Amnesia: The Dark Descent for uh you know, I've sung it last ooh. year, so I haven't played that. So that'll be yeah. amusing. Yeah. <laughs> I give you a little bit more thought to because uh, Rags, you mentioned it last time. So what? It's you and you and Wolf. If if the oh wait wait yeah, we'll, we'll do. I got oh plushies come after. <laughs> like you guys talk about whatever you want to talk about, whatever that may be. Oh, so if sure. you're done. Oh well, yeah. Let's talk about the plushies then. Yeah, I mean, for those who do not know, they are still going, still around for a little longer, okay? So yes. grab them while they're hot and cuddly, uh, right here. Yeah, the full set of EFAP hosts as plushies, but a Halloween variant. You've got vampires in here, ravens, jack-o'-lanterns, and werewolves, but with us. You see? You see how they do that? It's great. Oh, wow. Very, mm -hmm. yes, good memes indeed. Uh, what I was saying was, yeah, well, so, yeah, so uh, the idea is that so, we, we got them funded, which is great. Thank you guys so much. And uh, we we figured him, this sort him. of spontaneously happened. But Wolf was like, you know what? If plushy, uh, the the plushies, as opposed to necessarily the um the hoodie, if the plushies each get to one thousand units sold, which for example, mine is at uh five six three. Rags that uh, five, four, one. If 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 they each of the four were were pushed to one thousand, he will stream. I can't claim if he said he'll stream the entire thing. Uh, Lord of Ring Golem, the classic, the 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 game that brought such great men down to their knees in appreciation. 
and I believe rags you uh you you were like wow what a what a great idea so you decided to fill that that's gap. what i said i said i said what a great idea those are my words um what an incredibly awesome idea that is and so i said you know what let's sweeten the pot a bit further uh, because i have not played ring lord of the lord of the <laughs> lord of ring golem myself rings of lord golem <laughs> Lings of Roar Gollum. So if our EFAP hoodie gets to 1,000 sales, I will do a playthrough of Lord of Ring Gollum myself. And I will finally experience just what it is that everyone's been talking about. This incredible new sensation that's been sweeping the nation. I will be a part of it and I will stream that experience live. If the hoodie gets to 1,000 sales the efap hoodie mm. which yeah so th now i figure it's redundant if it's just like oh yeah so if it's the same as that then i'll play it so uh yeah 1500 for the whole set 1500 of the entire set and i'll also play golem <laughs> i also make no guarantees that i'll finish it but <laughs> but I, dude, I really don't want to play Gollum. Like, but, but hey, look, all right. If, if, if I ever find, well, think of it, if we ever find ourselves streaming Lord of Ring Gollum to these fine, fine people, then no matter how miserable and terrible and awful the experience is, we can say, you know what? A lot of people bought our uh, really awesome hoodies and plushes, so that'll help. Uh, and, that'll that'll be a balm on our on our wounds as we play that game. And just, uh, I guess, as a little bow on top. If we get all three of them playing it, then I can, uh, I can promise I will oh, sort God. out a supercut, and we will oh, yeah. have an episode yeah. for it. So we will, we will check in with all of the greatest highlights of Rags Wolf and Fringy having played the game. It's like it's, it's almost like going back home, you know. It's been so long since we've seen Gollum, oh. so it'll be nice. You can never really go home, but. You know what? We leave that up to yeah. the to the grand public. That's right. If they wish, yeah. there's still time. There's still time to. Make that there's happen. still time. <laughs> um, to play Gollum, which is still which is still like full price on Steam. By the oh, way, fuck, really? <laughs> it's still full price on Steam. Yeah, it's it a legendary put that video shit on game. sale. Damn. No, it's not on sale. It's full price. <laughs> I just hope it's as funny still. I hope they didn't update it. <laughs> so yeah, so it's what? So for Wolf, it's the the whole plus the the set of plushies to a thousand, and then he plays Gollum. For Rags, it's the hoodie at a thousand, and then he'll play it. And for me, it's fifteen hundred for the plushies and the hoodie, the whole set. Because it'd be selfish if I just said no, just the friggy one, just buy the friggy one, and then I'll play Gollum. That wouldn't <laughs> be nice. Which uh, yeah, there you go, and um. Yep. Of course, other than that, we've gotten we've so many EFAPs already this uh, this month and Elm Streets. We've done four so far, which means five. Uh, what was the fifth one called? Dream, Dream Child. Uh, Dream Shot. I can't remember. Dream Shot. Yeah, I think so. Dream well, Shot. That one is on the way, as well as the entire set up to. Some people are, were confused, but it was in the trailer. We're definitely we're, we're doing Freddy vs Jason and the reboot. The the, yep. the one everyone loves. Everyone loves the reboot. Yes. So, <gasps> wow, that kicked off so many more Elm Street films, didn't it? It didn't just kill the franchise dead or anything. Boy, we sure probably do have opinions on that that everyone should tune in and watch live. Yes. And more EFAPs on the way because Halloween is filled with some wackiness. Not just more Agatha. <laughs> like you can expect. I mean, the plan as it stands is next week we're doing uh, we're doing another Outlaws one. We did promise that, that it wouldn't be the end that uh, that other one we yeah. did. So yes, plenty of horrifying things to come this month. But uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Thank you so much for all yeah, of your, everybody. your messages and your kind donations, in which we are going to be rolling out uh, catch ups. We're, we're we're carving as best we can slots to do that yes yes while also carving out slots to record for next year's halloween arc so that the editors can get all that for you folks as well it's just a bit hectic that's all yes but it's indeed. all good fun so anyway thank you all so much toodle pip cheerio night. see you later everybody bye 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 in my witch's brew <laughs> God.